for you there. Nice. All right, we'll see if we can get an answer to this question. What is the name of the train station that services Hogwarts School? 215. I hope I have the right answer. 215. Uh, Nick, <laughs> write down the right answer. This is my, this is my answer. Okay. Because uh, I have something else, and I it looks... Let me see here. All right. Well, that's not what we were looking for. What's your answer? Are we, sure well, isn't your answer always the right answer? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that's but the I rule that, that we set. That's where they. That's where they land. That's where they get out. Ah. Uh, okay. Then you know okay. what? Then I'm going with the other. Okay. Ones. All right. All right you're right. Uh, let me go to uh, Joe if he sees he has the answer. Hey, Joe. Good morning. Good morning, guys. How you doing? Good. All right, uh, Joe. What's the answer we're looking for, buddy? The answer is King's Cross Station. That is correct. Yes. Oh. Hang on the line. I think the. The question was worded improperly, what I was looking at, um, because they had said that the, the answer was Hogsmeade's Hogsmead right. Station. And by the way, I said that's where they land, and uh, when you take a train, you don't land. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, you could you could, you you could that. Yes. Or, or you, uh, In that world, perhaps it would. That's true. The yeah. cars fly. Yeah. Uh, but King's Cross is where they the, the nine and three quarters is, right. and yes. they, they go through the wall, Nick, and, and then uh, they get on the, the train. You're going to crap yourself. <laughs> Wait till you, you are going to crap yourself. The Hogsmead uh, or the Ho Hogwarts Express yeah. at it, Universal, yeah. It's it really is a transport. Yeah, oh, yeah. To, to to one of the other parks. Yes. And you're really on a train, but what happens while you're inside there really? is so damn cool. I, I was on it like six times, eight times, and and uh, every time, even though I knew it was going to happen, uh, I mean, you're like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> They're like right there. Get out the way, so cool. I went to King's Cross Station in London, and uh, there's a little platform in nine, th nine and three quarters. Yes. You can sort of push a pram through the wall or right. whatever and get a photo. Uh, but it, it's, you know, it, it's an active working train station, so oh, yeah. there's not a whole lot of Harry Potter stuff there. Uh, this, I'm very much oh, excited to yeah, see. This is the, you are immersed in the world. Yep, absolutely. All right, so I do have some entertainment stories. We're going to rifle through these. Uh, in Paris Hilton's highly anticipated book called Paris the Memoir, published on Tuesday, uh, the Simple Life star reveals that uh, she was groomed by an eighth grade teacher. Yeah, eighth grade. Uh, yeah, she said that uh, the, quote, handsome young teacher was nicknamed Mr. Abercrombie and that he told her that he had a crush on her while she was in her early oh teens. Uh, she writes that he gave her his number and told her to keep their relationship a secret. She said, Mr. Abercrombie called me almost every night. And we talked for hours Whoa. about how amazingly, oh, it gets worse, yeah. amazingly mature, beautiful, and intelligent I was. How sensual oh, and misunderstood and special I was. Uh, she says that he reminded her of the 13-age year gap uh, between Princess Diana and Prince Charles and that Elvis Presley fell in love with Priscilla when oh. she was 14 years old. Like he was This guy had a prepared this, rap. Laying all this stuff on yeah, her. Yeah. And then the teacher allegedly came over to her house one day while her parents were away. She said, teacher pulled me into his arms and kissed me. And she added that her parents later caught them together in his car. Which, would you risk taking on the Hilton, you, you know? Right. That's what I right? was wondering. Would you risk, you know the kind of power they would have yeah. to destroy you? Or this guy was so delusional yeah. that he thought maybe was, he could yeah. actually forge a relationship right. with her when she eventually got of age and he could get into that Hilton family. You know, somebody like that's delusional. Yeah, clearly. So, um... Uh, she said it took decades for me to actually speak the word pedophile. Uh, casting him in the role of child molester meant casting myself in the role of victim, and I just couldn't go there. We we're learning so much about Paris over the last year or so that... It's fu it's funny, too, because you know, the way she projected herself for so many years with that whole thing, yeah. and now when you see her, she was on The, the View or something yesterday, you know, uh, uh, and, um, you know, now it's like, uh, yeah, yes, Greg? It's, yeah. it's, a much, it's a much different her, you know, yeah. and but... The it book, happens the, to the best of us, and that's that's a crazy yes. thing. Is uh, you know, like we all mature and get older, and well, you know, she has a kid now too, and she and, and so that that's you changed her. But I mean, the, I had no idea. And once she came forward about the way she was uh, treated in this school that she was sent to, and the other <laughs> students came forward, it's yeah. like, oh man, okay, you you know, you obviously she had everything that she could want as a kid, but. Everyone goes through stuff. Yeah, you initially think, you know, poor little rich girl. Yeah. Uh, but here she is. She's got freaking teenage or uh, teachers in eighth grade yeah. slobbering all over her like that. So pretty wild. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, another one that we talked about for uh, many years. Lindsay Lohan 
is about to be a mom. Hey! Yeah, the actress made the announcement yesterday by sharing a photo of a baby onesie with the words coming soon uh, scrawled across it. And she said, we are blessed and excited. She captioned this. Uh, Lindsay's rep told The Hollywood Reporter that she's looking forward to this next chapter. You know what the baby's going to be named? No. Chicken finger. Chicken finger. Uh, viewers of Lowen's former own docuseries, Lindsay, uh, will recall that in 2014, uh, she said on the final episode that she had suffered a miscarriage during filming. Uh, that was the reason that she had temporarily refused to film the show that captured her rehabilitation for, uh, from sobering up. Uh, at the time, her refusal had caused concern, prompting Oprah herself to visit Lindsay. Oprah! Uh, but, but now 36, Lindsay's been married to Bader Shamas uh, since last year, although they kept their union quiet until July when the Parent Trap alum referred to him on social media as her husband. The two were first linked in early 2020. He's a financier uh, based in Dubai. Uh, Lindsay moved to the United Arab Emirates in 2014. I wonder if he likes the Flintstones. And had, no, the, the ones in Abu Dhabi, too. Uh, 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 and had said that uh, she enjoys living a more low-profile life there. He said, she said that um, her parents did not even know anything about the kid. Now, she had a surrogate, you know, give birth so she wouldn't be showing. But um, the baby was in, was with her for a week before they let the parents know. Really? Be, yeah, be, and and the, so the, the, they're talking at, about who? Paris didn't oh, let her okay. own parents know that she had a baby. Did not want the word to get out in any way whatsoever. Well, her parents, <laughs> yeah, they have a track record right, as well. Yeah. So, but we yeah. were talking about Lindsay Lohan, though. We, we were. were. Oh, okay. a Paris. I'm, I'm sorry, Lindsay. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're, we're, we're talking we're, about two we're, we're, we're mixing two. We're going back and forth. Right. Yeah. 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 Is Lindsay actually pregnant, or is she having a surrogate as well? Uh, it says they're expecting, so okay. I don't really know. Gotcha. Uh, you Lindsay, know, that's a good question. Lindsay's back in, in uh, I think, you know, that Netflix Christmas movie she did was actually really good. And, yeah. you know, she's doing her Lindsay thing. Yeah. And she was, we talked about Freaky Friday. Yep. She was very good in that. She was really good in that. All right, so everyone's a critic. And, uh, after more than 30 years of making movies, Quentin Tarantino may have something to say about that. Uh, he is shopping the script for what is expected to be his 10th and final film. I and hope it isn't. The moving title is The Movie Critic. Uh, Quentin said in a 2012 Playboy interview, I want to stop at a certain point. Directors don't get better as they get older. Usually the worst films in their filmography are those last four at the end. Aww. And I'm all about my filmography. And one bad film Fs up uh, three good ones. Um, and this philosophy led him to uh, prophesize that uh, years ago that he would retire either when he turns 60 or makes his 10th movie. This year, he will do both. Uh, the movie critic is preparing to begin production this fall. Plot details are being kept under wraps, but the film is rumored to follow a female protagonist in the late 1970s Los Angeles. Some speculate the story will follow Pauline Kael. An yes. In, an influential movie critic Quentin Tarantino has long admired. Yeah, he's, he's, I think he was part of a uh, documentary that I watched about Pauline Kael. Uh, amongst filmmakers, she, w she was one that um, they tended to like. Uh, a cast has not yet been set for the movie critic, but actors like Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, Christoph, uh, Christoph Waltz, and uh, Samuel L. Jackson are always on the short list. Um, if the film does center on a female main character, he may enlist the help of past collaborators like collaborators like Uma Thurman, Margot Robbie, or Maya Hawke. Um, Uma. Uh, fans have also, uh, you know, been calling for the director to make a sequel to Kill Bill. Uh, but the announcement of the movie critic quiets those fan cries, though the film could still be a sleeper pulp fiction prequel. It could be. But the film by Quentin won't necessarily be the last time that fans see the artist's work. Tarantino has expressed interest in directing a miniseries or even a play, huh. which could allow the director to expand upon his past work. So he may not be done working. He may be just done with film. Right. So he, the, the book stuff and all that, that he, he enjoys that as well, and writing screenplays. Uh, it could also be a sequel to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood if they kept the fantasy angle of it. A sequel? Yeah. Have they talked about that? Uh, well, I guess yeah, so, time-wise. Time-wise yeah. would work out. Yeah. Uh, the movie critic likely won't hit theaters for a couple of years, so we got a little while, and we'll find out more about it as uh, the time progresses. He's such an interesting dude. I, I, I just I loved his acceptance speech when he won, I guess it was Best Screenwriter for... Um, it might have been Best I don't remember, yeah. but he was on the, the stage at the Oscars, and he's like basically like... I don't have anybody to thank except for myself because I was the <laughs> one who did everything. You know? Yeah, the screenplay. He wrote it all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. 
So, uh, according to People Magazine, Billy Crystal turned 75 yesterday. We oh. mentioned that, and he celebrated <laughs> the occasion with a little nostalgia, donning a sweater and jeans similar to those he wore in a scene from <laughs> When Harry Met Sally. It was cool. It was a cool photo. I've not seen it. I just read about it. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it's just, okay, yeah. And he looks good. It's this big white uh, sweater that he's wearing, and he's, uh, he's crouched down in the same pose. Uh, recreating that, and he just wrote uh, "Thank you all" and wrote that on Twitter, which is cool. I like, yeah, that movie was was uh, a blast I when it came it. out. It's one of the great uh, rom coms. Yep, uh, this is fun. Uh, Pauly Shore <laughs> took to Twitter uh, on Monday to comment on Jimmy Kimmel's joke about him during the Academy Awards on Sunday night, and he wrote, uh, "I don't know if you guys saw the Academy Awards last night, but Jimmy Kimmel poked fun at me in the monologue." I loved it. <laughs> and he wrote, but what I really loved is that my old buddies from back in the day, Brendan Fraser and Kei Hui Kwan, took home the Oscars. Never quit on your dreams, he wrote. That's so, cool. That's great. I saw headlines that made it seem as if Paulie was offended by it. Right. You know, but of course he from thought. people it, who don't know. He thought it was great. So I I, I, I thought it was a great joke, too. You know, you know, it was a good time. Paulie's last visit to the studio. Yeah. He was, it was a good interview. He was. Uh, the energy. He kept talking about this procedure he had to help him pee. Yes. Oh, yeah, it was a prostate. And now I oh. see commercials for that procedure all the time. Another great uh, interview we had not that long ago. Michael Imperioli. Yes. Uh, and he's uh, Kathy. He's in the second season of White Lotus, which you will need to okay. watch. It's even better than the okay. first. Has right, right. very little to do with the first one. Okay. Uh, but in the wake of multiple states <laughs> adopting uh, anti-trans legislation, uh, Michael Imperioli shared an image of the transgender flag uh, on Instagram on Tuesday. And he wrote, Dear brothers, sisters, and siblings, fear not, be strong, and don't let the bastards grind you down. Love you. And I think that is from Handmaid's Tale, don't let the bastards grind you down. Uh, and one of his followers commented, unfollowing, he wrote, you should, and hurry up, uh, <laughs> to other followers as well. He said the same thing. So he's uh, making a statement. Good for him. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow says one of her cherished wellness practices involves her rectum. Okay. Damn near killed him. <laughs> uh, during an appearance on the Art of Being Well podcast, the 50-year-old Goop founder revealed the weirdest wellness thing she's ever done was called rectal ozone therapy. Yeah. And she said, I've used ozone therapy rectally. Okay. It's pretty weird, but yeah, it's been very helpful, she said. I know someone... I know I'm not mentioning exactly who, uh -huh. who swears by this. Okay. Really? Swears by it. Is this the it. same thing as sunning your butthole? No. 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 Because no. I know uh -uh. somebody who did that. Ozone. Yeah. No. The <laughs> procedure involves a catheter inserted into uh. the colon to deliver a powerful gas. Yes. And and swears. Now, I do frozone therapy. Okay. Where I take a small action figure from the Incredibles, <laughs> uh -huh. okay, and I put it in my ass. Okay. And I found it's helped a lot. <laughs> Some proposed benefits of rectal ozone therapy include reduced pain and inflammation, increased energy, improved metabolism and circulation, uh, stimulated immune system, detoxification, anti-aging, and fighting bacterial and viral infections. The problem with it is that you have to wait in line by the tire machine at the gas station. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah. And when you're not in a car, right. people's eyebrows raise. Right, and sometimes there's a line. Yeah, and, you know. and they don't, you don't want to, no, but again, the person who uh, I know who does it swears by it and says it has um, applications with, um, you know, in, in even with uh, with animals. They, they'll use it on uh, therapy on like uh, uh, dogs and, and other animals that wow. have all, all sorts of issues. So, okay. well, like intestinal issues? I think that's it, wow. yeah, yeah. And what's it called again? <clears throat> It's called ozone therapy. Mine is therapy. frozone therapy. Right, yes, ozone right. therapy. Steve does right. frozone therapy. Right, yeah. Nick, um, it says it can help with intestinal disorders such as colitis. Oh. Uh, yeah. And the, the person I know is, is very savvy with this. And so. to restore a healthy gut. Yeah. All right. So the FDA published a statement in 2019 that stated there has been no conclusive evidence that ozone is useful for supportive or preventative medical practices and labeled it as a toxic gas. Did they mention frozone therapy? No. Uh, to be used for disinfectant or... I think, I think you're the only one, Steve. Or antiviral <laughs> properties, the FDA stated in order for ozone to be effective as a germicide, it must be present in a concentration far greater than that which can be safely tolerated by man and animals. Hmm. Uh, in addition to her treatments, though, um, Gwyneth said that uh, her daily exercise routine 
uh, involves transcendental meditation, Pilates, the Tracy Anderson workout, and 30-minute infrared sauna session. Oh, I like those. Um, I do like the infrared stuff, too. Is she, is she doing this herself? I have, she has a mechanic. I have no idea. Uh, I don't think she so. She goes to Jiffy Lube. <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> think so, Kat. <laughs> uh, no, she, you can do it yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, really? the, one, yep, yeah the one I'm looking at says it's at home, so I was just yep. wondering oh. if she was having it administered yeah. or if she, she was doing it. Steve, the person you know, do they do it themselves? Yes, they do. I mean, dude, you're doing this into your colon. Like, I don't, That's I don't that know. That sounds dangerous. I, I tell you what, the person that I know, uh, I would, I, is is pretty savvy to this stuff and, and sings its praises and has provided other, I mean, other do da- we know this person? You would know this person. All right. Yeah. What's their name? Let's no, just say I, I was thinking it was when one I person. meant her, I was talking about Bill Weston. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I was thinking one person, but then the way you just answered that we would know this person, I'm now not thinking. You may not. Was a couple of us would. Have you guys ever given yourself a suppository? I've given other people yeah. uh, uh, in uh, alleyways. That's no, cool. no. Uh, yes, I have. I've given myself a suppository. I mean, even just, and that's that just kind of goes into the uh, vestibule, well, you well, know? Yeah. Like, well, frozone therapy is a little bit uh, different. I do yeah. the same thing. It's uh, It's all interesting. But what about it? I just, I mean, I don't even, I, doing that, like, I'm just, the idea of putting something into your own colon, that that's pretty far in, is it not? It's far out. Well, <laughs> it, 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 right it, off, man. I, you know what? I don't know enough about this. Yeah. So I, no, I, I, but I have a film on my phone if I, you want to. I will have to learn more before I try to answer anything right. about These that. are so, the things that you can put in your butt. Case it's being absorbed through the walls of the, of the colon to the bloodstream. I don't know if the apparatus goes... Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. It may just be like a. Um, I don't know the specifics. You just kind of. I don't want to talk out of turn. Yeah. yeah. Direction. All right. A uh, couple other things. Yes. All right. Now uh, we're leaving the butt. We're leaving the butt. Uh, we're going back to the Oscars for a minute on Saturday's episode of the Hollywood Reporters Awards Chatter Podcast. Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences President Janet Yang said that Will Smith can still have his Oscar engraved. Uh-huh. I guess he hasn't done that yet. Uh, she said here in the Oscar, he should have his name engraved on it. She said, I don't know if he should personally come, but yeah, we can arrange that. Oh, she's afraid of getting bitch slapped. I, yeah, I don't know what the story is with that, but she did mention that. So, Oh, by the way, he, he can get it engraved. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have been avoiding this, and I don't know what's going on, but I've seen the story pop up like five or six times now. Apparently, there's some kind of drama on Vanderpump Rules. Oh, no. oh my God! I've been avoiding this like the goddamn plague. <laughs> I don't, and it it dominated um, yeah. entertainment news. Uh, I could give a rat's ass. Uh, what, uh, what is the show even about? It's a reality, sh- quote unquote, reality show. Okay. And Lisa Vanderpump, I think, is her name, and it's the people in her life. She's nuclear annoying. Okay. The hangers on are even worse. Well, now, is it their rules or is it they rule? Uh, her rules. Okay. Yeah. It was a spinoff of a Housewives show. Right. A, a real Housewives. When you're a spinoff of a Housewives wow. show. But this one's successful, man. It's been it around is. for, for yeah. 10 seasons. Well, and whatever this scandal or whatever is happening is, like, huge. It, it, In that world. I, I, I somehow got wrapped into something. It, it was on Instagram, and I was tagged in something, and so I had to look it up. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't delve too much into it, but, like, people were going nuts over it. I avoided it. All I know is that Vanderpump got to be a judge on Pooch Perfect. Which was an right. incredible show. Let's see if you can follow this at all. Uh, following all of the Scandoval drama yeah. that has unfolded recently, Andy Cohen announced on uh, his podcast or somewhere that Wednesday's episode of Vanderpump Rules is shocking. Shocking! And he wanted fans to know that... Yeah. <laughs> shock! Yeah. Uh, that the footage of a conversation between uh, Raquel Levis... Lala Kent and Katie Maloney was not touched. All luminaries. Watch what happens. Live host said, guys, you're going to watch Wednesday's episode. You're going to think that it was recut. Okay, it was not recut. This was the episode. The conversations that go on between Katie and Lala and Raquel are not to be believed in the light of what has come out. This is how it was going to be shown, which makes it all the more shocking. You won't believe it. I am so shocked. Uh, so I, I don't. What the know. guy is cheating? The guy's on the cheating he, with and, her best friend and got caught, oh. and that's what happened. But okay. it, yeah. And apparently, the guy's kind of a the quasi heartthrob on the show. Honestly, I want to put them all in a bag and throw them in the river. All right. 
Uh, thank you for clearing that up for me because I had no <laughs> idea. All right, one last story, and uh, then we will move on to the clips. Uh, True Detective and Ed TV buddies Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson are reuniting on screen once again. Uh, this time for a new Apple TV Plus comedy from creator David West Reed. And uh, this time McConaughey and Harrelson are actually playing versions of themselves. In Reed's untitled 10-episode half-hour comedy, McConaughey and Harrelson, along with their families, attempt to live together on McConaughey's uh, Texas ranch. And uh, those close confines put the storied friendship to a test. Apple TV Plus calls the new show a heartfelt, odd couple love story revolving around the strange and beautiful bond between Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson. Now, they seem to be of a type. They yes. be pretty chill. Yeah. Uh, the news comes just as the as Apple TV Plus and Skydance unveiled Reed's new project, which is called The Big Door Prize. And that show, starring Chris O'Dowd, uh, debuted with the first three episodes on Wednesday, March 29th, or will debut on March 29th, uh, followed by one new episode weekly every Wednesday through May 17th. I love uh, Chris O'Dowd, so yeah. maybe that'll be a good show, too. So we'll have to see about that. But that is the last bit of news I have to report. Uh, we are now moving on to the clips. Spend a lot of time with Bud stuff. Yes. Uh, stars Matthew Reese, uh, star Matthew Reese, returns uh, to his title role in the investigative drama Perry Mason. In this clip, he talks about his character's development. When, when you meet Mason for the first time in the second season, it's not quite where we left off. It's, uh, the, the time period is relatively short. It's about six months between both seasons. But the difference in Mason is quite succinct uh and you you see that very very quickly shut up dummy perry mason uh returns to hbo today so they made that a period piece the perry mason so you know it's not the he's not a contemporary a lawyer what uh what is the period that they're it in? looks like it's the 30s or 40s okay yeah all right next clip here we go Richmond Football Club takes to the pitch once again in the third season of Ted Lasso. Here, actress Juno Temple discusses the disbelief of her role. I got a text from Jason being like, yo, yo, uh, Jason here, um, got your number and uh, just wanted to chat to you about something to which I thought, oh, he thinks I'm someone else. <laughs> uh, Ted Lasso returns Apple. Uh, TV Apple Plus today. It actually yeah. came out last night. Did, did it? Did I you watch, watch it? it? No. I watched it. Yeah. All right. And uh, are I you loved happy? it. Yes. Yeah. All yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. But uh, I got a like a, a little pop up on my phone. Just said Ted Lasso is available right now. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah. I'm right. on board, and and so we all watched it. Yeah. And it's I, just um, one episode at a time, right? Just one. Yeah, okay. And that's the only bummer about it all. I mean, when we all first found out about it, we realized that, like the entire season was available. Yep. You just kind of bust all through it. And now yep. we have to wait. I like waiting week to week. It's it's funny because that very opening scene, uh, I was like, oh, is this like a flashback? Um, and it wasn't, you know. Okay. It was, yeah. I was like, what's going on? All right. Here? Well, I'm yeah. excited. I'll, I'll, what I might do is watch this because it's been a while and I want Ted Lasso now is watch an episode and then maybe take a couple weeks off and let a couple of them build yeah. up. You know I think I'm going to do that because yeah. we got I got some things going on and I want to I want to be able to just enjoy it, you know, that way and I I don't know if I'll be able to just do one. That guy uh, Ryan Airy we've had on the show a few times uh, did a screen crush um recap of the first two seasons of Ted Lasso. Yeah. Really well done and uh, cuz I had forgotten stuff. I haven't watched the first season in a long time. So um if you get a chance and you're a Ted Lasso fan Screen crush. All right, good way to catch up yeah, and get sure. ready for the third and final season. So um, I'm excited. One of the greatest TV shows ever, in my humble opinion. All right, that's it. That's my entertainment report. We have stuff to get to. We're going to take a break. We'll come back in a moment. Hey, just to remind you, tomorrow morning on this program, Bruce Springsteen tickets. Today, Pierre Robert, Bruce Springsteen tickets. I don't know how the hell we got them. Listen for your chance to win. We're going to take a break and be back in a moment. Stay with us. from our uh, Acme Lounge. Yeah. Finally, we're getting to use it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they have arrived in our studio via the UK, and we actually hung out with them in London. They came by our live broadcast when the yeah. Eagles were playing, and we did uh, a few days in London, and they are in town filming for their YouTube series, and they're great people. We love them. Give some love to Joel and Leah. Hey. Hey. Thanks for having us. Hi, guys. How are you? 
Yeah. Uh, we're good. We're even happier you've used that music. Yeah. Of course. Very <laughs> royal. Iconic. <laughs> when it came on, I was like, this is incredible. Any American <laughs> show, whenever, and this has been for, for decades, uh -huh. whenever they go to London yes. the, the, or England, there is a stock shot of Big Ben, and uh -huh. that's the music that plays yes. to show the transition. <laughs> it is almost guaranteed. They'll show a ca car going across right. Tower Bridge. And, yeah, yeah. Yes. and that's it. The music Every time, played. oh, I know where we are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, of course, you'll hear, like, the uh, you, 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 Paris, you get the Eiffel Tower. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, all the stand. Oh, here's where we are. Yeah. Every time. So, listen, you guys, uh, when did you get uh, to the States? Uh, on Tuesday. Tuesday. On Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Tuesday. Kate flew into Philadelphia or New York or we where'd you did. go? Yeah, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. We got detained. That was yeah, detained. Oh I told uh. Casey about it. It was, um, yeah, we were terrified. U.S. border control. So scary. So <laughs> detained? What did they... Well, detained might be a bit dramatic, but they took <laughs> us aside. They took our passports away, took us into secondary questioning. Oh. They separated us. They went through all our luggage. They were asking us all these probing Joel, questions. Joel, my palms are sweating as we read I know, same. Like, I'm getting, I'm so innocent. That's and they, the problem. <laughs> they, like, they don't smile at you, right? Like, no. there's no, like, don't worry, yeah. we're just gonna... It's like, you think you're, you know, something you've The done thing something. to do, yeah. and the way to deflect immediately, if you ever get in that situation, is say, mm. we don't have any bombs. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. I've heard and then they'll react mm. no it, it is a weird thing and i think really? a lot of people go through i know i do i'm always like i know that i'm completely there's nothing it's clean yeah, but you're but like you're you can't help it yeah. when they start pointing their attention at you you're gonna start getting nervous I know. yeah and i was it, like joel we need to get our story straight he was like what story <laughs> <laughs> just tell the truth <laughs> uh, if you're not familiar with with joel and leah they they have this youtube series and they do a lot of comparisons to uh american culture and british culture and that's where they kind of they jumped on our radar because they'll do fun things like uh, sampling food. Uh, I watched a video this morning of, of you, Joel, driving in the United States oh, for geez. the first time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that was in Orlando, oh, I think. Playing. Yeah, oh, it was. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Listen, when we went to London, yeah, I, after spending a couple days, I'm uh, or in, in advance, I'm like, I'm wondering if I could be able to drive here or not. And after <laughs> after spending a couple days, actually five minutes, I'm like, no. 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 no, no, no. way would I be able to. And A, London is a major metropolitan area. Mm. So being able to drive in, uh, maybe I could pull it off in the country, but but in a no. city, forget it. Man. Really? Yeah. You think yeah. you could do country roads? They are terrifying. They're are so they? small and narrow, and you feel like everyone's going to hit you, and it's really scary. Okay, do you know I'll what just happens? write off the whole country. <laughs> yeah. Anytime, so we, in years ago, we'd gone over when Guinness was giving away they used to have a promotion where they give away pubs in Ireland like you wow. could, you'd get the wow. pub you'd get the whole business and so we went over and we, I don't think we even drove then Preston I think uh, no. uh, Marilyn's friend drove yeah. around Yeah, like, I'm always thinking of that story years ago when remember Matthew Broderick was over and, and he was driving with I think uh, uh, Aaron who was, a, who was oh, a good, yeah from Jennifer the Jennifer Gray. Gray, Gray, yeah, and they what they happened? they were on the wrong side of the road, oh, and they no. collided with the family, and it was a horrible story. Yeah. I'm like, nah, nah. because yeah. it, it's such a a. Uh, you've been driving so long here. Yeah, yeah. you trained I, your I, whole life. My fear life. is I would just lapse back into the wrong yeah. side. Did you like no. driving on the on the the right side of the road? It was it was scary. Yeah, and I did start driving with one foot on each pedal because I drive a manual, <laughs> so yeah. automatic. Oh. And Leah was like, "Why is it so jerky?" <laughs> and she's like, "Have you got a foot on each pedal?" I was like, "Yeah." Um, we so sound I, like I so intelligent on this, <laughs> on this show. But it was easy in the end because your roads are wider. I yeah. feel like, especially in Florida, mm. people don't get angry. There's so much road rage in the UK, oh, and gosh, like yeah. in is there... Florida, they were just like, "Nah, you cut me up, it's fine." It's Do you really do... funny because Brits are quite polite. Well, we're kind of polite-ish. <laughs> But then on Not the road, yeah. we have this alter ego where we feel like we can say anything mm. behind the car. And so, there probably yeah. is road rage here, but just where we oh, were in Florida, yeah, yeah. they were just... No, like there is. Yeah. But, but I'm surprised to hear that there's a lot in England. Uh, that, you know, everyone does seem... I mean, obviously, you always make these sweeping general. Everyone's so pleasant. But <laughs> but you're saying that that's out on the road, behind the wheel. It's yeah. a different story. Totally different story. Oh, yeah. But you know what? It's probably not scary to you guys because you're just like, oh, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So while you're in the area, how much time are you spending in, in Philadelphia and filming here? So, yeah, we have t six days in total. Yeah. Oh, um, wow. Which is kind of short, but we're hoping to just do all the all the touristy stuff. And obviously, okay. we're going to try a Philly cheesesteak as well. So we haven't, we haven't First time. First oh. time, yeah. So a exciting. Philly cheesesteak, you got to try several of them. Yeah, several. Yeah. There's, several. It's, you can't, I mean, they're all over the place. And so, oh, wow. What, but we can point you guys in the right direction uh, mm -hmm. if you if you need some places to go to. Yeah. When you travel, you know, because when we came over to London, you sort of feel compelled to do the touristy yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you don't necessarily get a taste of the city or the country when you do that. When you guys travel do you 
Do you bang out the touristy stuff and then dive a little deeper, or what's your approach? So it is really funny. You tell them about the love thing. Oh. Well, yeah, so everyone was banging on about the love sculpture here, and like, you need to see it. And then we got there, and it was just like this it's tiny little tiny. love Yeah, sculpture. right. Um, <laughs> we, just, we looked at it, and we went, no, surely not. Surely not. Surely but not. we do try to hit all of the touristy stuff. Wait, so you um, didn't like the love statue? Well, we just, we just it, went, I no, we've not come halfway across the world for that. No, yeah. come on. Like, it's Make all it very sense. cute. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, nice. Yeah. Love's great. Oh, we love love. Oh, we love love. love. It's just a very small sculpture. You're right. It's not, it's not impressive. Yeah, it's not like, <laughs> a, uh, a, an art masterpiece is in wow how did they yeah. make it's that, the word love you know? yeah. 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 yeah it's, but like, it's a nice positive message yeah. you know we thought no wonder they detained us at the airport they don't believe we're tourists there's nothing to see <laughs> right <laughs> they're just bored <laughs> but it's, it's like the liberty bell which uh, whenever somebody comes here mm. you know I, I never say go go see the liberty bell it's, it's right. underwhelming it's a crack bell i get it mm -hmm. but there, i mean there's a lot of stuff down there that you know and we did a thing years ago about people have lived there all lived here all their lives and have not seen it. It's just mm. you know, so you okay. you you will leave, I'm sure, seeing more than a lot of Philadelphians have seen <laughs> yeah. in your in your six days here. Mm. Okay. Do you guys do all the planning of what you want to do while you're here, or do you? Ha yeah, you do it. So loose planning, don't we? And then mm. most of it's just like make it up as we go along. And but we, we will have a few. And we get recommendations from yeah. our viewers as well. We rely heavily on that because we want to make videos for them. So we're like, well, what do you want to see? Yeah. So most of the times it will be all the touristy stuff. And we would like to go off the beaten track, but we don't often have the time to do that. Well, I think that's the charm is that you're doing the stuff that everyone says mm. uh, initially would say, I'd like to check that out. Mm. Uh, it, it's it's um, So these these uh, recon trips where you're going and you, you come here and obviously a lot of what, most of what you do is predicated on the differences and similarities. Mm. How many times a year, you know, outside of a COVID scenario, would you make the trip to the States? Yeah, we used to do quite a few, didn't we? Yeah. And then COVID just sort of, meant that that couldn't happen so yeah, uh, yeah what we're aiming for at least yeah. three? three or four yeah, yeah three or four that's cool yeah. i feel like six days you can get like everything done yeah. and yeah. then mm. some in six days here yeah. like no yep. doubt I, I don't even know what you've done so far and, and what you have planned for today Mm -hmm. So, uh, what have we done so far, Joel? You're the so map. Far. Joel's the map. <laughs> we, I'm just the wandering follower. <laughs> we went to Reading Terminal Market for okay. breakfast. Oh, good cause. That was nice. Well, and did then you we... have a? Did you go to Denix? Because uh, there's a there's a one of the shops in there has mm. what has been labeled the greatest sandwich in the United States wow. is at Reading Terminal Market. Really? Did mm -hmm. they just write that on the poster, yeah, or did they actually? <laughs> <laughs> they, didn't, no, they didn't write it. It was uh, I can't remember which uh, foodie or which. Uh, I mean, but it was like, yeah, it wasn't a Philadelphian who said it. It okay. was somebody who has toured the whole country and said, "This is this is, is the greatest." That is the best sandwich. Mm -hmm. You, you wow. will bet. I mean, there's a lot of great food here. That that's one mm. thing. I mean, Philly, over the course of the time that we've been doing the show, uh, you know, has become a real foodie city. Yeah. So there's a lot of great stuff to yeah. check out. And and as Preston was right. You can't do one cheesesteak. You're going to have to okay. do a couple. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's fine with that's us. Interesting. Yeah, I can see the title now of that video. We tried the best <laughs> sandwich in America. Yes. Yeah. That'd yeah, be right. quite good. That'd be yeah. good. We also talking about soft pretzels. Apparently, that's a Apparently pretty that's thing. A thing. Someone said tomato pie. Yes. And I told that to someone, and they were like, what yes. is that? That's is what that we call it, too, it? tomato pie. Oh, tomato, <laughs> tomato, tomato pie. pie. Uh, tomato <laughs> pie, yeah. So, yes, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like pizza. Okay. Um, without but the, the cheese. Without the cheese. Oh, and it's, and it's usually it's served cold. cold. Yeah. So it's really and it has a sweetness like to it, too. <laughs> it's sweet. It's yeah. really yeah. selling it, guys. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually it's unique, Ooh. and it's good. But Corpolese. Corpolese. Yeah. Corpolese yeah. to get there. Okay. They're, they're our favorite tomato pie, for sure. Gosh. And, it, yeah, the sweetness, I think, is what will surprise you, is that the, it, mm -hmm. it definitely has that taste to it. And I, it took a while for me to acclimate to it. You probably also have to do crab fries, right? Ooh. Yeah, chickies and peats. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so crab you, fries. Why do you call us? We will give you a whole yeah. list. Yeah. I tr There's listen, so I, and I choice, put yeah. her. I put Leah in touch with Marissa. I said she is mm. Philadelphia, like right. and anything mm. and everything you need to know. And actually, because you you um you're Greek as well. Yeah. Uh, one of her best friends owns a Greek restaurant in and it's a, uh. what was it called Hopa. Opa. Yeah, Opa. Yeah. Opa. yeah. Uh, yeah and that. so she owns a nice restaurant in the city of Philadelphia. But like, That's if awesome. you really needed to consult anybody about mm -hmm. anything you needed to see and do in the city, Marissa's your person. Is there a Sixers ah. game while they're here? There's a Sixers game. Yeah, and LeBron James yeah. is in town. Yeah. LeBron. That, um, wow, you're joking. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I thought I, I pretended to be a fan girl then, but that, that's quite impressive. Isn't <laughs> yeah, it? yeah. Um, is that like the Wells Fargo? Yeah. Yes. Look at you. Yeah. Well, I did do a little bit of research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where are, are you guys staying in the city downtown? In the yeah. In, okay, cool. So we won't, we won't say where. No, 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 no exactly. No, no, no. You know. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Last time we um, said where we were in a oh hotel, we just got so much food sent to the hotel. So maybe we <laughs> oh should God. say it. Yeah. We got they Cuban sandwiches. Us. We got cheese. Deliveries yeah. of just cheese. Because we said on a live stream how we, we wanted cheese. We said we were hungry. Cheese. They started then, sending food. Yeah. Oh, so so Bruno Brothers. That's very cool that your, 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 your viewers are, are that, yeah. that nice and that look out for oh, you. Are, yeah. And, we got to send them to uh, Italian Market. Take yes. a look at that uh, down that way. Because you mentioned cheese. Do Bruno Bros is down there, right? Yeah, the Bruno's actually all over the place. Are you guys museum people? Um, nah. We've got a cool one. We've There's got one a super cool one. The Muter Museum. It's, yeah. it's, pr- yeah. it's written like mutter, but it's pronounced Muter Museum, and uh, it's oddities, and it's weird, like medical Meta- anomalies That's and cool. stuff like that. And so, and it's a really cool building <laughs> on top of it. So, uh, if you want to go okay. see some weird, gross stuff, yeah, uh, Philly's your place. Yeah, but like, like a gigantic yeah. colon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as a matter of fact, like we, I mean, the okay, well. weird. They have the skeleton of. Uh, was the one time the tallest man in the in the in the world? Yes, right. Yeah. I was sure. at uh, the Casey Musgraves concert last night at oh, the wow. Wells, yeah, at the Wells Fargo on. Center, and she has been in town for the last couple of days. She went to the Muter Museum. Oh, and that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If it's good enough for Casey, it's good, good enough for us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were reading all about her in Nashville at that um, country music museum, weren't we? Yeah, we did. So I say we don't like museums. We actually do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it depends. Just not modern art. I just I I don't I like know. modern art. Museums. All right, we will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll steer you that way. Uh, well, I see that our, our callers are getting on the line, and I think I want to take this out for a spin because one of the things that, that always surprises us here is um, when we'll be watching a show, a movie, mm-hmm. something like that, and you get to know a character, even sometimes over a few seasons, and then we'll hear an interview with them, and it turns out this person who we thought from was from America is a Brit, okay. and they have mastered the accent. Um, and in fact, Kate Winslet, yeah. uh, a mm-hmm. show called Mayor of Easttown, which took place in this area, mm-hmm. had to master not only just the American accent, but specifically, she took it from where Casey is from, Delaware County. We call it Delco. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she got it's got a very specific accent, and she said it was the most difficult accent she ever tried to master. And she nailed it. She nailed it spot wow. on. I mean, sorry, she's Amazing. winning awards right and yeah. left for it. Yeah. yeah. That's mm-hmm. incredible. Um, so we wanted to do a game with you guys called Brit or not a Brit? Ooh, Ooh, fun. Uh, gosh, okay. We have a series of callers <laughs> okay. that are going to speak. We've given them something to say. Oh, gosh. Some of them are British and some of them are American, but they're all going to be attempting a British accent. Okay. Or and just talking. Run. Have to determine whether they are legitimately British or not. 100% okay. Joel's going to be really good at this. Okay. Oh, yeah? I I'll think, try. Yeah. I did a degree in linguistics. Yeah. So well, there you go. That's I good. Love accents, but I say that, I probably, you know, I'll be terrible. Okay. Well, well, well the funny we'll, thing we'll is, is that, as you know, because as, as you know, you're, you're obviously spent a lot of time in the, in the States. Obviously, there are different dialects throughout the United States. Mm-hmm. For for England, for the size that it is, there are a tremendous amount of different dialects. Yeah, it's, it, it's pretty wild, ridiculous. Yeah. Do, you, do you have a particular accent? If someone uh, would would somebody be able to pick out what air region you're from? I think they would say generic sort of south of the. Three WMMR. Thank you, Kathy. My mind is an open page, dribbling in rivulets with tons of information. It is. Time for the stream of consciousness. Ah, <laughs> I tried. I tried to. I I'd forgotten what Hedy Lamar says. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We need that clip. We need yeah. a clip of yeah Hedy Lamar. It's in uh, Blazing Saddles. Yeah, uh, Marissa. It's <laughs> when he's uh, he's pondering how to take care of the uh, the 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 rock. The uh, what was it the ridge? The railroad and Rock yeah. Ridge. Yeah. Uh, it, what, what you'll have to look up is. Uh, <laughs> You speak prettier than a wait. You, your 20, mouth is prettier than a twenty dollar yeah, whore or something like accent. that. Wait. But it's what he says $2. right before that. Uh, that might be our stream of consciousness. Sir. <laughs> Lead in. But rivulet's a cool word. Uh, rivulet is a cool word. All right, so we're going to start with this. Lowe's stores in Philadelphia now have a five foot tall security robot. Oh yeah. Use your tongue prettier than a twenty dollar whore. Uh-huh. That's the robot? Yeah, yeah that's the robot. <laughs> a five-foot-tall security robot that makes a uh, kind of this whirring sound as it glides around. And uh, people have nicknamed this. Uh, it's, a, it's a riff on Hitchbot and Popebot and Birdbot. They're calling it Snitchbot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a security. It looks pretty um, It looks pretty space capsule-ish. A yeah. lot of people were saying that because it's in Philadelphia, they don't know the future of what this robot's going yes. to be. Yeah. It might, yeah. not, might not make it past the weekend. There are concerns. So, yeah, here you go. Wow. That's so, scary. That's not what it sounds like. I don't <laughs> no. Know. But it's, it, makes some kind, it does make some kind of an audi- audible noise so you know it's around. Okay. Pew, pew. Is this anything like the giant bot? No. 
No. no. The, the one that goes around and, and where you can get uh, uh, coupons and things like that off it, right? You no, can get coupons it, off of that? Yeah, no, 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 that thing cleans up messes, doesn't it? That's what it, well, it reports messes. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it my, also. My son worked there. It doesn't have coupons on it. There was one that I thought actually dispensed, you, you could do uh, you could do a, a, a price check on it, and, and uh, maybe cool. this is, maybe they hadn't got rid of it, but, or. or Giant didn't. All this does is it roams around the store and it essentially finds out if there's clutter that's fallen out. Uh, well, that seems waste uh, into the uh, into the aisles and okay. stuff. They like that. still have them though. Yeah, this is. Oh it. yeah, yeah. And they are friendly robots. What yeah. do they call it, they, Marty or something like that? Something like it's, that. It's yeah. got a name. Yeah. They got googly eyes. So yeah, this thing roams around just determining that boxes have fallen on the floor. Yeah, stuff like that. A huh. Spill stuff like that. But the yep. um, and the, it's only a quarter billion dollars. The Lowe's one is not inside the store, right? It's in the parking lot. Yes. Uh, Lowe's, yes, Lowe's is in the parking lot. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, Snitchbot, uh, it is the 5K autonomous outdoor security robot, and it's manufactured by Nightscope, uh, a security tech company based in the Silicon Valley, and uh, it's part of a pilot project to heighten the security and safety of their locations, according to Larry Costello, who is Lowe's senior manager of corporate communications. <laughs> They're not killbots. <laughs> So uh, my Lowe's that I, I visit at the Metroplex recently, like um, I want to say maybe just before the holidays, somewhere around there, these blue lights went up in the parking lot. They're they're small. They, yeah, yeah. I'm wondering if it has anything to do with this. Sort, sort of like a, 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 a an invisible fence for the uh, but guide they're, robots? They're higher up. Like they're kind of, they, they might be a little lower than like the street lights. Maybe those are the flying kill bots. Um, and they're, they're very small, but there's like a couple of them throughout the parking lot. So yeah. I'm, I'm oh. wondering if it has to do with this. And Kath, I noticed that uh, uh, the, the one in Plymouth Meany is the one you're talking about, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and I noticed that, and they weren't there before. Like, right. it's a relative, like within the last year or so, they've gone in and they're they're really noticeable now. So is, it, did Star Wars kind of inform things like this? Right. Do you think? Absolutely. Uh, what, that, like design? Well, I mean, just in general, the, you know, yeah. like droids, like uh, sure. little, little uh, autonomous bots that run around. Did, did, did the engineers get ideas from that movie we, to do things like this, do you think? We asked this question, or I think I did ask this question to Neil deGrasse Tyson. What, what do you think happens more often? Yeah. That what scientists are working on informs what science fiction writers or speculative fiction writers come up with? Yeah. Or is it the other way around? I would hazard a guess, Preston, that it's literature and like Jules Verne and stuff yeah. that has said... I mean, scientists go, well, we should try that. We yeah. should do that. I, th I think that it does happen that way a lot of times. It's not a coincidence at all that uh, the security bot at um, Lowe's kind of looks a little like R2-D2. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, the, like the design, the painting, there, there's similarities, and that's not at all a coincidence. I need to repair my sink. So four Lowe's stores uh, in South Philly, Northeast Philly, Port Richmond, and West Philadelphia. These are not the pliers you're looking for. Uh, <laughs> began testing the robots in February. Uh, others are being piloted in Washington State, North Carolina, California, and D.C. So when it exerts its security, what is the what is its range of capacity? What does it do? Uh, so it uses uh, 16 microphones and a range of sensors, including uh, LIDAR and sonar. I don't know what LIDAR is. It's like is. a LIGAR. L-I-D-A-R. Isn't it laser? Uh... Uh, to detect anomalies and report them in real time to Lowe's central yeah. monitoring team. Laser oh, scanning. Okay, so the robot also has uh, four wide-angle cameras, which take 360 degrees of high-definition footage. So these aren't AI. Right. They're there to assist the security guards. So somewhere in within Lowe's, there is a series of cameras where someone, we assume, is sitting there and and uh, keeping an eye on what's going on in the parking lot. Yep, and I think it also... The, and that's it, C-3PO. Oh. I think it... <laughs> Wait, that... That, that oh. looks dangerous. Uh, I think it can alert them to things. Attention. <laughs> That it notices. What is it alert? That's what I mean. What what is it noticing? Uh, well, actually, one of the things in, when I one of the reports I saw on is, is is believe it or not theft from the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah stuff like that. How how is it detecting theft? It, it's their cameras. It's actually what it's basically doing is a robotic camera that is out surveilling the the the. So someone lot. has to be monitoring. Yes. It then. Yes. So it's you don't not, want to give it AI. It is not meant to replace human security guards, but to provide them with better situational awareness and give okay. companies evidence for criminal prosecutions as well. So it, it has recordings. It also serves as a visual deterrent. Yes. You see that thing? You don't know if it's a kill bot. Uh, at the Lowe's in South Philly and Port Richmond last week, 5K robots were stationary outside the stores with security guards parked next to them. The 5Ks are equipped with thermal anomaly detection and people detection like predators uh, to spot individuals in places they should not be or times of the day that they should not be there. 
Yeah. Uh, while the 5K can detect human beings, it does not have facial recognition. Uh, the robots are able to recognize license plates and mobile devices if uh, that information has previously been identified by Lowe's and entered into a database. So okay. it's it can identify mobile devices? That's what it says. So if you're using your phone or your phone is on you, it can access that? If information has previously been identified by Lowe's and entered into a database. Can it make crank calls to your mother? Yeah. Maybe. So wait, <laughs> so maybe if you are somebody that is, uh, repeatedly yeah. steals from the store, and, and yeah. they know who you are and they've entered your information into their system, it can detect that you've arrived. And that's, Li what, that's what the LiDAR does. Well, oh, really? Yeah, it can, it can recognize your face. So LiDAR... No, um, no, it says it does not have facial recognition. Well, it says, said here clearly it does not have okay. facial recognition. So LiDAR uh, can do, does facial recognition with your with your iPhone. Okay. So the, and so maybe they don't Interesting. employ that in this uh, security robot. But that's, that's hardy har har. Uh, but Kathy, the license plates as well. So if there's a okay. repeat offender or something like that, oh. they'll be able to recognize their car and alert people that someone's on property. Okay. Um, it says the the sound that the five K makes is a patrol sound to alert people who are visually impaired. Oh, okay. And uh, the robot is equipped with two-way communication, which allows the user to deliver customized messages through it. Uh, so people can also call back for security by pressing a button on the robot's back. Security be right out there in a minute. Yeah, so I guess it can talk to people like that. It's nope. not the droids he's looking for. Uh, so according to Night Scope's website, its robots are used by airports, hotels, police departments, casinos, and schools. I've never seen them other than the, the Lowe's. Um, and Nightscope retains ownership of its robots, and the client pays about $6 to $9 per hour for an annual contract. This is like very Cyberdyne. Well, very Skynet. You think somebody's going to steal the robot? Yes. Oh, God, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, it's just a matter of time, right? <laughs> I am being held captive. <laughs> so, I mean, just to be ironic, people will do yeah, that. Yeah, all right. And the robot can't even hold up a newspaper to... Show you what day it is. Uh, there ha they have had some hiccups along the way since their debut in 2015. So they've been around for a while. This is nine years they've yeah. been, or, or eight years have been going. Uh, 5K robots have made headlines when a toddler was hit by one at a uh, Palo Alto mall. Uh, the the night scope claimed the child ran backwards into it. Uh, when uh, one fell into a fountain at a D.C. office building <laughs> and a San Francisco SPCA uh, retained one to patrol for vandalism and burglaries, uh, but was accused of using it to deter people experiencing homelessness from the facility. I, oh, I remember that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is of that that same uh, family of robots. I wonder how uh, how uh, this will catch on, or if I, a lot of other businesses will adopt it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it's being used mainly as as to expand their security presence or. Um, uh, surveillance, then yeah, it makes sense. Would, would you, for example, you're you're say at KOP or whatever, Kathy, and you're in like you know, it's it's later in the evening, and one of these robots is around perusing. Does that make you feel more comfortable? I mean, I I guess I need to know what's yeah. what's happening behind it. Like, if there is right. actually someone monitoring it, then yeah, I guess so. Sure. Right. Well, the one feel? thing about it is it, is it records video and audio and stuff like that, so it could you know oh, yeah. have a record of if somebody right. assaults you or right. or yeah you know, uh, tries to steal from you or something. Like that. I right. saw everything. <laughs> yeah. Kathy, what if you at right, the camp out for hunger? As you're walking in and you're walking past security, would you rather have that <laughs> robot there or would you rather have a guy snoring his ass off <laughs> in a chair? Sleeping in a chair. <laughs> what would you rather he have? He was there all night. Well, what if that the robot's there and the guy who's watching the videos back in the uh, in the office is asleep? asleep. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, let's see. I have some other stream of consciousness nurse snur thingies. Did Marissa find that audio, that clip? Uh, the, I don't from know. Blazing Saddles. We got this one. Oh, you did? Hang on. Take a look at my face, dick. <laughs> okay. That's Robocop. Yes. Oh. I had that ready. <laughs> That's good. Because you're talking about robots? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's a classic. <laughs> uh, hang on uh, a second. Is that the dad from uh, That 70s Show? Yes. 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 It, it sure is. is. Yeah. Right, here we go. He, he is one of my favorite He's, jerk actors. Haywood, terrific, yeah. Haywood Smith, is that his name? Uh, he played Kirk. the dad in, in uh, um, Dead Poet Society. Yeah. He's yeah. evil in that. Kirkwood Smith, I think. Kirkwood Steve. Smith, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, here you go. This is my stream of consciousness nerd speech. Here we go. My mind is a raging torrent 
flooded with rivulets of thought cascading into a waterfall of creative alternatives. There you go. That's the stream of consciousness, nerd. And then Slim Pickens says, you use your mouth prettier than a $20 whore. All right, uh, Marissa, or I mean, uh, Kathy sent this over to me. Uh, popular on Instagram. It was one of uh, Oprah's favorite things, but now the Bindle bottle is being recalled after Consumer Reports found potentially dangerous levels of lead in it. No, what? And I think we have one of these at my You house. have a Bindle bottle? I think so. <laughs> oh, my God. We have something similar to that. So Bindle bottles are bad. Yeah, they're bad. Uh, Bindle is voluntary recalling its sip and stash water bottle. Uh, Consumer Reports test found alarmingly high levels of lead in the bottle's bottom storage compartment. Wait, levels that were over a thousand times the amount allowed in many consumer products. <laughs> oh so that's a lot by my reckoning yeah. when you're exceeding it by a thousand times. Mm -hmm. uh, Bindle this, bottle. This is ridiculous. Like, Why would Oprah do this? <laughs> uh, in the Bindle bottle's bottom storage. In the yeah. Bindle bottle's bottom. Yeah. Uh, the they also sell rubber baby bu buggy bumpers. Uh, compartment, there's a spot of lead solder uh, that's sealing the different parts of the bottle together. So anything you put into the storage compartment can potentially become contaminated with lead. Okay, it's a storage area. It's not necessarily where you're drinking out of. Oh, okay. Uh, but still, yeah. you might put something that you're going to be consuming in there. Uh, and exposure to lead can uh, increase cancer risk, cause reproductive harm, hurt brain and nervous system development as well. Uh, there's another hidden danger in the bottles as well. CRs. They're uh, piranha. Uh, CRs tests also found, uh, that's Consumer Reports, some of them contained um, bisphenol A or BPA, a chemical linked to fertility problems and certain cancers, uh, even though the company claims the products are BPA-free. BIPA. Uh, because of these reasons, uh, Consumer Reports is warning consumers to immediately stop using all of Bindle's water bottles, all of them. So they were pretty popular, right? Yeah, uh, it's yeah. one of Oprah's favorite things. Yeah. yeah. We, uh, I mean, we have so many water bottles in my house. And, and Are they all Oprah approved? No, but we don't have these. We have Hydro Flasks. We have Yetis. We have, uh, like, the BPA-free uh, plastic ones, hard plastic ones, yeah. but uh, none of these. But I'm so glad that there are people out there that check up on this stuff. Uh, so Bindle has said that uh, production of Bindle bottles has been suspended and will be overhauling going forward, uh, eliminating the presence of exposed lead anywhere on future products. Uh, if you have a Bindle bottle and you want to contact the manufacturer, go to Bindle's recall page uh, to complete the form and receive a free repair kit. Yes. If you want to fix that. That'll be that. Bill Brumford who handles the Bindle bottles. <laughs> if you want to fix that yourself. Uh, the Bindle bottle has since been removed from Oprah's list of favorite things. Uh -huh. She got it off. Quietly of taken off the list. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, a bill has been reintroduced into the House of Representatives that uh, change, challenges the standardized five-day, 40-hour work oh, week. Oh, yes. This was also part of the Bindle Bottle Brill. Never in our lifetime will this happen. It will never happen. We're, man, it's wonderful that things are maybe heading in that direction. Uh, California Representative Mark Takano's bill proposes making a four-day work week of federal law. Mm -hmm. uh, the mandate would create a significant change which will increase the happiness of humankind, he said. Right. Is this the guy working on the daylight savings thing? Because um, we'll... Uh... That'll never happen either. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, so in June of 2021, the UK ran a trial uh, bringing the four-day work week to the forefront. And in the study, over 3,300 employees from 70 different companies worked on a four-day, 32-hour schedule while still receiving 100% of their pay. And in the results, the workers continued the same productivity levels compared to 40-hour work weeks. Was that across Was that across different types of occupations, different lines of work, or was it primarily office work? It says 70 companies. I don't okay. know. Okay. Yeah. But it, it does affect um, uh, salaried employees more than hourly employees. I, I posted something on Instagram a couple of weeks ago, this study by uh, that Nadia Whitom, um, uh published, and 
Um, and there are a lot of valid, good reasons for a four-day work week. Um, but uh, several people pointed out to me on Instagram, uh, politely, I might add, yeah. uh, that um, if you're an hourly employee, uh, you probably want to maintain the hours that you have. Right. If you're a salaried employee, that makes sense. you can work the 40-hour work week in different shifts or in a four-day work week. Let's say you're working the soldering line at Bindlebottom. <laughs> right, right. But, like, all right, so would you rather have off uh, that Monday, that Friday, or in the middle of the week, so you would go Monday, Tuesday, off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, off I've, Saturday, Sunday. I've had all those scenarios, actually. Yeah. And and you, you know what was oddly good was the Wednesday off. Right? It was kind of wild. I could see that. Yeah. It was yeah. kind of weird. Yeah, I got, yeah. I got a lot of response on this. And, Steve, a lot of, there were um, shift workers that are able were able to choose their hours, and many people voted for that middle-of-the-week work uh, yeah. day off. Isn't that uh, weird? Because um, so, I've had it. Some, I, I some enjoyed people were it. talking about doing, like, um, you know, uh, 12, uh, three 12 hour days and then picking up like a four hour shift later. Like, it's it's interesting what options are out there now. Mm. Right. Uh, yeah. I'd be, I'm, I'm intrigued by the notion of that one day breaking it up in the middle thing. That might be kind of cool. But breaking it up is hard to do. It is. Man, I'd love a three day weekend. That's that nice, too. For me, that's that's the way to go. Well, we've experienced that over the past couple of summers uh, yeah. via vacation in, uh, in July and August, and it's nice. Yeah, and there know? are a lot of people out there that are so supportive of that. <laughs> you know what happens? One of us doing that? Uh, just one guy in Too particular. Bad. Yeah, he's like, we're allowed to have to take off, right? Yeah. It's our vacation. <laughs> you can do with it what we do. In ah. fact, if you have vacation, folks, take it. Take it. It's yours. It helps me to enjoy America's Funniest Home Videos more when I go home. <laughs> on, on Sunday, Sunday night. night. Oh, my God. You stay up and watch it. I, yeah. Uh, so after the study, 90% preferred uh, the new model, uh, and multiple British companies have established uh, Takano's proposed framework in their business. Commercial Workers Union, American Federation of Labor, and Congress of Industrial Orgs, uh, four-day week orcs? global. Not orcs. Oh. Uh, Service Employees International Union and United Food co-signed the congressman's new business layout, endorsing the bill. Would this apply to robots like that uh, work at Lowe's? Would maybe. they get a four-day work week? Yeah, maybe. Do you think, um, listen, I, I do enjoy, I'm a bigger fan of the extended weekend. As uh, You know, I'm a bad vacation taker. I'm trying to train myself to, to be a little bit better at it, but... Um, the the long weekend is always a joy. I find. Yeah, it's nice too. I just, yeah, I think if you're a better employee and your and and your employer approves of it, I don't see where the loss is. To yeah, me. like if if, if, the, if, you if are, you're not losing productivity, if, well, yeah. in, in some cases you're increased yeah. productivity because you're you're not burning out. You're not taking additional sick days. You're not um, exhausted. You know, the way that I view weekends now, and and we have weird sleep schedules, and we've talked about this a million times. But like the first day of the weekend is catch up on rest, and then the second day of the weekend is. All right, well, the weekend's almost over now, and then mm -hmm. you got to get back to work afterwards. And listen, we, we have great jobs. I'm not complaining about the work itself. I just think, like, you can do work better and do work smarter My uh, favorite if, part, you, if you're able to adjust the hours. My favorite part of the weekend is actually Friday. Exactly. And, Friday, and why? Yeah. In part because you don't have the stress looming right. over you of going back to work on Monday. Yeah. I think I told you guys this before, but a friend of mine worked for a European company. She was based in the United States, but she would have to travel a lot, you know, over to her office, her different offices, and um, they adopted the European model of vacation and yeah. work days and all of that, and she, they, like, encouraged them to take vacation. She had a month off one time and, and went to Europe, and I forget what the deal was, but she got, you know, special compensation for it because she was traveling to Europe for vacation, but they gave, she, she literally took a month off from work, but she said that the um, turnover rate at her job was so low because yeah. Yeah. everyone yeah. loved enjoyed yeah. so much working for them. Uh, my wife has family that lives in Scandinavia and in Sweden, and they, they get a, a large amount of vacation, and a lot of people will take it in a Six-week so, chunk. Yeah, yeah. They'll take a chunk off, yeah. and, and it's in, incredibly reinvigorating. I literally uh, just uh, tweeted, not tweeted, uh, Instagrammed out this meme yesterday where it says, you know, European out-of-office emails. It says, I'm away camping for the summer. I'll email again in September. Uh, yeah. And then it says, American out-of-offices. I've left the office for two hours to undergo kidney surgery, but <laughs> you can reach me on my cell anytime. Right. I know. My buddy, my buddy Steve, my best friend, is a, uh, he's a manager, and... Um, when he when he leaves and comes visits here and he'll be you know he'll be here a week or so and he will tell everyone don't e don't text me don't email me I'm on vacation and every day of course every day of course they're trying to they're tr asking him to help out with something he's just like nope shaking <laughs> does he his say head. no no he helps what, out what does he do 
He, he will respond. No, no, you know? what's, what's his job? Like, what oh, is... He does uh, 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 land title uh, stuff, so if you're oh, right. selling a home yeah, or yeah, property, yeah. Okay. The, the, the title on that. But it's just constantly all the time. So if you can get away from it completely, then uh, that's, that's what vacations are for, gang. All right, anyhow, uh, that's all we have time for, stream of consciousness or wise. My mind is a raging torrent. Flooded with rivulets of thought cascading into a waterfall of creative alternatives. <laughs> so we wrap it with that. Um, don't forget, we're going to go live on Fox Good Day this morning. So we'll take a break and do that when we return as well. Some bizarre, bizarre file stories. Stay with us on this Wednesday morning. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, people could place us, but um, not not so specifically. Okay. It's okay. so funny when some of our American viewers are like, "Leah, you sound like Adele." I'm like, "I really, <laughs> like I really Adele. don't." <laughs> really? Really? No, she's no. from a completely different area, <laughs> <laughs> but okay. she's a bit sharper, right? Yeah. Do you guys yeah. have a favorite or least favorite uh, British accent? Oh, I love um, Welsh. Welsh. Oh, I love a bit of Welsh. I do. And I heard that Philadelphia's got a Welsh uh, yeah. bit of history here. Well, in fact, sure. yes, where you're at, Bella Kinwood is. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. it's, it's a Welsh uh, name. Yeah. What, it's spelled B A L A C Y N Y D. That's how you spell Bella Kinwood. So Bella that's Kinwood. clearly a Welsh yeah. Yeah. Uh, derivation. So. When you mock, uh, when you when you are trying to make like a like a classic, stereotypical, goofy mm. British accent, which which do you target for it? What, what, what region do you target? You probably end up being Birmingham, would you? <laughs> yeah, you like Birmingham. Yeah. And Birmingham has been voted as like the ugliest UK That's accent for right. years and years, Aww. which is so sad because it is it's, it's a quirky accent. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, nice. But no, I think I we just all. go for a posh, posh, like us, but mm. e right. times 10. Of course, oh. I, I'm always doing the, 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 when we do the, the royal family. The That's royal. how he speaks. Yeah. 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 Pretty good, Steve. Right. <laughs> but, but I mean, so, so, and it's, and, it, uh, and everything that I do is a, is a, is a very over exaggerated thing because that's how it resonates with people. But I love the subtlety. So we'll see how you guys do with it. Okay. You kind of do a little cockney thing sometimes. Yeah, too, yeah, so. yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. It goes yeah. It's funny, though. What, what is amazing, <laughs> we learned about cockney, and I was just watching To Sir with Love um, again when Sidney Poitier passed away, that. That Cockney speak, that jumbled that word. rhyming. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, can you follow right. it, or do you need to be Absolutely. from the neighborhood to know what some of that stuff it's, is? It's it's almost like it's like speaking in metaphors. Yeah, like, like, you, yeah. 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 Things would ping out, wouldn't they? Like yeah. apple and stairs, we know. Apple and pears mean stairs. Yes. Things like that. But we can, if someone was actually mm. speaking it, which yeah. I don't I don't think I've ever met it's anyone. It's kind of dying out me, now. Uh, yeah. so, like no. parents' generations that are from that area, then it kind of has now dissolved. I assume when you speak time. that way and you're calling for an ambulance and they can't figure out where you are, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. why you're dying out. Yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah. can't get medical assistance. <laughs> All right, so we are going to play Brit or Not a Brit. All right, and we've got callers on the line, and here's the story. We have given them... What? We had okay, to play that. Right. Yeah. Uh, we've given them uh, lines from movies that are based in Philadelphia mm-hmm. okay. to say to you. So if whatever they're saying makes no sense to you at okay. all, don't worry about it. It's yeah. from a, a Philly movie. Preston, so by happenstance, I watched both Rocky and the second half of Philadelphia last night. Oh, perfect. Yes, I'm all prepped. You're, you're up to speed yeah. on this. All right, so uh, let's get our first caller on the line. Is this the order that we're going in? Yes. Yeah. All right, we're going to go to uh, Jen. Uh, Jen, good morning. Morning to you. All <laughs> right, Jen, you are going to read uh, a movie line for uh, Joel and uh, Leah, and let's see if we can figure out if you're a Brit or not a Brit. So go ahead, please. You, you know what crazy is? Crazy is majority rule. Take drones, for example. Uh Uh-huh. In the 18th century, no such thing. Not a nothing. No one ever imagined such a thing. No sane person, anyway. Hey. Hey, (laughs) look at this doctor. (laughs) (laughs) No, she was Okay, all right, all right. Let's let's find quite good. Let's find out officially. <laughs> well, Leah, so tragic. Leah, what do you think, Brit or not a Brit? I think not a Brit. All right, and Joel, Brit or not a Brit? Not a Brit. Uh, All right, Jen, oh wh- what no, are you? Where are you from, Jen? What, where are you from, Jen? I am from Newark, Delaware. Newark, oh. Delaware. Oh. Not a Brit. All right, so somebody keeps score, well by the way. Right. They knew yeah. immediately. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, it was a bit over the top. <laughs> Wasn't bad though. No, no, it was yeah. it was mm. decent. She was just yeah. a, it was just a bit augmented. Right, right. Uh-huh. It's like yeah. the way I do it. Uh, what so, movie was that, by the way? Yeah, what do we movie? Even know? 
Anybody, do you know what okay. movie those lines were from, Jen? Because I couldn't pick yeah, up on Yeah, that was from 12 Monkeys. Uh, 12 Monkeys! That was, that was pretty hard, actually. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. You did a good job. All right. Is Jen get, are we giving prizes away? Or Only if doing? they stump them. Only if they stump yeah, them. Okay. okay. That's right. the way we do it here in the States. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Jen. You got to really do it. Jen. Thanks for playing, though. We Thank appreciate you. it. All right. These guys are uh, they're good on one. All right. Let's get our next caller on the line. It's quite a fun game. And we're going to go to Duke. Good morning, Duke. Hi. All right, Duke, could you please give us the line that you're going to be reading for Joel and Leah? Okay. Be nice if you had it ready to go. <laughs> give him a minute. He's doing Look, it. it's a name, man. The Italian stallion. The media will eat it up. Now, who discovered America? It's an, an Italian, right? What would be better than to get it on with one of its descendants? The act of repairs. Duke, I want to thank you for rehearsing that all night last night. <laughs> I watched and that scene live last night. So wonderfully. Okay, so uh, what do you think? Let's go Joel, Brit, or not a Brit? I think he's a Brit. I think Duke isn't even his name because that's a very American name. <laughs> okay. yeah. I think he's a Brit. That's very good. And Leah, what do you think? You think not a Brit. You think not oh. a Brit. Duke, where are you from? I'm from Manchester. No! Oh, yes! oh, my gosh. Yeah. Don't cut it right. All right, so apparently Duke owns a barbershop called Blokes oh. in Old yep. City. No kidding. How Very nice, you, Duke. How long have you been in the States, Duke? Uh, Ten years. Ten years. Okay. Wow. Originally from uh, from Manchester. Were you a, a, a barber there as well, or is this a whole new I life? I was, yeah. Okay. Oh, no. Nice. I Barber and a musician. All right, and, and reading uh, the info that you sent us, what other uh, countries do you get mistaken that you are from? Oh, I get Irish, uh, Australian, Kiwi, South African, all sorts. All of them, yeah, I believe it. And that, that's a common refrain, by the way. People are like, are you South African? And oh, my so God. Yeah. Austra- yeah. To me, Australian and Kiwi yeah. are so different, and I don't know Oh, how. you use bloke. You use the word bloke. You must be from Australia. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, well, Duke, you did manage to uh, stump Leah, so I yeah. think that's good for a Yeah, prize. we'll hook you up with something. All right, hang on a second, Duke. Thank yeah. you very much, man. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Marissa, do I need to keep him on hold, or will we contact him? We'll contact him. We'll contact him. All right, it was let... funny because my friend is uh, Helen. She's from Manchester. Yeah. And uh, when he was saying a couple of things, I was like, oh, my God. that's." And I was with her last night. Uh, I was like, that's exactly how she sounds. So mm. maybe I can pick out a Manchester accent. All right. Yeah. Let's go with another caller. We have uh, Peter on the line. Good morning, Peter. Hey, good morning. Good morning. All right. So we're doing, we have uh, Joel and Leah here. We're playing Brit or not a Brit. Could you give us the line, please? I will do. Commodities or agricultural products like coffee that you had for breakfast, wheat, which is used to make bread, pork bellies, which is used to make bacon, which you might find in a bacon and lettuce and tomato sandwich. Yeah, definitely a Brit. Definitely a Brit. <laughs> All right, you guys both say Brit? Uh-huh. Brit. Yeah. Where? Yeah. Where is he from? Well, hang on. Yeah. Pe- Peter, well, yeah, if, if you were to narrow it down and you think it's legit, where would you say Peter's he's, from? I don't think he's from the South. Can you okay. say a couple more words, please? Hmm. Just a few more. Just say a few more words, uh, Peter, if you would. Well, what sort of words would you like me to say? Yeah, All you right. did it. Okay. Well, what, um, <laughs> We go, I think Midlands, like Midlands. Leo. Where, where are you from, Peter? Well, that's pretty clever because I, I was born in a city called Leicester, which is in the Midlands. Hey! 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 Wow. You got well, the Midlands? You got the whole done. thing? And how long but have I you been? I spent most of my life in London. All right. Wow. And uh, how long have you been in the States? Uh, 40 years. 40, 40 years. Wow. years. Wow. Good for you, man. You, that... you still sound like that? Yeah, that is not faded whatsoever. No. All right. Well, thank you for playing, Peter. Unfortunately, you didn't stump these guys, but uh, we appreciate you calling in, and thank you for listening to the show. It's like... Thank you. It's always right. fun. Take care, Peter. Uh, normally, an accent yeah. would go away. That's why the hilarity of having Scotty on Star Trek had that complete... <laughs> yeah. I, I had... When I was a kid, I had a very thick Southern accent. Right. I, I lived in, in the wow. South uh, growing up, and my parents speak with a Southern accent, but I've... You know, I shook it along the line. By the way, there was a Ralph Bellamy as Randolph Duke in Trading Places. <laughs> yes. yes. Thank you very much. Line. Yes. Yep. All right. Let's get uh, another caller. We have William on. Hi, William. Good morning. Morning. All right, William, we are playing Brit or not a Brit, and uh, Joel and Leah want to hear your accent, so give us the line, please. What? Are you kidding? Sundays. <laughs> I love Sundays. <laughs> I live for Sundays. 
The whole family's together. Mum makes brioche. Dad puts the jersey on. We're all watching the game. Yes, it drives me crazy. And yes, I was negative. You didn't even know that I loved it, Nikki, but I did. I just didn't appreciate it or you before. Okay. <laughs> the, thing okay. is, the thing is, he, he could be could be a Brit. Uh-huh. He could be a performer. He ah, could be performing could be. right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, but what do you think if you had to? You My had to call initial it? instinct was pretend uh, I not think, a Brit. Yes. No, I don't think he's a Brit, but that was a very good the, attempt. But when he said brioche, I died. Yeah. <laughs> I, William, where are you from? Yeah, that's not even fair. That was spot on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's from Delco. He's from yeah. Delco. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, William, they found you out, but thanks, man. We appreciate it, buddy. All right, let's see. It's it. pretty, yeah. You know, it's funny because you all you have to do in, in many cases is convince people here. Uh, and, and so, you know, the, yes. the hard part, that's why when you do pass muster, when a Kate Winslet pulls off something as mechanically difficult as a sub accent, sub dialect yeah. here, yeah. it's an amazing thing. Well, so the, 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 way he, the way he said yo, he said yo. That's how you yeah. say it in yeah, Delaware yeah. County. Uh, in Delco. Yeah. yeah. But you can, so far, I, like, you you can hear them trying. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, the Brits are just natural. And that's, that's why, like, like, like when uh, Meryl Streep pulled off uh, the, the Polish accent in Sophie's Choice, you have, you'll have you have dialogue and dialect coaches on set. Yeah. Right, to, to right. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how hard it is. And yeah. by the way, you should visit some of the places that uh, are, are named for English cities. Like, you should definitely go to Chester and Camden. and no, 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 <laughs> no. No? No. You, oh, like you won't make Those it are like the high crime oh, areas. Yeah. <laughs> that was a, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> that was a movie set in Delco. That was Silver Linings Playbook and Bradley Cooper's character. Ah, oh, thank well you, Nick, for the clarification. All right, we have another call on the line. It is okay. Susan. Good morning, Susan. Good morning. Okay, Susan, we have uh, Joel and Leah here determining Brit or not a Brit. Could you please read what we sent to you? When you were making me, didn't you feel a certain inspiration? Almost like your hands were moved by force, not of this world. You made this body so that I could come to life. Okay. Uh, the accent let's... was good, but the intonation was was all off, wasn't it? What do you think? Yeah, John? I don't know. I thought that was very. That's really hard to tell because I think I it could just be that she's reading a quote yeah. that made it sound it slightly right. off. But do you want her to say really brioche? Good. <laughs> 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 just say brioche. No. All right, Joel. We're gonna ask you. Um, uh, no, you decision. know what? I'm gonna take a risk. To say I'm. She's a Brit. She's a Brit. Yeah. All right. Okay, and let's what do you say Brit then. She says Brit. All right, uh, Susan. Where are you from? I'm from Philly, baby. Oh! <laughs> they, I think they really knew. I think I know. It's just I like, think oh. you really knew. Uh, but that means Susan is uh, a winner. So, uh, hang, uh, Susan, we're going to get in touch with you and set you up with a prize, okay? Sounds great. Thank right. you. This is so fun. All right. Oh, very Thanks cool. for playing along. Very cool. All right. You guys we know have... what movie that was? What? Uh, is no. that Mannequin? It is Mannequin. Oh! Kim, Kim Cattrall and Mannequin. You guys ever see Mannequin? It, there's uh, Kim Cattrall, the actress from Sex and the City. Yeah. She, she's a mannequin in a store in Philadelphia. She comes to life. and the, It's she a true and story. Yeah, it's yeah. a true story. <laughs> true story. Yes. <laughs> right. It's a documentary, really. <laughs> <laughs> that's, why, that's why Kim Cattrall looks so plastic now. Oh, yeah. gosh. You guys. <laughs> All right. Let's get our next caller. We have uh, Chris. By the way, we have like a, done, a dozen of these to do. Okay. Oh, my Oh, gosh, this is so fun. Uh, <laughs> hi, Chris. Good morning. Hey, good morning. All right, Chris, uh, we are going to get... <laughs> uh, See, they already, got, they already got a taste. Each, we're going we're gonna to need to have you deliver the line. Could you go for it, please? Now that we know who you are, I know who I am. I'm not a mistake. It all makes sense. In a comic, you know who you can tell who the arch villain's going to be. He's the exact opposite of the hero. And most of the times, they're friends like you and me. I should have known way back when. You know why, David? Because of the kids. Mm. They mm. called me Mr. Glass. Mr. Glass. All right. Mm. What do you think? Mm. Leah, let's go with you. I was going to say Brit from maybe like that, the south, maybe somewhere near Essex. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I think, think like could be London or even. Yeah, I think definitely Brit. Yeah. You, definitely then, Brit. Then you say glass at the end instead of glass. Did mm. I was like, wait, what? You're throwing oh. me off the scent. <laughs> I, I, I heard glass. 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 I heard, like, yeah, G-L-O-S-S. Gloss. Gloss. Oh, gloss. It was yeah. the gloss. word gloss on the screen. All right. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, no, 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 no. It was the no, word glass, glass. But, but oh, right. to our ears, we heard him say gloss. Yeah. Might be, yeah. I, I think I heard glass. I think he's definitely a Brit. I think me too. All right. Both of them say a Brit. And Chris, where are you from? I am a Brit from uh, from Hatfield, Hertfordshire. Oh, oh, yeah. North 
London. you get it right? Yeah, well, right. I, no, I, I was wrong, but right. yeah, London, kind of London-ish. And where do you call home now, Chris? Uh, Chester County, down in town. All right, how long have you been in the States? 18 years. 18, 18 years. years. Wow, nice, and the fact man. that they still retain a, a substantial part of that, yeah. it's pretty yeah. amazing. Except yeah. for when saying glass. Yeah. So that's because he's lived here then. Yeah. So that yeah. bit's come out. Yeah. So we had, uh, and, and we had this guy as a guest on the show a couple times, um, Louis Knight. Uh, yes. He was a contestant on American Idol. Right. Yeah. I don't know if you know. Oh, yeah. But he is like the only English kid, guy, person, that I <laughs> have ever heard sing with an English accent. Oh, that's adorable. Yeah. Right. Can Chris, you do an impression of it? Chris, Chris thanks for a bunch of coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, thanks for playing, man. We appreciate it. Hey, thanks. All right, take care. All right, so you guys are doing pretty good. Yeah. Doing pretty I think good. We've only missed good. a couple yeah. of them. All right. Uh, let's get another caller on the line. Oh, what movie was that? Oh, Unbreakable. Uh, that Samuel L. Jackson. Glass. Yeah, glass. Thank glass. you. I, was, glass. I don't know why I couldn't remember the name of the movie, but it's an glass. M. Night Shyamalan classic. All right. Uh, we have Stephen. Hi, Stephen. Morning. Morning. All, All right. right, Stephen, we have a... <laughs> <laughs> they They're like the immediately yeah, yeah, yeah. making <laughs> their decisions when people say good morning. All right, Stephen, do us a favor and read the line we sent you. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place. It'll beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody's going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't as hard... But it ain't how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you've got to be willing to take the hit and not point fingers and say, hey, where you are. 1-800-GAMBLER. Nice. Uh, right before we do the right, we have to move on. <laughs> beef file, uh, can I do a couple shout-outs real yes, quick? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, this says, hey, guys, can you please perform a shout-out? Perform, perform a shout-out. Oh, wow. I, okay. These are all recorded, but I'll give it my uh, best. Here we go. Uh, for my <laughs> lovely daughter, Ashley Gorsup, who will turn 39 on the 18th of March. We miss her dearly since moving to Florida. Mm. And she's an avid listener of your show. She is under the weather right now so has hopefully she, has she moved to florida or are they i think they did oh good. um and so she said so hopefully this will brighten her day uh we can't wait to see her and her husband tom and may i love you ashley happy birthday my sweetheart keep in touch uh no it says keep it in nooch keep yeah. it in nooch <laughs> that's from mark and joan emmons uh who live in ormond beach florida so here you go and then another quick one says Preston Crew wanted to see if we could do a shout out. Uh, okay, it says on March twentieth between seven thirty and eight a.m. Oh, no, no. yeah, uh, it's my wife Annie uh, and son Jack. Uh, their birthday on Monday the twentieth. And listen, we're going to be broadcasting from. Uh, Orlando at yeah. uh, Universal Studios, so I'm not going to probably be doing shard outs then. Uh, so they always listen to the show on their way uh, to their schools. What better way uh, to show my love for goofy seven-year-old and phenomenal wife, mother, teacher uh, than a big old juicy shard. Thanks in advance. That is from John Sabo, so here you go. <laughs> for you, my friend. And yes, speaking of Monday and broadcasting live, uh, I want to remind you that on Monday, we want to start sending you to Universal Orlando Resort, okay? So Monday the 20th, start listening weekday mornings at 8 a.m. for the Preston and Steve Photo Hunt Challenge. You will get a clue on air. Then you will check out the photo gallery at WMMR.com. you be the correct number caller later in the show and correctly identify the photo and answer from that morning's clue. You could win a trip for two to Universal Orlando Resort with flights provided by Spirit. For more information, go to WMMR.com. We'll be giving away five of those next five. week. Five. Monday will be the first one. And uh, just stick with us all week long next week for your chance to win. And we're going to give you a little taste of what we've experienced to get you excited for winning, winning that trip as well. Well, we're we're already profits. We yep. can tell you it is a phenomenally good time. Oh, it's amazing. So I'm very excited for it. Uh, and a reminder, too, Bruce Springsteen tickets tomorrow morning on the President's Eve Show, later on today with Pierre Robert. Your opportunity, opportunity to get those. Make sure you stick around. Let's do this. Now, Bizarre. WMMR presents Bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre, Bizarre Final. Brought to you by Red Robin. March Madness is heating up at Red Robin. You can get 10% off all uh, off all of uh, pickup catering orders uh, throughout the month of March. And you can order today uh, at order.redrobinpa.com. Red Robin. Yum. Yum. All right, so 
A 39-year-old Florida woman is facing a felony battery charge for allegedly striking her 68-year-old boyfriend in the eye with an avocado. No! Oh, no! Police say Carlene Biswanger. That sounds like something out of uh, Willy Wonka. Yeah. Uh -huh. The Biswangers yeah. and Schnozloggers and Bernicious Knibs. Uh, she and the victim have been living together in a St. Petersburg apartment for about a year and have been engaging in consensual sexual intercourse. Once you've nailed Bizwanger, man. <clears throat> During a confrontation Sunday evening, police allege that Bizwanger threw an avocado at the victim's face, causing injury to his right eye. An avocado? Well, uh, yes, I guess you could. If it's not ripe. Yeah. Uh, and still, it's they're pretty damn firm. Does that she would hurt. keep a bowl of throwing avocados? Maybe she does. Bizwanger also allegedly threw a hanging rod that struck the man in the arm. Hit Pud Puller right in the face. A portion of this incident was witnessed by a neighbor. The alleged battery occurred at an apartment complex for residents age 62 and older. After being read her rights, Bizwanger <laughs> denied directly striking the victim. Bizwanger was arrested for battering a victim age 65 or older, a felony, by the way. She was released from the county jail without bond late Sunday night. Now, Bizwanger's rap sheet includes multiple convictions for illegal possession of Xanax, as well as convictions of theft, DUI, obstructing justice, probation violation, and driving without a license. Oh, Bizwanger. Any other produce charges? No, that's the only one. Three hikers in South Africa sustained broken legs Whoa. following an attack by agitated baboons who rolled a large boulder down at them. Little bastards. A yeah. Facebook post detailing the alleged Watch this. interspecies assault is currently blowing up. Now I'm going for the turkey. According to the post, the freak incident occurred last week. Uh, I'm sorry, last month after a group of seven hikers embarked on an, uh, it says an abseiling expedition. Not familiar. In the remote uh, Ben Oak Mountains in the Western Cape. Uh, the excursion was, go yes! was going well until the second day when the adventurers stopped off uh, for lunch and they noticed a troop of Cape baboons on a cliff above them. The simians, which are some of the world's biggest monkeys, weighed up to 80 pounds and measured four feet long, appeared agitated and curious about the humans below. Uh, the alpinists didn't think much of it and continued their descent down the cliff, and that's when things started to get rocky. Uh, two of the hikers What's going on? decided to... <laughs> one second I'm walking along and getting bowled over by baboons. Uh, that's when... Will you? Uh, they got orange <laughs> buttholes. Two of the hikers decided to rappel on down a waterfall when a massive 132-pound boulder, apparently dislodged by the baboons, struck the ledge of the remaining five were standing on, and the massive stone exploded on impact, sending shards of razor-sharp rock flying into the hikers like shrapnel, breaking three of their legs. That's pretty wild. And leaving another with a flesh wound. Uh, meanwhile, a fifth hiker was nearly knocked over a ledge by a stone but was halted mid-fall by his safety harness. Uh, unfortunately, a primate-triggered rock slide was far from over. The Mad Monkeys allegedly continued to rain stones down on the hikers like something out of a medieval siege, forcing them to seek shelter in the cliffside. Uh, despite their remote location, the hikers managed to make an SOS call, and an Air Mercy Service helicopter and a team from the Wilderness Search and Rescue uh, were mobilized for this whole thing. Man, so they, they were attacked by a, a bunch of baboons. Yeah. Monkeys. Uh, they'd use winches and lowered paramedics on the ledge where they uh, the climbers were huddled. They eventually got them into a stretcher and got them up. My leg is broken. Uh, it is unclear whether or not the avalanche was deliberate, though <laughs> primatologists have their suspicions, so they're not really sure. The primatologists they, are believing that it was they, intentional? No, they, they're, they're not sure. It says that... Um, Baboons can easily be upset by things that they're not mm -hmm. used to and would be used to humans walking along uh, cliff paths, but not obscealing down them. There's that word again. It's uh, repelling. Okay, repelling. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so maybe that freaked them out. Not really sure. But for whatever reason, these people said that they were throwing rocks at them and one of them a boulder. Wow. The Colombian Navy stumbled upon a chilling sight after seizing a ghost submarine Ooh. and finding two dead bodies along with more than $87.7 million worth of cocaine on board. Oh, that sounds weird. Officials estimated that there were more than 2.6 tons of cocaine on the 49-foot-long vessel 
found floating in the Pacific Ocean on Sunday. Two survivors were also located and in need of life-saving medical attention. Military personnel found the two individuals in poor health conditions on the outside of the vessel. Apparently, there was an accident inside the semi-submersible uh, due to the uh, generation of toxic gases from the fuel. They were farting. Uh, two men were treated and transported to a nearby vessel where they were given uh, the necessary medical attention to safeguard their lives. And you got to see what this thing looks like, Steve. Yeah, it's yes. pretty wild. Did you see I it? I did see it. It's it's this almost like triangular shape. Oh. Yeah. Uh, both of the two survivors, as well as the corpses and the coke hall, were brought to the municipality of Tumaco, so they, they, where they were presented to the attorney general's office. They encounter these things, like, in the Gulf, they, or, you know, uh, wherever they're smuggling, they design these things, these smuggling subs. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I'm, I'd be curious to see what exactly happened, what the autopsy reveals. Yeah, so the submarine, by the way, was uh, recently seized by the government that allegedly uh, belonged to the Revolutionary Armed Forces of... Uh, of Colombia, uh, the, the Marxist guerrilla group that attempted to See, over again. overthrow Colombia's government between 1964 and 2017 was involved in drug trafficking, kidnappings, and other activities to finance their work. So they find these narco submarines yep. from time to time. It's pretty wild. All right, and then one last story. We'll end with this. Uh, free diver David Vensel set a Guinness World Record Tuesday after taking a 170-foot or 52.1-meter icy plunge below Switzerland's Lake Sills without a wetsuit. Uh, the 40-year-old Czech diver took just one breath before diving through a hole drilled in the ice to retrieve a sticker placed at 170.9 feet below the surface to, pro to prove his feet. A Vensel emerged from the same hole after one minute and 54 seconds, spat out some blood, and opened a oh. bottle of champagne. So you've uh, dove with a, with a wetsuit on, yeah. scuba gear. What's yep. the deepest you've ever gone? 90 feet. Okay, yep. you went 170. That's crazy. Uh, without anything, without, without anything. any equipment at all, uh, and I don't know how he can come back up that quickly without experiencing the bends. Without Some, having, uh, I that, don't know. That Those problem. free divers are insane. And yeah. it, I, uh, that to me is, if you've ever, when you jump off like the cliffs down in Jamaica and you go down wet, you go down far, you know, and you look up at the surface, yeah, it's scary. Yeah. It's just like you I, can see the surface right, when I've, you do that. I've got to cover that distance. These guys can't even see the surface. Preston, I wonder if the temperature of the water actually aided in his dive. I don't know. Maybe it slowed everything down? Well, slowed his heart rate down, yeah. His uh, his spokesperson said it was it was actually hard for him because of the cold. He said there's huh. nothing difficult uh, there, there's nothing difficult for him to be in cold water. He said lack of oxygen is something normal for him, but this was completely different because it's really difficult to work with the pressure in your ears in cold water. Right. If you combine all these three things, cold water, lack of oxygen, and the problem with working with pressure, it's something very unique. The water, by the way, was between 33 and 39 degrees. Come on. When he took the plunge. Well, air, that, that might have been at the surface. What did it get as they went down further? I don't know. Air, air temperatures hovered around 40 degrees. Uh, the Guinness World Record is the second for Vensel. Uh, he first made it into the book in 2021 after swimming the 265-foot length of an ice over <sighs> Czech Lake, which was one breath. I think it actually might get warmer as you go down deeper, Steve, yeah. because it freezes at the top. Right. And, and it doesn't freeze But what's closer to solar exposure? The uh, up higher, I guess. Right. So. Well, it's not going to get any colder yeah. than 32 degrees. Right, exactly. Because it'd be it'd ice. Be frozen solid. But it is, well, it was in a lake, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyhow, pretty wild that that guy is able to do that. And that is the last story in the Bizarre File for you. Secret text word, your chance to win tickets to see uh, Steel Panthers on the Prowl Tour, which is going to be on Friday evening at the Keswick Theater. Make sure you text the word secret to 39333 for your opportunity to win. We'll get uh, two winners this morning before we're done. All right, so we'll take a break. We'll come back in just a second. Hang out for a piece if you don't mind. Preston and Steve. On 93.3 WMMR. Started off like Scouse, then it went Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Liverpool, Scottish. You know what? His Scottish accent is better than mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're to say Brit or not a Brit, what do you think, Joel? I'll go not, not a Brit. A Brit. Yeah. Not, not a Brit. No, All right. Uh, Stephen, where are you from? I'm from South Jersey. Hey! <laughs> uh, but I love that. That's a great quote from Rocky Balboa. Yeah, yeah he was he was hitting some of them pretty Too solid. Well. Like, like the word hit, he said het. Yeah. Instead yeah. with more of an A. a I like e that sound. he did like a Scottish version rather than going for like was, our accent mm, that, that was, was brilliant was, what were you saying steven i was going for a north england geordie accent 
Oh, oh nice. so he knows yeah. his stuff. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's actually where Stallone is from. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for playing, Stephen. Have a good one, man. All right, have we, a good one. If you're just tuning in, we have uh, Joel and Leah who are here uh, in the states. Uh, they do a YouTube series yeah. and uh, they cover. Um, American culture, British culture, kind of compare the two, try some things out over here, uh, sample a little bit. It's it's wonderful watching, uh, and, and they're, they're very much likable. So and people love to see the differences. Yes. And by the way, I saw um, BuzzFeed has all these great lists that pop up all the time, and they, there was one that was showing American sections of grocery stores around the world. And and uh, so usually there's a small yeah, yeah. rack of stuff for maybe who's a tourist or, sure. or somebody who lives uh, that then go get some of their creature comforts uh, as far as food goes. And you know what I noticed on every single one of those photos? What? What, do you th- what item, if you were to guess? That is considered expressly American. Yeah. It was very easy to spot by the packaging. Very bright packaging. Hmm. It's a candy. I'll give you that. Circus peanuts? No. Candy. Circus peanuts. <laughs> M and M's. No. No. It's a candy. Yeah. It's a candy. Skittles. No. Uh. Reese's peanut butter cups. Ah. On every single photo that I saw all around the world, uh. I'm like, okay, yeah, I, so sure. Not circus peanuts. It's, I'd want them. Yeah, it's funny because I, uh, uh, my friend Helen hates uh, American mm. candy, and I can't stand British candy. I just, Ooh, and, and she, I offered, like British candy. Yeah, I can't do it. And they offer because we were all at the same restaurant last Saturday, and. She had a big box of uh, British chocolate. I was like, no, thanks. That's I'm, I'm okay with that. I, you know, and I, which is crazy because I love chocolate. But yeah. mm. she says that American chocolate tastes like vomit. Yeah, yeah it really it does. does. <laughs> 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 it, it's, it's been like a test. They've tested it. The, uh-huh. the compound in American chocolate, I think it's the milk powder that they, that they use, mm. right. does to <laughs> British taste taste Just like vomit. vomit. Oh, that's why Hershey smells like vomit. Well, it is we just can't eat oh my it. Gosh. But so it's we, also why Americans wouldn't like British chocolate. I yeah. do like British chocolate, though. I like they dark chocolate, though. Okay. Oh, you're mm-hmm. fancy. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have four more to go with Brit or not a Brit. So let's get our next caller on the line. It's Carl. Hey there, Carl. Morning, it. All right. Uh, uh, morning, it to you, sir. All right, Carl, we sent you a movie line. Could you please give it for Joel and Leah? Sure. Oh, see, I made Lewis a bet here. See, Lewis bet me that we couldn't both get rich and put y'all in the poorhouse at the same time. <laughs> He didn't think we could do it. I won. Trading Places. All right, that's from Trading yeah, Places, the movie. Okay. He doesn't actually say in the movie. <laughs> Brit or not a Brit? Let's start with you, Leah. Okay, Brit, maybe from Manchester. All right. Yeah, How well, about you, Joel? He's being sneaky. He's definitely a Brit. Yeah. Northern. Okay. Northern. Uh, Carl, where are you from? I'm from Harrogate, North Yorkshire. No. Okay. Oh, All right, they got it. They got it right. Well, yeah. you guys are good. Did you did you nail the region? Is that anywhere uh, near? Well, no? yeah, well, it's Yorkshire. North. It's north, but, but we, we thought the Manchester. North is very yeah. generic. Yeah. So, what is, uh, what is the um, uh, <laughs> th is an f? Yeah, yeah, that's just both. like both. Um, it doesn't belong to any region. That's just like relaxed speech. I guess. Yeah, right, just right. a little shortcut. Yeah. Yeah. I think Adele actually does that. I think she'll use yeah. an F instead of the TH. A lot. And, and, she does a lot. Yeah. And why is Liver Pudlian so sing songy? Like when Steve does yeah. his Paul McCartney, it's like it's really up and down. Yeah. And yeah, it is, I, isn't it? I don't know it's why. Just, I really kind of like work. it. It's got a. Yeah. But the only thing about Liver Pudlian accent I don't like is the K's. So when they say Coke, they'd say Coke. Chicken and a can it's of like a... <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really? not very nice. That's <laughs> almost Hasidic yeah. here. Like Thank you, Carl. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> this yeah. is my yeah. rabbi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, how about, uh, speaking of pronunciations, uh, a, a popular one uh, in slang is bruv. Uh, bruv. Wow. Yeah. With, with a V on the end. Uh, Ted Lasso? Short for brother, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Or you can say bruv. to anyone. Yeah, yeah, bruv. Yeah, yeah bruv. It's or like a bro here. Like we yeah. say, what's up, bro? You know? So, yeah. But I, but we don't do the V, but that's one I've found that's mm. very, very common. This hey, is my brother. Yeah. Has bruv. anybody made you aware of John yet? No. Yes. Oh, John. 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 Urban Outfitters. That man oh. taught us John. <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought you were asking about John, a person. I'm like, yeah, where no. is this John, John person? J-A-W-N. Oh, we learned that. John. We learned yeah. that, yeah. Doesn't it just mean anything? Like yes. this water now. Or like, yeah. oh, this John of water. Yeah. 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 Exactly. You could, you could literally say this John of John. <laughs> this John of John. Yeah. Because wow. the John is the bottle and the John is the water as well. So. Were you just wow. at an Urban Outfitters store? Were you shopping? 
Uh, yeah, we were just yeah. having a look around, and then okay. randomly, one of the employees, lovely man, was start just teaching us Philly slang. Lovely. <laughs> 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 I don't think they'd ever seen Londoners before. Yeah. Because then know, we heard him going around going, they're from London. <laughs> oh my God. It was <laughs> they look human. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm going to tell you about this city that you may find surprising because Philadelphia has a reputation for being a bit cold and, well, not cold, but rude. Rough. Yes. And, and, and tough. But no. when I have brought uh, people in from out of town and I'll show them around the city, I'm, I kid you not, they can tell, you know, like I remember pointing up at City Hall and mentioning Billy Penn's hat and so on. A, a person came along wearing like a, I think they were wearing a Rocky shirt. Yeah. <laughs> and and just started jumping in on the conversation right. and 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 uh, offering up and they were like oh you know there's a little version of the statue on uh, uh, on the Comcast building yeah. I'm like I know and so they just started sharing information I think you'll be surprised to find out how friendly people actually they are. are they really are and want to show you people are very proud of this city extremely proud of this city and will want to offer up hey here's some slang for you guys you know mm. to, to kind of help you out around town Definitely. yeah don't think it gets enough yeah. limelight does it no. No. well no. we've got we've got some stuff like the love statue for example <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you know uh, urban outfitters headquarters are in philadelphia if you go yeah. go down to south broad street in the navy yard that's where their headquarters are it's a pretty cool place yeah, Wonderful. yeah. yeah. Oh, that's all right very cool. three more for brit or not a brit okay. i have uh john good morning john is this a john or <laughs> this is a john. Okay. <laughs> john all right John, are you ready to try this? Ready to go, bro. All right, let's hear it. Here we go. <laughs> there will always be a part of me that's dirty and sloppy, but I like that. Just like all the other parts of myself. I can forgive. Can you say the same for yourself? Can you forgive? Are you capable of that? Oh, wow. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh. That's pretty solid. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, they're, they're a little confused. Let's see if we can get... An actual answer. Leah, what do you think? I think he's a Brit. Okay, what do you think, uh, Joel? Yeah, I think a Brit. From London, I think. Yeah. From London. That accent was definitely like Cockney style East yeah. London, wasn't it? Okay. John, where are you from? Well, I'm not a slut, but I'm 100% American. Oh! Oh! Somebody get well him a done, John. John. <laughs> we have a winner. Nice. Yeah. Uh, it says here you're from South Jersey. I'm from South Jersey, Sewell, New Jersey. Nice. Where did you where did you pick up this ability to uh, to mimic the accent? Watch a lot of YouTube, Preston. <laughs> watch, <laughs> watch you plan. watch them. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Make sure you watch Joel and Leah. You'll love it. <laughs> Perfect man. your accent. Uh, absolutely. All right, John. Absolutely. We'll be in touch. We'll get you something for your trouble, my friend. All right. We'll go for two more. Also, uh, Silver Linings Playbook. That that uh, line. Yes. Oh, it was yeah. Tiffany. Yeah. Thank you. All right, uh, Catherine. Are you there? I am. Morning. All right, uh, we have uh, two Brits here. They're going to try and determine whether or not you're faking it. Let's hear you deliver the Philadelphia-centric movie line we sent you for them. Go ahead. Hey, woman. Hey, woman. Listen here. Since you're a man, ain't got no heart, maybe you'd like to see a real man. I bet you stay up late every night dreaming you had a real man, don't you? I'll tell you what. Bring your pretty little self over to my apartment tonight, and I'll show you a real man. Okay. Mm. Do you know that line, Preston? I don't. What is that? Rocky like? Three. Yeah, it's Clubber Lang. Oh, man. Uh, Remember when they're standing in front of the yeah. Rocky statue? Your woman! Bring your woman over here! I don't know who man is. I haven't seen Rocky Three in so long. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's go to Joel and see if he can determine Brit or not a Brit. I thought she was very good, but I think not a Brit. I think California. 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 <laughs> uh, Valley girl. You, Leah. I thought it was a very, you know, lovely, eloquent delivery. <laughs> but I, I think not a Brit, so I'd be very surprised. Uh, Catherine, where are you from? Originally from Lancaster. All right. Oh. Lancaster, PA. All right. Well done. You didn't get it past him, but thank you very much for helping out. All right. We All have, right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. We have one more to go in Brit or not a Brit, and the final person is Robert. Robert, are you there? Top of the morning it. All right. Top of the morning, <laughs> of the morning it to you. All right, Robert, we sent you a, uh, a movie line from Philadelphia. Go ahead and uh, give it to us, please. You know where South Park comes from. I'll tell you. A long time ago, there was this guy, maybe a couple of hundred years ago, he was fighting around, I think it was around Philadelphia, and his arm, he was left-handed, and his arm was facing toward New Jersey, you see, and that's south. So then naturally, they call him Southpaw, you see, Southpaw, South Jersey, South Camden, Southpaw, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's from Rocky, Rocky Balboa. Yes, yeah, no, remember when they were on the ice Rocky. skating rink. What's that? Number Rocky. One. Oh, Not Rocky yeah. Balboa. Yeah, he's skating around with Adrian. That's in the uh, 
The yeah, South Pole. Right South, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. South Philadelphia, South and South America, <laughs> South, North, a direction, <laughs> as in directions you might go, one of them being South. <laughs> and that's where we got it. Yeah. Joel, what do you think? Yeah, I think I think Brit. I think he's from Ireland. Oh, poor man. He probably doesn't want to identify as British, does he? Yeah, and he's Irish. Yeah. You yeah. think he's Irish? Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't want to offend any because no. Irish people don't like to be called British. But no. for the sake of the game, British. I you. Okay. But All right. All I right. think Irish. Uh, Robert, where were you born? Glasgow, Scotland. Oh! oh! How did we get that so wrong? We so That's I'm sorry, but that was so Irish. <laughs> that is that <laughs> offensive to him? You know what, people? I think people, Scottish and Irish get annoyed at English people for mixing up the accent. You're we've right. Oh, we've just done. Oh, I'm so no, sorry. Yeah. You guys are so right because <laughs> one of my favorite vacations, my wife and I took was to Edinburgh. Yeah. And and uh, that is clearly something they're not fond of having the no. the accent, <laughs> the dialect confused. Oh, yes. No, I'm so sorry. We're such idiot English. <laughs> no, Robert, so sorry, Robert, mate. does uh, can you get past this uh, this comment they made? <laughs> Uh, I identify as Scottish, so I'm okay with it. You identify as Scottish. Uh, where, where do you live now, by the way? Um, I live in Wilmington, Delaware, but I work in Delco. Ah, okay, uh, Delco. Delco! How long yeah. have you been in the States? Uh, 15 years. 15, 15 years. All right. All right, man. Well, thank you for playing along. We appreciate that. Cheers. All right, All right, take care. All right there you go. Brit or not well a Brit? Right, so, by the way, you guys killed it. You yeah. did a great job. Yeah, how did they? Did anybody keep score? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, somehow, Joel ended up winning. Seven oh. to six. That's what we said would happen. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's the linguist. Seven to six. <laughs> yeah, Joel got one right. The Leah got wrong. And then we had how many on there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We had 11, so that's not bad. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's damn impressed. good. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a, it's a difficult thing, especially over a phone. Yeah. <laughs> I, there, there were a couple of them that where I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. You could tell right away, just trying a little bit too hard. When Joel and Leah started laughing yeah, immediately yeah. on the <laughs> 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 I have a six to six. I see did the people. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Japanese. Now, to put you guys on the spot, do you have uh, uh, any uh, American uh, accent that you try to pull off? No, we can only do generic Just Valley Girl, can we? Generic, yeah. Uh, okay. G- Valley so Girl. Try give, give it, yeah, give it a shot. Okay, so give us something to say. and then. Uh, uh, that's uh, the hard part is coming oh, up okay. with something. We can just Tell okay. us what you're doing today. Okay, so... 93.3 WMMR. Thanks, Kath. Uh, Steve sent over this interesting article a couple of days ago. I'm not sure, was it in the Inquirer? Yes, the Inquirer. Um, And it has to do with babysitting. Um, And it covers the uh, rates paid on average in Philadelphia and and various other things. So if you are a... Uh, if you're uh, a parent that is finally going to get into, uh, you know, allowing your kids to be sat for a while. Yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's, a, there's a time where it's difficult to leave your children with anybody unless it's family members. Right. I think when you leave the maternity ward is that time, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so uh, you may be a new parent and you may need a bit of a, um, a baseline of where to judge for rates. Uh, right for, for babysitting. This is something I've never had to encounter. I never. I know. Did you ever babysit? I never babysit. Yeah, yeah. I, I did for some uh, some kids in the neighborhood, some families, and uh, I did it from time to time. But I didn't make it a regular. Right. You know, like I was the go-to babysitter for this family or anything. What like that. What was your rate? I don't remember. Okay. That's how I got through college was babysitting. Yeah, I I didn't, you know, I wasn't uh, great at the uh, waitress thing. Uh, I did it for a little bit. Get it yourself. Yeah. um, (laughs) Yeah, but babysitting is what got me through college. That's where I got my money. And uh, I did it probably almost every day. And what uh, what age did you start, Kev? Oh, babysitting! I st- I started young. I was in middle school. Uh, mm. There were twins in the neighborhood, and wow. uh, me and a friend would both go over and okay. watch them. Yeah, looking together. back on it, I, I was probably twelve or thirteen. Yeah. And as as a parent now, I can't imagine leaving my child with a twelve or thirteen year old. No. But nope, totally. at the time it was totally reasonable. I couldn't imagine any parent leaving their kids with me. Yeah. <laughs> I had uh, <laughs> we used our interns. I'm like, okay, these are college students. Yeah. Yeah. I'm willing to pay extra for you know an adult. Yes. To watch my children rather than, uh, and, and so like my daughters, like, you know, they were, you know, floating the notion of babysitting. And I don't want them babysitting, you know, like I, I, I feel like that's just too much responsibility and, and, you know, things that can go wrong can go wrong in a, in a major way. I think you pick up more real life skills with an OnlyFans account. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, no, it teaches them responsibility, that. Case. Yeah. I mean, like, I think it's a good first job for them to have because of, the learning curve, and they might make mis- mistakes, but like those are good mistakes yeah, to but learn. Mistakes but I think he's afraid dire. of the liability. The di- so here's the deal: I know somebody who's 
sibling is no longer with us, and it happened on the babysitter's oh, watch. Wow. 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 Well, that's, that's where that, my mind goes. Well, that, that's right. a nightmare scenario. Yeah. I'd yeah. say statistically that is, that's the, the outlier. Uh -huh. But wow, yeah, that's got to be horrific. Yeah. So, all right, now I have a question about that, if you don't mind sharing a little bit. Uh, were, were they at fault at all? Uh, I, I think as far as maybe neglect is concerned, yes. Oh, no. Yeah. There are safe ways to play Russian roulette. Right. <laughs> But that must have just wrecked that person as yeah. well. Not only, you know, if, if they made a mistake or whatever that is, I'm sure it wasn't intended. And No, no, no. Oh but, you know, I, I just wouldn't want anything even remotely like that to happen on sure. my child's watch. So what I, do you, when you, when you pay a sitter, when was the last time you were paying a sitter? It was like 20 bucks an hour. All right. So in this article, Philadelphia parents last year paid on average uh, $18.03 an hour. <laughs> Uh, for someone to watch one child and twenty dollars and seventy eight cents for someone to watch two children, that's according to Urban Sitter, which is a platform for finding uh, caregiving. But that's if you have parents, you know, like the grandparents. That's that's free childcare right there. Oh yeah, it is. And you would use that as much as you could, but you know, unless they answer the door with their pants off, <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> you, uh, I have grandkids. Yes. Yeah. Uh, those numbers may sound steep, it says, but they're below the national average. Philadelphia so, is below the national average, which is uh, $22.68 for one and $25.37 for two kids. So going, uh, all right, so mm. I would assume, uh, my national inclination would be you'd want to, uh, you'll pay top dollar for your kids. You want the best that you can get. How do you, how, if you don't have interns, if you don't have, how do you go about securing somebody. I, I used a service. Like yeah. I, I used care.com. And they're bonded and everything, correct? Well, so uh, care.com, I mean, there are there are services that you can use where, I mean, you pay a, a nice fee, but like they vet everybody. Um, so with care.com, I did, um, you know, you can, you can do different, there's different levels to the accounts, but like mine uh, required background checks and all Aren't that. Aren't you kind of Jared stuff. from Subway? <laughs> oh my God. No, no. Oh my God. I just watched the. Uh Oh, you were oh, stuck in the, the, yeah, the yeah. Discovery Plus yeah, yeah. How series. Is it? I, oh my! It's in, it's God. in my queue. Yeah. Oh my God! You. Yeah. It's messed up. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Dude, dude was you, not a good babysitter. You can't believe what he was saying. All right. Anyway, yeah. just side, side note, but that's you, it's it's crazy. It's worse than you thought it was. Uh, what does bonded mean? Well, I, I, I hear that term. Your security bonded. That's my understanding. Is that you passed a background check, a security check. That uh, and then they, therefore you're bonded, you're you're cleared. Well, you're also linked to the company, that right? You, so they they are uh, liable and responsible for okay uh, insurance for their employees, all that, right? It's, yeah, all, all, right. So there's a bit of there's a bit of responsibility not just on the individual you're hiring to babysit, but also the company that you used. The understanding, Preston, is that if they lose one of your kids, you will get a cashier's check for five hundred dollars. For five hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're covered. Yeah, you're all right. Uh, some babysitters will ask for a specific hourly rate or provide a range, and during an initial conversation or interview with the family is when they set that up. Uh, if they don't, this article says, first consider the going rate in your area. Ask your friends and relatives what they pay. Uh, the rate can vary by neighborhood, and it might be different from the data on Urban Sitter, where sitters skew older and are more experienced. And also, just be aware as a babysitter that... Uh Children are like as honest as they can possibly be. Yep. So if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing as a babysitter, parents are going to find out about this. And I just know, like when my kids, we had this one babysitter one time uh, when we came home, we were talking to our kids, and they were like, "Yeah, she like didn't take her her face out of her phone the entire. She didn't do anything for us. She basically was just an older kid in the room. Can and you, that was it. Can you, um, Kathy? Maybe you know this. Can you go? With, uh, is there a service that provides like? Older people, like senior citizens, like yeah, well, people who are a little bit more. Oh uh, yeah, I feel like Casey has all these bad experiences. <laughs> I had nothing but excellent, good, yeah. good experiences with with the people that we hired. Now we hired them more on a long term basis when right. Jace was younger, almost like a nanny. Uh, yeah, but I mean, they uh, we had great experience. But yes, you can with with all the services. I mean, you can indicate if if you'd like an age range. Or, okay, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, this I mean, is just a word of mouth person. Kat. I mean, and I I did like. Uh, when when Jace was very young, we had somebody speak to him in a different language. Like we we requested somebody who was bilingual. So he couldn't understand. <laughs> no, no, but his first words were in French. Oh you had wow! People flake on you, Kat, didn't you? Like through the service, like people were 
like uh, almost like no shows or like no. last minute cancellations. I had somebody who was a mm -mm. full on no show. One what? Night. Maybe it was you that I'm thinking about. It might have been. We were gonna go see. Uh, we were gonna go see Steel Panther, <laughs> and they were playing somewhere like Bethlehem or something like that. And uh, and we're waiting and waiting, and they were supposed to show up, and they flat out just Man. did not show up. And I forgot who that person was. Hmm. And why we got the no show on him? But I was like, "How dare you?" Yeah, we had like we were going out with friends and yeah. everything. It you was made it crazy. Wait, Casey, no, you're right. There was one girl one time who was with us for um, she was with us for a few months, and then one day she just stopped coming. She just wow. disappeared. You're right. She just disappeared. Yes, and then she like messaged me in French. No, no, the, no. <laughs> God, no. She was amazing. She never did that to us. Um, no, Casey. She mess. I had communicated with her for months over the phone and she messaged me on Facebook and what? was like on oh Facebook. my god I'm so sorry I overslept I was like what the hell is going on well, I feel confident that you're taking care of my kids yeah no <laughs> thank you yeah we that was over it is funny that. like when you get access to a good babysitter you become so protective of that person and like right. you you want other parents to know about it but you don't want to know them you don't want them to know too much i'll get you a car you don't want to share too much well, i mean like <laughs> yeah. you when you find a good babysitter you talk to other parents in case i remember specifically like talking to you about who you and diane used at, at certain times and and i know that we shared a few different interns over the over the years or whatever but like yeah, no, you don't want to you, wanna, yeah, you don't want to no. oh, them out I too much share. when i found out you got you called lizzie i was like no. yeah lizzie's mine <laughs> right but i got so Devin. I. I got Devin from preston and and Devin was right. a former intern of ours as well but she was like She's still a family friend because of how great of a babysitter she was. I'm, I went to a wedding of one of our babysitters growing up because for, for me and my brother, she was so special. Wow. And my cousin Kathleen, she listens to the show. She was the best. She came over with activities. Oh, you know, yeah, she had absolutely. like a whole those, bag of things, you know. This yeah. game's called, How Long Can I Shut Up? <laughs> no, those were the best babysitters. Those yeah. were the fun ones. That's yes. who you wanted to come over. Yes. Like people who have some sort of like... Um, uh, a plan, yeah. That that and and that people have, who come from childcare to begin with, like you know, that have that sort of background. You yeah, know? sure. Steve, you joked about I'll buy you a car. Um, <laughs> uh, I, no, I, I have a friend who um, buys a car for her babysitters. What? Again, they they were there long term. You got, I, they weren't just hey, yeah. we're going out were for years. a date night. They were yeah, they yeah. would come you know and be there for a full wow. day. They were working forty hours a week, but yeah, she needed them to drive her kids around. She wanted it to be a reliable car, so she bought her a car. Wow. By the way wanted to point this out real quick. A texter had sent in a message that said that her daughter was a babysitter and had um, taken a course through the Red Cross. You can take yeah. a course through and, the Red Cross. And that made her feel more comfortable Absolutely. sending yeah. the, the daughter yeah. out. So yeah. I didn't know that was available. Maybe it's, I don't know if it's still available, but if so, that would definitely be worth doing. Absolutely. A couple of phone calls. Uh, I will go to Michelle, who does some sitting. Hi, Michelle. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, it's oh, Michelle. Yeah. You babysit kids, Michelle? Yes. Oh. I've been doing that since I've been 10 years old. Okay. And I was a housekeeper nanny for 26 years in Newtown. I took care of four kids, five dogs, and two adults. What would, if I may ask, Michelle, what were you earning per hour at the height okay, of your well, career? Here's what happened. In 91, <laughs> I got laid off my first and last job ever and i collected i went i just put out business cards and i found these doctors up in newtown and she i priced her at 20 dollars an hour in 91. okay all right okay and then i start cleaning and i start taking care of maria who's now like 30 some years old and a teacher in a pennington school district and then they start adopting children because they couldn't have them all i run the whole house i work 30 hours a week i cook dinner i got the kids off to school wow I took them to, I, I was like a mom that didn't have kids. I loved it. I, I went to work every day. I came home with our kids and went to bed and worked <laughs> up and went to work. And, and they, you were getting, they were getting all that from you for 20 uh, bucks an hour? That, right. And, and then then she put me on the, then she, she wanted me to have insurance. So then she would put me on the books so I would have insurance and get SS. I worked for them 26 years. And then I cleaned Jeez. on the side. I always made cash. And she would give me $200 a week in a drawer, in her desk, for anything I had to buy. And I had a credit card with American Airlines so they would get the point. That sounds, that's like a sweet deal. So I know, I did that till 2018, and the last kid went to college. He's out now. Are you, are you like, in family photos and stuff? You're, like, a member of the family? Yeah, yeah. I, I loved them like they were my kids. But yeah. I went home every night. You know, I didn't. Yeah. But I had, I, had the, I had Maria since she was six months. I had Terrence since the first day he was born. She threw him on the king-size bed and said, 
change him. And I said, oh, my God, he's so skinny. I'm afraid I'm going to break his legs because I'm kind of rough. <laughs> he can take it. He's in college. Kind of rough. Kind of rough. <laughs> okay. And I'm just, I'm a Philly chick, so, you know, I don't take this shit. <laughs> the kid, him and I bonded. And after four years, she got nervous <laughs> because he wanted to be with me, not her. Well, when you were telling all the time. Well, he's with you all the time. But and I do, I did everything. Play with him. I cooked. They ate all my food. I did all the shopping. I did everything because they were doctors, so they had to work. But it actually took three of us to run four kids because they were in every sport possible. What? Wow. That Fine. happens, though, a lot of times. If they're spending a lot of time sure. with your kid, they bond with Absolutely. their caretaker. And then, yeah. some. you know, you come home and they kind of get upset when the caretaker uh -huh. leaves. That's well, Kathy's right. I was, on, I was after that on care.com. I did all that. And now I'm on Citatree. But the thing is, what you're saying, Preston, the urban, the money, one child is $21 an hour, and every kid after that's another dollar just now. But people don't want to pay pay even that they want to pay you fourteen dollars an hour and they want you to do the dishes do wash clean the house while you're taking care of their kid why they're in the house yeah yeah that's oh, a, oh, so you're yeah. like a living nanny yeah and guess what i i love doing it but i like i had someone last week from uh the southampton the with the armory they email me see they see how much um experience i have they want me. They come looking for me because I'll say, I know I didn't apply to this job. And they're like, no, I, I found you. And But I was going up the mountain, so I couldn't. But they want me to take care of military kids for the day. Man, you can write your own ticket. Yeah. You're like you're like uh, like in high demand. Yeah, but you, you know what? Now, I mean, I don't, I don't want anything under really $25 an hour. Right. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I play with it. I do everything. You yeah. know what I mean? I just... Well, and, and there's descriptions in this article, yes. which I'm going to go through, as, yeah. as to why you might get paid more. And that's that's one of them as well. So it's yeah. it, it, doing housework and, and uh, activities and things. Yeah, and I'm doing everything. But you guys, lucky dogs, get on the floor. <laughs> it's going to be fun. We <laughs> wish you were going. We'll be thinking dog. about you, Michelle. If we need any sitting down there, we'll call you. No, I'm serious. I'm going to win because I always win a trip on the radio. Oh, all right. All right. All right. Well, we're on well, the radio. We'll start that on Monday. All right, Michelle? <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, hang in. We'll see you then, Michelle. I can't get a word out. No, it's okay. But she's she's actually talking. All right, Michelle. We love you. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Let her go. She's got to go. Babysitting still. Yeah. I bet you she's she's good. Probably great at what she does. Yeah. She'll talk the kids to sleep. Education has to do with the pay as well. Yes. Um. And you know their level of education. And and you guys were talking about the Red Red Cross. Um. You know if they take CPR or they take first aid stuff like that played into how much they got paid as well. By the way, uh, she just Michelle just reminded me saying she's rubbing everything. So my mom, uh, so in her family, when she was a kid, and we're talking about 1950s and so on, uh, her uncle, so there were five in her family all together. So my, the, the mom and dad, my, my grandparents needed help, and they had a woman, man, I can't, I, I, I only met her a couple of times because uh, she was already old, uh, elderly by that time, but um, I think her name was Gladys. And so Gladys did a lot of the housework and taking care of the kids. And she had, and this was an earlier time, mind right. you, gang, but she had full permission to unleash some whoop ass if she Horrible needed punishment. to. Absolutely. And and plus, you know, uh, the, the, my mom's kids, the, the family were, they were a nightmare. I mean, wow. they, they were crazy. They were, you know, doing yeah. whatever they wanted to and <laughs> little hellions and everything. But Gladys would, I heard many old stories about them and put my cigarette out on you you know getting their <laughs> ass kicked yeah. by gladys but they loved her you yeah. know they did because they were they they had it coming they were being little, we were pretty yeah. much there allowed to go there's gladys i think that was her name man it's been a long time was but there a lot of love in the family there's a lot of love in the family absolutely there was a lot of love in the family uh by the way <laughs> An actual person. They were pretty much allowed to do yeah, they're you know, pretty go much whatever there. they wanted to. We were pretty much allowed <laughs> to go. <laughs> That's Gladys. That's right. when she was young. I'm going to go to these calls, so hang on the line if you're on, on hold here real quick. Um, so let me see here. Um, uh, there are uh, a couple of factors. So like how many kids is the babysitter watching is one of them. It says right. rates don't need to be doubled or tripled for two or three children. But Urban Sitter recommends throwing an extra dollar or two an hour for each additional child. That seems, See, that seems low to that me. That seems way low. Yeah. I, so, like, I make the case, you know, if you have one cat, you can have two. You can have three. It's not that much. But with a human, when you're adding on 
another kid? Is it really? Oh, it's just it's just a slight take up. Well, yeah, because you you can't if, if it's about twenty dollars an hour, like because you're you not can handcuff pay, them together. We're well, not going to pay sixty dollars an hour if yeah. you have three kids. But no. I mean, not, I, that's I would not say reasonable. what about like five bucks or even that? But a buck. So a traditional kid. You might also pay more if you're asking a sitter to watch a newborn or young twins or triplets. It says. Um, also to consider, does your child have special needs? Does the babysitter have to administer medication? Are they caring for a child who is nonverbal or requires more help with changing, bathing, or other activities uh, than other children at their age? If your child has any special needs, pay your sitter more than the going rate, especially if the sitter has special certifications or training. What would they say that, do they suggest what they would go for on average? No, if you were, they don't. Okay. They just recommend that you pay more. Uh, will the sitter be required to do other chores? It says the line between babysitter and nanny is getting blurred. Some babysitters are expected to drive children to activities, cook, clean, do laundry, help with homework, or walk the dog. If you're asking your sitter to do any of these activities, they should be paid more. Care.com suggests a dollar to two dollars more an hour. That seems like crazy low. Depending on how much is being asked of them, basically tidying up or getting a child a snack does not require extra if, pay. If you're right. taking care of kids in, in case, and then you're also preparing meals for them and driving them around, that that warrants another dollar. Well, I mean, yeah, because you're already being paid on top. You know, you're already getting an hourly wage. So yeah, I mean, it's just like bonus money, but. Uh, I think generally, I, I think you should, as a sitter, you should be required to clean up any sort of mess you create, right? Not necessarily of like, I need you to, you know, cook dinner. Right. That's something different. But any sort of mess that happens on your watch, I think you're responsible for. Steve, I also think there's a little bit of a difference between um, asking somebody to come over and watch your kids for a date night or a here right. and there and somebody who's there on a regular basis. Right. Yeah, no, clearly. I'm just wondering why that, why it just seems like a buck for each. So if you take care of the Von Trapp family, <laughs> and mm. they're just going to add in, uh, you know, a couple extra bucks for, for Gunther through to uh, everybody else. It, it, seems, it seems like a weird way to work out that equation. By the way, somebody texted and said, I had a babysitter who let me play with her boobs. Ooh, wow. Oh, my God. And I liked it so much, I told my mom, and she didn't babysit it for us anymore. Oh. <laughs> well, there's very, very much love in that family. I'm going to go to Serena, a professional babysitter. Serena, good morning. Hi, guys. Good morning. Hey. Uh, how long have you been doing this? Uh, so I was a teacher last year, and so I just started doing it this year. Um, but I mainly focus on, like, the date night stuff during the weeknights and weekends. How do you, um, how, how, actually, how, how do you like it? I love it. I and I'm actually um, making almost as much as I was, if not more, than I was teaching, which is crazy. Uh, yeah, that is crazy. So, did you put yeah. your teaching career on hold to do this? So, I'm actually kind of going through a career change. So, okay. I was teaching, and then I'm going to go back to grad school in the fall. So, it's kind of like a gap year, okay, um, and just something to do. But yeah, I'm like little Mary Poppins. I like to probably <laughs> have my bag full of activities and crafts that I love to do with the kids. And well, that you know, comes from your background. Cleaning. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Serena, when, when you were a teacher, was there ever any um, uh, crossing of the streams? You know, because a lot of times teachers are not allowed to babysit, even though they are mm -hmm. more than qualified to do so. Yeah, so I wasn't allowed to babysit any of my students or any of the other kids right. that were in the school. Um, and I really, truly didn't have time to do it because I was so exhausted. Um, Did so the yeah, janitor I, ever ask you to diaper him? Because that's, uh, that's illegal. Enough. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, would, could you see yourself, if you love it that much, um, could you see yourself, be, as you say, crossing over or, or like becoming a nanny or, or, or something of that level? Yeah, so I was considering it, but I am such like, I, I love to keep moving and I feel like being with one person for the right. whole day just sounds terrible to me. Right. Um, so... I like just moving around. Like I, one weekend, I think I babysat for five different families from Friday to Sunday. And, and, the, um, and, the, and the money's almost what you were making as a teacher. Yeah. yeah wow. I think I made a little bit more last year, or excuse me, last month. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You, you don't think you don't think of it like I always think of that. Okay, that's the thing you get a like a kid, you know, a, a high school kid to do or whatever. And you never think it could be as lucrative as to as to exceed what you're mm -hmm. making as a professional teacher. Yeah, mm. well, like you guys were saying with the experience and stuff, like parents see that I have a degree, I'm CPR certified, I have all that. I like I said, I come with all these activities and plans. Wow. Um, so yeah, it's a, it, in, the, in this article, Serena, it says if your babysitter has a degree in early childhood education or special education or certifications of train or trainings, uh, they should be paid more uh, than a high school or college babysitter. Uh, yeah, absolutely. If, if oh, they've been babysitting for years or have worked as a full-time nanny, child care center employer, teacher, 
also consider paying them more because you're going to get more yeah. value. Like out of you're, you're you're top level stuff, Serena. Yeah, I, I like I like to. Thanks for advertising me. I'm, I'm available. Serena, <laughs> would you ever consider being an au pair? I did think of it. Right now, like I have a house and dogs and cats, so like my, I'm kind of tied to my area. Um, but I would love to do that maybe eventually. Yeah. And that's living with a family. Yeah, and my, yeah. my brother had yeah. to have that with his with his family um, because my nephew had leukemia, and so, uh, you know, the, the younger uh, child in the family needed help, needed somebody there okay. to care for him, and so there were, there are special circumstances, but au pairs have, a, you you know, take a nanny and then uh, up it a little bit because they have to, there are more responsibilities. Well, let me let me ask a couple of questions about that because I've been going into, with, with my mom aging, I'm looking into, you know, things like uh, personal care. Right. right. Home and care. Yeah. I'm finding out, how expensive, insanely expensive it is. Yeah. What about au pairs, people who live in? What's the cost on that? It wasn't cheap. Um, fortunately for my brother, his employer helped to offset it because it allowed my brother to continue to work at his job. So it was actually uh, professionally beneficial for, for Adam to have somebody living in the house. But, yeah, it, it's... Uh, it can be upwards of like fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's yeah. expensive. I looked into it because it was a, it was seemed like a really good option. The only reason I didn't do it is because the person that lives in your house gets a tiny fraction of that money. Most of it goes to the company. Is that right? Yeah, they're, it, because they're well, they getting, don't have living expenses because they're getting the experience of coming over to the United States yes. to live ah. here and and you know and listen, there are parameters around it. They have to have, I believe, their own bedroom and, and and a bathroom that is separate from the main bathroom whatever there, there's things that you know that you have to be able to provide for them um but get all snooty about the toilet and they have to have a certain amount of time off they can only work for a certain amount of hours like it's i mean it, it's organized well and it's a good program but when i looked into it the amount of money that the person get got as opposed to the company i i couldn't do it wow Wow, I know uh, Thanks, an man. au pair that got got an extra benefit of marrying the husband. Ah, that's, that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I think and, I remember that story. Yeah. Oh, do you, what? How do this? We, do I no, no. Well, no. That, oh. Maybe it's another one. But this, <laughs> why the wife ever agree? I mean, this is right out of an eighties. You know, spank movie Preston on Cinemax. This girl was like, you know, like a, a Sports Illustrated model, mm. and and the, the wife is like. I'm sorry. I, no matter how confident you are, no, that doesn't get into the house. And sure as hell, she ran off with the husband. You don't ever hear of like male au pairs or nanos. Uh, you know, Nano, yeah, nannies. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, you don't hear often. Nanners, nanners. <laughs> you don't hear of it often, like your your Mr. Belvedere's and stuff. I think when when my brother was looking into it, it was about seventy uh, percent women, thirty percent men. So, really, that and, much? Yeah, and most of. Uh, most of them were foreign, but there were American uh, options as well. The, the one that they had, she was from Venezuela, and she was awesome. You know. So, Mr. Lauer, brilliant. I hear you're. Oh my God, <laughs> you're in. <laughs> you're a nanner. <laughs> That's oh. right. Oh. Sorry, you got some on your kid. You pay extra for that. <laughs> Sorry about I, that. I got some on your kid. Some garb on your kid. Sorry, but <laughs> I'll wipe that off. <laughs> By the way, interesting thing about me. <laughs> I had three testicles. Okay. Stay some, away from the children. Yeah, I got some gerb on your kid. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sorry about that. Your room's out back. <laughs> uh, yeah, my room's uh, great. I got a mower next to me. Uh, <laughs> we're going to put you in the shed. <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> Nick, um, I think you're a little off on the price for an au pair. It, it doesn't seem to be um, that expensive. Oh. Well, I, maybe it was, it was because about, it was medical needs. Oh, maybe, maybe. The here, yeah. like, average is about 20000 that it would cost the family. Oh, That's okay. not that much. Uh, no, it's actually, yeah, uh, it's some of the figures I've looked at for, for home care, it's, man, is it a, uh, it's a price. What it's are, unbelievable. What are things like, like, um, so you would, you, with your situation, you, you, you're going to have to have someone living there? Oh no, we've since moved my mom into a nursing home. Okay, but but we 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 I, I explored right home care. Did but, you look and, into? And then I just went, oh my god, you've got to be kidding me! Did you look into like Bayada nurses and stuff like that? The the people who come by the house. You see the commercials for the the Bayada nurses and yeah. and, and people who come by uh, for senior citizens. No, like so our particular situation is <laughs> my mom needs full time care. Right, she yeah. needs full time someone who can move her. Yeah, and so it's it's, it's, it's yeah. a whole other gotcha. story. Yeah, I prefer uh, body a nurse, nurses, Steve. That's a, a lot of a lot more fun.
I'm, I don't get it. Body up. Body up. It's, it's a fun song. song. And, oh, okay. If you're not... You, <laughs> I, I get where he was going, and I appreciate it, but that really does require a dad joke. If hey, you're guys, gonna... look over there. It's Maria. She's on the phone. Oh, hey, hi, hey, hi, hey, Maria. Hey. 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 Uh, Maria hey. says you were a nanny for over 20 years. Yeah, and I... Uh, so, my local library had, like, a, a class when I was, like, 12 years old, and I took it, and I've just been watching kids ever since. So, I started by doing, like, before or after school care, because I was homeschooled, so I put all my neighbor kids on the bus, and they called me the Pied Piper. The kids were always following me around. And wow. Summer. It was great. So, and now I'm 34, and I've been, I mean, I've done full-time, like, one family, 40 hours kind of thing. I've done, now I have like three different families. I still consider myself a nanny because I'm with specific families, but I do babysitting as well, like on week, week nights. And let me, weekends. let me ask you, Mary, with that, you don't have to give an yeah. exact figure, but, but how, how lucrative can that be? Um, it can be very lucrative um, because, so like you were saying before, I'm CPR certified. Um, I have all my background checks. I'm also a mandated reporter because of another job that I had because oh. um, I volunteer a lot and I work with, like, the homeless. So wow. I'm extremely, like, valuable in that. And then I have a college degree, but it's only an associate's degree. But that does make a difference. Um, I'm not, like, bilingual or anything, and a lot of people are looking for that, like Kathy was. Um, but, yeah, it depends. I do the same thing with, like, I have, like, a base amount, and then for every kid I add, like, 2 to $3. Can, can you but give me... Office, can yeah, you give me a, a ballpark of what an annual, if you're okay, or what an, your annual? Usually, usually about for one kid, um, during the week, I actually charge less. So it's like eighteen seventy-five to $20 an hour. And on the weekends, I usually add on an extra two or so dollars. Okay. Because I'm giving up my weekend to watch your kids. So you can go to a party or you can, you know what I mean, go to pickleball. That's like really <laughs> yeah, yeah. Damn pickleball. <laughs> really but it also changes like if they're in diapers like it's more if i'm driving them it's more right. um right now i'm potty training tra potty training a child so that's going to be a little bit more just because i'm dealing with that that wow because like a yeah. potty training thing is something you think the parent would I don't well, know. Yeah, that... but if she's with them for an extended period yeah. of time, she's yeah. she's part of it. Listen, I the the woman that the that babysat Jace for she was there about four or five years. I mm -hmm. when she left, I mean, I wrote her a card. I credited her yeah. in helping me raise him because wow. she was with him so much, and they created. Well, you, guys, you guys both work full time jobs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You and Dennis both most and definitely. They created yeah. such a bond, and and a lot of things you know that I saw him do and learn. It it came from, came from her. her. Wow, yeah. that's. I, Amazing. I feel the same way about my kids and my wife as yeah. well, Kath. You, 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 they're, they're such a thanks bond. Thanks for raising our kids. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. I was <laughs> farting in mason jars. <laughs> it's like it's like the uh, in the movie The Help. They show yeah. that uh, you know Viola Davis's character is more important to the child than the mother. Now it doesn't help that they just had a horrible mother right, in, the, yeah. in the movie, but but they have some good baking suggestions. Yeah, yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> but you can uh, there's there's a serious bond, a maternal mm -hmm. or uh, you know a, a parental bond that can uh, form yeah, there. Yeah. Maria, it sounds like you're a really cool person. And also, you, you've got to be... That. What's that? I said I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. No, I mean, because... I, I did want to say one more thing. Sure. I, I have special bonds with some of the kids. They still call me. They bother me with FaceTime. They're in, you know, uh. high school, college. But um, I haven't... I've never really experienced a really bad parent at this point. I'm really blessed in that. And I really do like to come alongside the parent and kind of partner them and, and not really overshadow because it is important that the kid's still respecting their parent and still appreciating the fact that yeah. they're Right. You see, it's all the right stuff. Hey, yeah. Maria, when when you're you know approaching a new job and you go in for the interview, it's it's kind of like a, a dual interview. You're interviewing the parents as well, are you uh -huh. not? Oh yeah, definitely. I have definitely turned down jobs where I feel hmm. um, it, even with like the COVID thing and all that. There were a couple times where I I maybe didn't their opinions and, and beliefs and political stance didn't match mine. I was like, I don't think I could be in this home without speaking my mind. Right. So I'm going to have to turn this job down kind of thing. Yeah. You know, and, and my main focus is always going to be the child, but I do have to, you know, have conversation and be cordial with the parent. And so, you know, and they're paying my bills. <laughs> so I did want to make sure that we were going to start off on the right foot kind of thing. And yeah. I always look yeah. for that. Yeah, it's a job. You don't, you don't want to work somewhere exactly. you're, you're going to have it where you're not going to feel comfortable. Um, yeah. Interesting. All right. Thank you, Maria. Appreciate it. Thank you. It. Have a great
every yeah. day. You too. I can see where you would consider something like that uh, like a lifesaver. If you're if you're looking for, you know, what, what am I going to do? I think of people who, you know, they have to go work and, or whatever and, and they have a, a young kid and, and that, that juggling and getting child care, it's such a, I mean, we don't have it, obviously, right. with our situation, but I know people who, who have and my, um, uh, my niece, I guess my uh, nephew's uh, wife, Amanda, um, he, um, she has done child care all her life. And when she started having her own kids, she was extra she's extraordinary with them. Yeah. I mean, somebody who has that skill set. Well, and when you find some, yeah. like when you find somebody, you want to hold on to them. The girl right. that we had was, she was in college. She was an undergrad. And I remember when she was graduating and I just was like, waiting oh. for the conversation i'm like oh, don't no. graduate no yeah. steve she so she took like a semester off and then she goes i think i'm gonna go back to grad school i was like oh my god that's amazing news you should totally do that <laughs> do it become a doctor yeah i mean what does happen when you develop that relationship that bond and then your kids get older and they don't need the child care anymore like you know, like, well, can you well, just kind of hang on? Guys, when you break you know, out like, the earth, wind, and fire joke. Yeah, Casey, that's, oh, I don't have the music anymore. Casey, I have a friend who that happened to, and, and the family kept her on payroll and, and gave her other jobs because oh. she was part of the family, and they did oh. not want to lose her. That's yeah. We did that with Devin. Uh, we didn't like pay, like put her on a payroll, but we found other things for her to help us out with because she was so great at that. But there was another I forgot uh, uh, sitter that we had for a while, but she got engaged. And then her life path changed, yeah. and she moved on. It was too bad. Her name was Reagan, and uh, she was really cool. And she worked. At, we wanted to hang on to her, but it she was had, fun working. Yeah. Yeah. Question, hey. but I have met a young fella. I'm kind of sweet on. Um, I loved it when she would baby talk with the kids. Steve, doopy doopy gobba. I ran contra. <laughs> Did that just slip out? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, your buddy Jim had a situation like that, right? Doesn't it, doesn't he have live-in help now? But yes. That was also started out as child care before, yep. right? Yep. And 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 led to live-in help, and then led to longer-term live-in help. You yeah. Know, and becoming kind of like a housekeeper that uh, like an Alice. Yeah. That type of thing. So. Uh, or which, Hazel. Which I guess Alice was kind of a she was she was a caregiver as well. She was she would watch the kids. Yes. For, oh, she for, was a, she was a live-in. Yeah. Yeah. Live-in maid and, 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 and uh, Mr. Brady's side action. Uh, oh, my oh my God, God dude. Was that confirmed? Uh, why do your genitals look like? <laughs> Uh, when you said, I'm on my feet all day. I was thinking of the waitress Alice from uh, Mel's Diner. You're right, no, <laughs> from Brady Bunch. Brady no, Bunch. I yeah. completely forgot about that Alice. Yeah. Alice good. had her own room right off the laundry. Uh -huh. What were the other for all we, shows? For all we know, maybe Mr. Brady would travel to Phoenix from time right. to time yeah. and bang Alice the waitress yeah. as well. I don't know. Yeah, Nick, yeah, what yeah. were you going to say? driving me to Phoenix! <laughs> what were you saying? Uh, Different Nelcart. strokes. That Nelc had three of them. Okay. To answer your question. I heard your question. I apologize for interrupting. And what was the question? Because we didn't hear yeah. it. Yeah. Go ahead, Nick. <laughs> no, Casey can do I it. I yield my time to the senator. All right, I'll take it. He said, what other baby I, should I yield my time to the senator from Wayne. You have so, the flaw now. Yeah. Give me a break. Yeah. Give me a show? break, yes. Yeah. Are, you're sitters? trying, to, you're trying to figure out what other shows had uh, sitters and, and like nannies. Like the, the plot premise. Yes. Okay. So Mrs. Mrs. Garrett, yeah. Mr. Belvedere, uh, who's the boss, was the male right. version of that. I'm a manny. Dude, there were a lot of them. Mm -hmm. uh, you go back to the 50s, Steve. Yeah. Hazel. I t Hazel. I used to despise Hazel. <laughs> Mr. B, yeah. have you tried? I tried your brownies. Uh, Bel what was it? what did you say? Benson. Benson. He was a, a he was, a, he was a, like a he was a butler. He was a butler who was kind That's of. That's what a nanny, yeah. a male nanny. Well, is a, a butler, butler isn't kinda. a nanny. Yeah, well, they kind of take care of the kids, do they not? Mm. I mean, Alfred was a butler, right? Didn't Alfred so, take care you know, of Batman? It was a great show uh, uh, for that. Was um, Family Affair, which uh, which um, yes. Sebastian Cabot. Yep. Uh, played the the butler who for this bachelor who Mr. had to adopt to Mr. Mr. French. French. Yes. I, oh, I, I love that show when I was so a kid. So did I. Because they were super rich and... and they had this penthouse apartment. They yep. had the coolest door that had the doorknob in the middle of the door. I remember that. <laughs> who was the boss? Dude. Yes. Did, did Nick mention oh, that? Sorry, and then there was a sequel. Had... What's the boss? <laughs> but Charles, honestly, Charles like... in Charge. That was one, yeah. Oh, he was, was a live-in. Charles was yeah. a live-in um, guy, a nanny. Oh, that's a manny. Right. A nanny. Oh, that's right. And yeah. he had uh, I sex with Nicole that show. He had sex with Nicole Eggert. You remember that episode? Yeah, I do remember that. It was a very special episode. <laughs> <laughs> Powerful Wait, episode. Wait, was she? It's, 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 you have something special I need to take from you. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Was she one of the kids that he was the nanny for? Yeah, that would have been unfortunate. Nicole Eggert? Yeah. Oh, but but in real life, yes, that was the, that. Probably. she suggested that that had happened. You remember that whole thing oh, a while ago? Oh, I thought it's it was Scott Bayo. He's pretty <laughs> rapey. I'm pretty sure. Oh my oh, no. god! Yeah, he is. <laughs> no, he's, is he? he's Scott Bayo. He's a terrible person. Uh, but uh, wait a minute. So now 
I, I never watched that show. I don't remember. I Charles in Charge? Yeah. Yes. There were there were a few different iterations of the I enjoyed years. Charles in Charge. I enjoyed the uh, dynamic between Willie Ames, who yeah. was his buddy. Right. That was one of those weird, like, uh, airs on Saturday sitcoms. Like, um, yeah, it was like, like, like a, a syndicated and, sitcom. Yeah. Um, small Wonder, like those type of um, things. And by the way, Scott Bayo turns in a hell of a performance in Zapped Preston. You'll remember that. It's been a long time hey, since I've seen it. Can we talk about who's the boss real quick? Like, how. They had one kid. They had one kid and a grand and the mother that and they still needed they a kids. housekeeper. No, Alyssa Milano was the other kid that came oh, with Tony. Alyssa like, Milano was Tony's kid, right? Yeah, but yeah. there were two uh, kids so, in the house. Yeah, right. Yeah, there were two kids in the house, but if only they were single mom and I don't worry, I don't take care of my own child. Yeah, they need, she was a working woman. She had to go to work, and then they had Mona there. Yeah. Mona. Would yeah. you Mona leave your was, kids with Mona? She was slutting around all over yeah, town. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, okay. She knew she knew she couldn't uh, rely on Mona. But look at how successful uh, whatever Mona's daughter was. Angela. Like, Angela. She was a high executive. So apparently Mona yeah. raised a wonderful daughter. She knows how to raise a powerful, you know, successful child. And then Mona would spend all day sitting on the dryer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was Jeffrey's role on uh, Fresh Prince? I mean, I know he was butler, but, like, did he, uh, did he do... Child yeah. rearing duties as well? I don't think so. I, loved, had, I loved that character. He was a great character. Jeffrey was awesome. And he had his own little uh, suite, right, in, the, in that mansion? Sweet. Bel Air? I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember. Um, um, under the stairs. There was another butler in, well, The Nanny. That's the name of the show! Oh, my God. The Beach. name of the damn show. <laughs> Phoebe, Piccolo, wow. Phoebe Piccolilli. I was about to point out the butler on The Nanny. <laughs> <laughs> When the principal player is the exact position that we're talking well, there, about. There was a show called Before the Nanny. There was a show called Na Nanny and the Professor. That was it. Yeah. No, I was thinking of the yeah. nanny with yeah. uh, Fran, Fran Drescher. Drescher. What about Hey, Jesse? Hey, hey Jesse. Jesse. Yeah, she was a yeah, uh, live-in, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it's apparently that is a... Uh, that is a huge plot point in sitcoms. Absolutely. Gigantic. You gotta have loads of them have had that premise. I mean, I always felt that we're like, uh, I would think, why don't we? Uh, and then it was, oh, we can't afford one. That's why Dude, when we were growing up. Who, who was the who lived with the Jeffersons? They lived in an apartment. They needed a housekeeper for an Florence. apartment. Yeah. Florence, yeah. And yeah. then she got her own show. <laughs> That's true. That they just lived in an apartment, <laughs> a, a deluxe apartment, apartment in, in the, the sky. sky. Yeah. But uh, you generally don't they, need. They finally had their piece of the pie. Yeah. You generally don't need a housekeeper for. Or an apartment. No. Well, he was a very I'm, successful in, in uh, dry cleaning. Yeah. Yeah. He was very rich, actually. Uh, my friend gets her apartment cleaned. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait, George made his money in dry cleaning? Yeah. 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 Huh. Jefferson Cleaners. I didn't realize that he it did that well. Yeah. That. Uh, they had a whole episode where he created the George Jefferson Museum about his <laughs> really? rise to fame as a dry cleaning magnate. Oh yeah. And then uh, his neighbor was Lenny Kravitz's mom. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Leonard, right. Leonard Kravitz. Are we all good here? We yeah. learned a lot yeah. this morning? I think we're good. All right, excellent. This has been about babysitters. <laughs> but anyhow, the, the, the average rate, yeah, yeah, here it is. We, here's a, a, a screen cap of the George Jefferson Museum. I kid you not. I Open 24 hours. Yeah. Do you think he made money off of that, too? I don't know. He probably had to charge admission. I'm not sure. He he, he was always working the scams. That's how he got yeah. that deluxe apartment. Sherman Helmsley is from Philadelphia, by the yeah. way. Yeah, that's true. He grew and up so is uh, Will Smith. Uh, the, and there you go, uh -huh. full circle. Now. <laughs> yeah. If only Fran Drescher were from here. Yeah. Where is she from? Uh, I don't Germany. Know. But uh, we do know that the average price <laughs> per uh, in Philadelphia for someone to watch one child is between uh, essentially eighteen and twenty one dollars. All right. So that's the average price. And, it's we, a little below the national average. And the national average being twenty two to twenty five dollars. Why are we uh, Why are we cheaping out on the kids I here? Know. I don't know. But uh, listen, they do hard work, so so pay the uh, pay the sitters well, and treat your mother right. Treat her right. We learn nothing, from Mr. T. T. I try to, I try to work with the parents. All right, we need to take a break. Uh, we're gonna do that very thing right now. Is there something I can give away? Yeah, you know what? We got these. Uh, Drew Lynch is coming to town. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, this is gonna be a great comedy show at the Keswick Theater. Uh, Thursday, October twelfth, and tickets go on sale Friday at ten a.m. So I tell you what, we'll take. Uh, caller 21 at 215-263-WMMR, and we will give you those passes. Where's Fran Drescher from? I know you looked it up now. She's from New York. Okay. Oh, he's wrong about Germany? Uh, <laughs> well, there's the German version. So Thursday, <laughs> October 12th at the Keswick, Drew Lynch will get you those tickets. Caller number 21, 215-263-WMMR. We'll be back in a moment. Preston and Steve on 93.3. On 93.3.
WMMR. As Bruce Springsteen. Oh. <laughs> well done. She even got like well the vocal done. fry in there. Yeah. Like yeah. a slightly confused. Right. Kardashian. Yeah. Yeah. Kardashian. Yeah. 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 There was a yeah. little Kardashian in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's all our references, isn't it, really? Yeah. 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 Sadly. Sadly. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Joel? What else are you doing today? Um, We might go to the Rocky Steps. Yeah. And <laughs> to the penitentiary. Yeah. And we're just going to have a good time. You know, all right, yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah. By okay. the way, Eastern State Penitentiary, awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. that is very cool. Yeah. 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 In fact, it was uh, roundly condemned by uh, Charles Dickens. So when <laughs> 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 for driving prisoners stone cold mad. That's exactly yeah. what it did. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so you guys are in town for the next uh, next few days, and uh, oh. yeah. you, how uh, quickly will? Uh, the videos you make uh, end up being put up. Or do you need uh, to spend time editing, or, or are you going to put them up as you go along? Uh, so the first Billy videos will probably be out this week, okay. or maybe next week. So, yeah, if anyone's just wanting to jump on our channel and have a little watch of us. Yeah. Uh, you guys are so, so much fun, and, and I encourage people who haven't checked you guys out to check it out. It's just it's very thank likable, and, 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 and it's a great distraction and diversion, and yeah. it's yeah. Oh, wonderful. So. And so we, you know, I was telling these guys off air that uh, we're supposed to get a, a – a bunch of snow on Friday into Saturday, and they really should. If you have the right gear, mm. try and go sledding down the art museum steps. It yeah. is a real thing that real that really happens yeah. when it snows out. It's we worth, definitely uh, get back it's worth uh -huh. getting the gear for, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Pull the gear now. Yeah. 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 And give out to your social media and the uh, YouTube channel and all that stuff. Yeah, sure. We are at Joel and Leah, J O E L A N D L I A, on everything. Okay. So you can find us that mm. way. Perfect. All right. Excellent. Well, Thank you guys for coming by. Thanks yeah. for having it's, us. It's great to see you. Thank and you hopefully, so much. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be over there again. Yeah, sometime. see you in London, guys. Come on yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Thank you so guys. much. Excellent. All right, Joel and Leah, let's hear it for you guys. With that, we are going to take a break. We will come back in just a moment, so make sure that you hang close, my friend. Uh, the band Coheed and Cambria will be at the Leah Core Center on July 27. Tickets are going to go on sale tomorrow uh, at 10 a.m. at coheedandcambria.com. Uh, they are promoting their uh, highly anticipated new record, which is Vaxxus to a Window of the Waking Mind. And spiraling somewhere in the United States as we speak <laughs> on a bus, headed out on tour. He is joining us live. Please welcome the singer of the band, the man behind the music, Mr. Claudio Sanchez. Hey! This morning, Claudio, good morning, sir. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure, man. Listen, I'm I'm going to be straight up with you from from the very get go because we've you know we're excited about having this interview, and I just have the smallest amount of knowledge of Coheed and Cambria. I've been aware of you guys for a long time. I only know a few songs, and I was like, man, do I kind of you know BS this guy and just pretend like <laughs> I know all of his music and do the interview that way? But then I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? You've got such diehard fans. The fans know about your music. They're going to go to your show. But how about the people that might not be that familiar with? And let's bring some new people on board this. And so I want to be one of those people. And, and the reason I know I'm going to be one of those people is I had the same type of sensation of just checking out and diving into your, your catalog in the last couple of days that I had when I first, uh, somebody turned me on to Rush. Okay, so I'm a, I'm a prog guy and, and Rush is my band. And when somebody played 2112 for me the first time, that was my first dive into conceptual music. And I was like, I was like Pinto in Animal House when he <laughs> finds out that there's an atom on your fingernail could be a tiny <laughs> little universe. I was just like, I can't handle this. It's blown away. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really open to diving deep into the world of Coheed and Cambria because it's a very dense universe. There's a lot of material there. And I, I bet you love hearing about people coming on board and 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 really experiencing the music, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, that's actually a big conversation we have when making Vaxxas 2 with our A&R Johnny Minardi. It's just like, you know, Coheed and Cambria has been a band now like 20 years. And it's like, well, what does that look like to somebody coming on board? And it's not that different from, say, like somebody getting introduced to maybe the Star Wars universe and then un and then realizing there's this whole mythology this whole catalog of records behind them that's just that's vast you know and um so yeah i mean it's 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 definitely a conversation that that i love i love sort of having is like you know this is way more than just music it's it's uh it's a culture um you know and all because you know i started it as a kid uh because i was shy I just had a hard time singing about myself and I was afraid to let people know about me. So I created a concept to hide behind. 
And and for those who don't know, Claudio, is that the, the bands work. You know, now listen, there, there are concept albums. There's The Wall, and there's 2112, and there's Dark Side of the Moon, and these albums that, that have this entire, you know, project that's just filled with this story, and it's it's amazing. But the band's entire work, from what I understand, is all a conceptual piece. Is that a correct assumption or a correct uh, characterization? Yeah. Yep, with the exception of one record, which was called The Color Before the Sun, but everything else is part of a mythology I constructed, a science fiction epic called The Amory Wars, That's where so Coheed cool. and Cambria, <laughs> yeah, where Coheed and Cambria are essentially uh, in the first five stories are act as kind of the Adam and Eve. They sort of set the whole mythology off, and then everything else is really about their sons coming to, you know, coming into manhood, like an adolescent growing into a man and understanding, like, his place within this universe that he essentially has control over. Um, and then after that, we kind of fall into this new story arc that we're working on called Vaxis. And that, you know, when I look at the Vaxis story arc and I think about myself in there, whereas like those original Coheed records, I see myself as the adolescent and I'm growing up, you know, mm -hmm. whereas in the Vaxis story arc, I see myself as the father, you know, and, uh, and that's really kind of the trajectory there. Those are the themes there is how a father deals with, you know, you know, the, the, you know, the, 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 a man kind of coming into his own right. as a dad, basically, I, you know, so, uh, I love this I'm notion. Sorry. I would have been, and I, and I am now going to, cause I, I, just as Preston said, we're both fans of this kind of approach to music. It's, Few and far between these days, and, and it used to be the norm, and you would just get there and you would immerse and you would look at album art and you would be, what's the message? And you talk about album art, you've got the, 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 the comic series. I mean, you've got all of this stuff that's dovetailing. I, you know, Preston, at 16 or 17, if you oh, found man. this band, you'd be outside the tour bus. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, bugging the <laughs> crap. I mean, because honestly, I heard so many people that I respected uh, and respect, Claudio, you're, the band's name would always come up, and I'm like, man, well, I, I love this stuff, and I... And so circuitously, I, I would experience and go, yeah, that's good. Not understanding, I mean, what is a very rare situation where it's not just simply a thematic concept album, it's a concept band. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. That's a mind blower. Was that, did you start to fall into it just through the growth of the band or was that the modus operandi from day one? You know, so when I started writing material, uh, you know, I think I was about, uh, you know, I was a teenager. Right. And I and I became the singer of this band. And I, when I was writing the material for it, um, before it was Coheed and Cambria, I started to realize, like, I just had a hard time. I had a hard time singing songs about myself, putting my heart on my sleeve. But though they were, you know. Um, so I, I just didn't want anybody to go, oh, I know that person now because of the mm -hmm. music, you know. So so I started to construct this, this concept. Um, so I took a trip to Paris, France in 1998. And there's where I started to construct the ideas of Coheed and Cambria, the characters, some of the first, some of the first songs on the first record. Um, just because I hadn't been anywhere, I, you know, I'm a New York kid. I, the furthest I had been was New Jersey. Like, and now I'm in Paris, and it was so wonderful. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I should just really adopt this as a songwriter. You know, I mean, of course, I'm, I'm in my, I'm a teenager. I'm not yeah. like thinking that strategically, but right. you know, that's just what I thought. I was like, you know what? I'm shy. This is. Let's just let's just put this out there with a curtain, you know, and uh, and that's what I did. Um, and then, you know, when the band got signed in uh, 2001 to Equal Vision, an indie up in New York, they didn't like the name of the band we had at the time. And so Coheed and Cambria happened to be this project I was working on on the side and the band really liked it. And so with that, we adopted the name and I took the concept with me. And and it's just kind of been the you know, I guess from day one when the signing yeah i guess you could say it's it's always been the the thing that's great all right so, so uh you, you had mentioned um you know entering this universe for the first time and you had uh sort of drawn the parallel between you know your music and let's say the star wars universe so for us right. star wars universe is started with episode four so if we were talking to somebody who had never seen a movie before we might start with episode four and other people might say no you gotta start with episode one and uh -huh. then other people might say no you need to start <laughs> With Rogue One or, or whatever. So yeah. what I want to ask you, you know, 20 years later, and I've done this with other bands where, I, you know, I discovered a band, you know, four records in. I'm like, okay, well, where do I start? Do I start with the newest stuff or do I go back to the beginning? So for you, for anybody who just hold, heard Shoulders for the first time, and that is their introduction to the band, do you recommend starting there or do you recommend going back to 2002 to the second stage Turbine Blade? 
Um, I think it's re it's totally subjective. I mean, this answer changes all the time. It all depends on timing, right? Like, if we were to finish, say, the Baxter story, which is three more records, uh, uh, I would that my my answer to this question would be different. I would say, you know. I'm really proud of Vaxxis 2. I think Vaxxis 2 really kind of stands off on its own. I also really love the idea of like coming into something late and then discovering the fact that there's all this other stuff to consume. Um, but if I had to say, you know, second stage turbine blade is, is, is basically the second part of the Amory Wars. That is the second part in this huge mythology. That's probably going to ultimately be 12 parts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But uh, that's the second part. Uh, the origin character, the origin story of those characters is in a record called Year of the Black Rainbow. So technically, that's the first. Here's the thing. So, sorry. Here's where my crazy gets <laughs> into so play. Quiet. It's all good. Every record has a numeric value. So Year of the Black Rainbow, year being singular, second stage turbine blade, second being two, year, uh, in keeping secrets of Silent Earth 3 is the third part, good Apollo 4. Oh, my. You know, so every record has its numeric value within... The, the the story the Vax's story arc however that's that's sort of more cryptic uh the v for Vax's stands for the roman numeral five and the axis in which all of the amory wars is now going to revolve so, so this, this a little a little heady the, no 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 this is absolutely <laughs> I, I, and i love because i'm looking at a color code that explains a song can be exclusive like the red for example a song can sometimes be exclusively from the point View, a view of a character in the real world. I mean, there's a breakdown of tone, of tone of of who is speaking based on a color code. Your fan base is obviously very much into the minutia. We are as well for so many things that are are um, pop culture, and obviously you're a science fiction fan. Uh, so, so what yes. what has rocked your? I got to assume you're a Dune fan, correct? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely! Yes, yes. I, I love all versions of Dune. I love the I love the Frank Herbert book. I actually liked the David Lynch movie. I mean, when I saw that, I was a child. So, so did Stephen no, Yeah, I had no. Uh, We're fans as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah um, and I and I really love the new one. So yes, I'm definitely a fan of Dune. Definitely a fan of Star Wars. I also really like some like. I like Crawl. Are you guys from the Crawl? Movie? Of course, Crawl. Yeah. Yeah. It's cheesy goodness. Oh my that, that, God! That 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 sort of a uh, star, that claw weapon, claw star yeah. that he would throw. It was awesome, yeah. yeah. The glade. The glade. <laughs> yeah, the glade. Dude, I I yeah. wanted one of those so bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally. Didn't. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> right, but like you know, so that was like the thing, right? So when I was a kid, like. You'd sit watching HBO in in hopes that Star Wars would come on, and <laughs> HBO would give you like, uh, the give you Crawl. They give you Ice Pirates. You ice, yes, ice with pirates? The, with the Robert like, Urich. Yeah. yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> like so, those are those are like sort of the you know those are like the science fiction <laughs> movies that yeah. I got kind of brought up on. Uh, comic books, obviously. Uh, you know anything sort of pop culture like Sunday morning car uh, cartoon, Saturday morning cartoons, He Man, GI Joe. I'm Tron. just like very. I thought Tron, I think the, the, the era that I grew up in, I mean, I'm a, a you know, pre-adolescence, I'm in the 80s, so uh, it's very character-driven. You know, people yeah. are trying to sell toys, essentially, and, like, so characters are very defined, even in, like, the most cheesy way when you think of, like, you know, G.I. Joe, you got Shipwreck, who's, like, you know, the, the, the <laughs> sailor, or, you know, so, like, I think I was kind of lucky in that respect because... I don't know that, that all that stuff really influenced me. Oh, we talk like about this. Hard. Yeah, we talk about this, the, especially from that period. Uh, we were just talking about the movie Alien Nation. Do you remember that with the? Uh, yep, absolutely. Right. All of yep. those were where they were very high concept, very easily consumable science fiction. Mm -hmm. But um, it's funny because that gives me that gives us a fixed point at what was your impetus for this, and it and it all makes sense. Uh, but uh, <laughs> that's very cool. So besides the comic book and the music, would. Every, since everything obviously has a very theatrical aspect to mm -hmm. it, would you take a foray into films? Have you? Is this something that we has actually happened? And we're unaware of uh, that you've announced any plans for films because I think you'd your vision would be perfect for this. You know, uh, you know, we we've attempted it, but on a very grassroots sort of small level, not not you know, not in a very serious way. Like you know, no one's really come to approach us essentially. Okay. Like at one point, Mark Wahlberg tried to get involved. He's uh company leverage but it wasn't really i mean i think i think it was like the wrong time because okay. now i gotta tell you like 
I get asked this question way more than I've ever. And I think it has a lot to do with maybe the Vaxxas story arc because a lot of the accompanying art, the story is very photographic. It's very, very photorealistic. And it's easier to see, I think, than it's ever ha it ever has been. Right. So uh, I get asked. I was, I was really desperately wanting you to speed up that traffic report. So yeah, I there could. was a lot of noise going on over I there. I wanted to correct myself. I'm a dingus. Oh. I said Citizens Bank Park. It's not playing. <coughs> oh. Dude, not, I was like. It's that not an outdoor show. <laughs> Where is it? It's at the Wells Fargo okay. Center. Yeah. You said that. I, I think I might have said that yesterday, too. I mean, I, why did I think it was at Citizens is, Bank Park? I'm an he's idiot. playing there this year. He is, Bruce right? Is, yes, Later. There, there are two sets of this tour coming okay. through Philly. Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow night's Wells Fargo and Center. As After I said it, yeah. I'm like, wow, it's a little chilly out to be going <laughs> to breeze. an outdoor oh. evening concert. <laughs> God damn, it's cold. <laughs> um, I'm a moron. Well, you just okay. crossed streams, as they say. I think that's what it is. All right, and sorry, Kathy, I, I, I didn't mean to be going <laughs> oh, <laughs> during your traffic report. <laughs> I almost interrupted you. I could feel it. I was like, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> it's what we do. If you if you want to say something, you start making <laughs> random noises. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, you know what? I want to mention this one more time officially uh, the, about the fact that we want to send you to Orlando, Universal Orlando. Orlando. Universal Orlando Resort starting Monday, this Monday. Listen, weekday mornings at 8 a.m. for the Presidency Photo Hunt Challenge. You can get the clue on air and then check out the photo gallery at WMMR.com. Be the correct number caller later in the show and correctly identify the photo and answer from that morning's clue. And you could win a trip for two Universal Orlando Resort with flights provided by Spirit. And for more information, go to WMMR.com. That's one of five that we'll be giving away. Awesome. Time. Do you know how many Gator emails I got yesterday <laughs> yeah. from people? <laughs> like, There's like a Gator land that's yeah. not too far. But I know, Casey, you want to see one in the wild. But uh, mm -hmm. apparently there's like a state park that's uh, 10, 12 miles outside of Orlando that you can go to. There's the springs that I told you about. Yeah. Yes. And all of these places. Alligator uh, crazy. Have, have access to gators or like, they, they're cultivated for you to see alligators. So okay. I, I think Alligator I, I think oh uh, we have a good shot this time around. I, right. I, I'm hopeful for you and your dreams. What is it about alligators? You know what, dude? I just love them so much. No, uh, I don't know. They're just fascinating, like prehistoric. They look very prehistoric. We, animals. When when we went on a couple of golf trips, like Casey was like, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't know. I yeah. also. I, I, but but hang on, I yeah. didn't know until we went on that trip. I've known you for you know quarter of a century now, yeah. longer. And and you were just like gators, gators, gators. I'm like, <laughs> I just never knew the fascination with alligators. I just I like know. to see indigenous creatures, right? And so we've had alligators in the studio it's before. Not this, it, it's not this. I want to see them in the wild. Like you so, want to see like a seven footer. So for instance, I had been up to New England many, many times, and the only Less alligators. No, the only moose that I saw for the longest time was a dead moose on the side of the road. And I was like, that doesn't count. So when I was in Texas, I wanted to see an armadillo so bad. <laughs> and um, and I still haven't seen one. I've but seen, when I, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I've seen armadillos. I've seen them. I saw a moose in in, the, in nature. Yeah. Uh, and I've seen an alligator. So I've completed your desire, your troika. I want to see, I want to see a cougar. I want to see a grizzly bear. I want to see them all in. I've seen a Kodiak bear. Uh, well, yeah. I saw a grizzly in Yellowstone. I know. I'm I saw really... a black bear in, uh, in Wyoming. I saw a Reindeer in my wife's uncle's backyard. <laughs> That's in <laughs> Sweden. They're tiny. Yeah. Uh -huh. They're not All right. tall. It wasn't really big. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or, or, yeah, it was a reindeer. Yeah. Casey, does the golf course count as the wild? It does. Okay. It does. I mean, as long as it depends it's not on which hole it is. Dude, I somebody sent me a video yesterday of this alligator. It's gotta be who, on the back nine. Who <laughs> there was a fence in between him and where he wanted to go, and it was an iron fence, and he just with his snout was like just bent it open. Just yes. Bent it like that's what I was talking about. That yes. footage. Yeah. Marissa. Casey, I've never aligned with you more. I get it so much. I want to see a bear so so badly when i was in colorado last summer we literally started walking around the dumpsters oh my god on the resort because they're... matt was like if you if we're going to see a bear it's going to be near the dumpsters so we just started walking through parking lots to do it there's every shot that you can see a bear down in florida in florida yeah, yeah. yeah. sure see so yeah. when i was driving across new mexico these last couple of times i just I was chupacabra like, no elk because my buddy went elk hunting in, in New Mexico. I was like, oh, my gosh, New Mexico has giant elk. I'm, I want to find an elk. Have you been to Yellowstone? Not yet. Yeah, you will so see elk 
the, Guarantee. It's, if you go to Yellowstone, it's like going on an African safari. It's like driving yeah. around Great Adventure. They, 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 and you'll see where an animal is by the number of uh, cars that yes. are parked on a lot of, uh, on the long side of the road. Because can you people just stop drive, and get out. Can you just drive through? Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't sure. I don't know how this like national park system works. I, with, I mean, like, it's massive. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. you know, Yellowstone's bigger than Rhode Island. Yellowstone but. is multiple vo- vo- uh, vacations. It's, it's, right. it's just, there's so much to see. But if you're, if all of these animals are on your list, except for the gators, mm-hmm. you can probably <laughs> Go see many of them in the in. I know you can go see but a the, lot of them. I said the gators are vacationing. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's bears. True. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, I love alligators way more than crocodiles. I think that just the um, the wider snout is cooler looking. I just think they look more badass. Crocodiles are, are very. I know you know, more aggressive, especially the saltwater crocodiles of Australia. Yeah. Um, stupid, Annabelle. Uh, Mr. Uh, Peanut sent me a video. He was he saw an alligator by some pond, and he showed me the video. His friends are yelling at him, like, dude, get away. He was as close as you are to me, Preston. You, d- and they can run. Uh, and his mouth was open. He was yeah. like, uh, like, back off, buddy. Now that gators, or now that uh, pythons are running wild in the Everglades, I wouldn't mind seeing, like, a you know 18-foot-long oh, python in the they're wild. They're out there, yeah. That'd be pretty interesting. And I've seen... Mm. In the Keys, uh, when we stayed there, uh, iguana were oh, yeah. all over the place. I mean, like, we were sitting there having lunch, and one of them jumped up, and uh, a gal that was traveling with us uh, jumped up in her lap to try to get to her food. Rattlesnakes. That's crazy. I want to see a rattlesnake? rattlesnake? I've yeah. seen a rattlesnakes in nature. When we uh, when we lived down in California, when I was in third grade, uh, you would hear them at night. Wow. Yeah. Case, uh, you want to go see some elk in Pennsylvania, you can do that, too. Where? Uh, elk County, believe it or not. Oh, stop. North Central PA, but, like, they, they have, uh, there's an elk reservation up there, and so... There's an alligator world there, too. There's an alligator... Well, actually, Clyde, Clyde Felix, 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 which, by the way... Drive route up Route 15. Is yeah. awesome. Yep. But right. that's not in the wild. Yeah. Uh, so, so you have a list of animals you want to see in the wild. Yeah. Uh, anything, mm-hmm. like, that would, that would, uh lead you to taking an African safari or something like that? Would you like to see an elephant in the wild? I would, or? yeah, that would be awesome. I just, that is really cost prohibitive My and wife time prohibitive and all that. Went on safari and got to see that, <laughs> got to see gorillas, got to actually sit there. You have to sit motionless and kind of keep your eyes down. Yeah. Uh, there's a whole group of gorillas that were moving in and around her. I was at... That's a, insane. Yeah. yeah. I would never do that. Yeah. We were yeah. at a uh, golf outing and they had, the, you know, afterwards they had a uh, um, the reception, and you could vote, um, bid on pri- on these on, on gorillas. On, 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 no, but one of the things you could bid on was an African safari. <laughs> wow! Nobody, Steve. This is like an eight ten thousand dollars. I know. People were not bidding on it, and I'm sitting. <clears throat> I texted my wife. I'm like, "Can I? I make a thousand dollars. Do you want to go on an hour? And she's like, "No, I don't want to do that." Like, yeah. You I know? mean, they, you go to charity events sometimes, and mm-hmm. there is a big vacation package, and you you know, and, and nobody's bidding on it. Go for it. We bought one. Yeah. Uh, it was. It's a vacation to Costa Rica. And How you've was never gotten it? To- oh, it was so wonderful. <laughs> yeah, tell us about it. it, it never COVID hit. The yeah, people co- you brought it hit. with. Are you even friends with them anymore? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, right, okay. so, but but Kathy, we started. Um, I think there were like five separate groups of us, five like separate couples pitched in, and we all just said okay because it was for like ten people, and we're yeah. like great, perfect. We'll all pitch in. We'll do this. Uh, all but. Four of us have, or two couples have flaked out. Oh, man. So it's just us and the Chapmans well, wh- now. Oh, but, but it's still good. We, we, but now we just have to find the time where we can do it because we've had to. We had to keep putting it off. Are they going to have it this year? Yeah. Everyone raves over Costa Rica. Yeah, so yeah. we're going to go next year. Right. Wasn't Maryland on it? In it? Maryland and was. She part doesn't of even it. live here. She doesn't even live here anymore. <laughs> Houston, Tucson, Tucson now. Arizona. Yeah. I mean, she could still meet you there. Yeah, yeah. true. Uh, I also. Oh, so you know, you see dolphins. You can see them cresting in the uh, in the ocean. In the water, but like. When I went out on a whale watch, I didn't see any whales, but the dolphins were swimming right next to the boat. That was way cooler, you know? Well, you got to see, if you get a chance to go on a successful whale watch, and I've been on many of them. Actually, the best one I was ever on was out of Boston. Yeah. uh, And that was amazing. Wintertime? No, summer. It was uh, it was August. Okay, summer is yeah. the season here. Yeah, okay. there, yeah, there are some great places uh, in Massachusetts. You do it off of Cape Cod. You can do it off of Cape Ann. Um, and, uh, yes, uh, Steve, I've done it as well. And Casey, like, it is really cool to see the dolphins coming out of the water and doing their jumps and whatever, but it, it, when the boat on a whale watch cuts the engines and the whale just kind of like floats over to the side of the boat and sometimes on their back and their flukes are well, going up Nick, and out of the water. You, I mean, it's amazing. It really is. You will see. And they make that sound. <laughs> Even- yeah. 
no, when you, when you, you will start to see, and you know this, Nick, um, you'll start to see the water get a little greener as yeah. as the, the algae. Poil, right. pool, pools? Poils? Right. No, poils. Yeah, yeah, yeah. McPoils. The McPoils, from, it's always sunny. Uh, but, and then I they, bought and you some poils. <laughs> But they come up, and it is astonishing. Yeah, I act, yeah, I uh, I have actually been out. If you go to Cape Cod, I don't know what we're talking about this, but but um, there is a, uh, I forget the name of the resort, but there is sort of an inlet there, and you can take a boat out, and there are loads of seal that just... Oh, I want to see a seal in the wild. Oh, Casey, <laughs> what happens is, is that the seals come into the this inlet you because haven't? there are great white sharks outside, so they sort of chase them in. But the boat cuts, you know, it's like a like a like a 15, 16 foot runabout, and they are all around oh, you, man. bobbing up and down, looking up. It's just amazing. I saw a seal in the wild in Monterey, and it was, uh, yeah. and and I came walking right up to it. Yeah. Um, and I thought maybe it was sick or something was wrong with it, <laughs> and so I was concerned about it. But I found out since that they say don't go anywhere near them. No. They're <laughs> fine. I had the same they thing. They don't need any help. Uh, they're wild animals, and they're fine. Were you visiting um, uh, uh, the, the Hearst Estate? Uh, no, I mean, I did on that trip, but no, this was in Monterey. All right, so, so same Monterey. sort of deal. Same yeah. stretch of... Uh, we, mm -hmm. there, I, there are all these people getting out of their cars, so we go over to the beach, and they're there, and the first thing... They're not doing well. Oh. No, they're just bathing in the yeah, sun. They're fine. Well, and and sometimes if they're uh, if it's a female and she's pregnant, she'll come out and stay out for a while right. and, and sit on a beach or, or wherever she is. Yeah. Um, the whale watching, though, and the dolphin watching, like, I would love to see that, but that's something I would never pay money for on the chance that you're going to go out and see nothing. I have been, it's a risk you take. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I've, you may, I've never not seen something. Uh, one of the really cool ones to do is the killer whale watch off of uh, the Vancouver Island, yeah. which is, you see, I mean, you're like, when you see something you're so used to seeing in nature documentaries and you see it right there where it lives, it's like, dear Dude, God. <laughs> I still get a little joy when I see groundhogs. Yes. I mean, you know, oh, I don't know yeah. why. They're funny. You know? I had a whole family of them living under my deck. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Casey? Little baby. Yeah. <laughs> see the Do they have babies? Yeah. They are adorable. They're adorable. Not Casey, as adorable. Hold my, hold my baby. Yeah, but baby bunnies are the most adorable oh, uh, of all baby animals, I think. Yes. Mm. That yeah. opinion is correct. It's, it is. It's a correct <laughs> yeah, opinion. That's a fact. Baby animals? Uh, oh, yeah. Baby. In general? Baby bunnies. Baby oh, bunnies baby are bunnies. the cutest yeah, of all baby animals. It's like biddle bottles. The bait way. Baby battle. bunnies are the cutest of all baby animals. Yeah, yeah. Ba baby seals are cute. Mm. Uh, yeah, no, I, mean, I love, I love kittens, kittens. puppies, kittens, but bunnies. I mean, um, come on. I mean, they're Ears. cute, but. Oh, you know what, man? Uh, baby Ooh. ducks are pretty adorable. They too. are. Yeah, they ducks. smell like hell. basset hounds are actually really cute. Disgusting. What? Ducks? No, the ducks. Do you know oh, ducks? Sorry, I was what looking at it? Preston while you continue. I'm just saying they look cute. Yeah, they do. Baby okay. ducks are cute. If you <laughs> can graft the front half of a baby bunny onto a baby duck, oh, it, it'll probably die quickly. Dude, yeah. I posted a video the other day of a puppy and a duck that were baby, baby puppies. <laughs> baby. So, baby, baby versions of puppies? Yeah, no, a duckling and a puppy. A puppling. A puppling? Were, they were hanging through the puppy, grabbed the duck by its, by its mouth and was carrying the, the duck around. Uh -huh. And then he, like, put them down, and they were just hanging out and cuddling. They're very caring. Some t I saw this great footage. It was a, It's of a lion caring for a uh, an antelope, and it's carrying oh. it around by its throat. <laughs> oh, oh, I love yeah. that. Yeah, it's adorable. That's adorable. That's adorable. And it's, it, it must have been something internally wrong with it because then the... It, it, it performs surgery on it. Right. Okay. Steve, did that line introduce the baby uh, antelope to it, its young? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they were all looking for the tumor. It's right. really cute. It's almost as cute as when you see a deer sleeping on the side of the road. Uh -huh. oh. yeah. Or yeah. the Gosh. sign that says free deer. Yeah. Yeah. Free deer. <laughs> free. By the way, if Casey does indeed see a gator while we're in Florida. We're going to chronicle it. We yeah. have to do something. And we'll bring it back. We have to have some kind of a prize or, I don't know, a contest. I don't know what. Mm. It's, um, trying to think of any other animals that might be indigenous to Florida. Do you know the first Panther. time The first time Preston and I ever saw a outside of a zoo, they had a thing down there. It was famous for years. Uh, uh, Lion Country Safari. Mm -hmm. It had that famous sign, trespassers will be eaten. And it was, and you, you, you would, it's the first place I ever went to where you drive through and they're out and about. And it was pretty. I don't know if it still exists. Was Carol Baskin down in Florida? <laughs> yeah, she was, or was that or was that Texas? There was no. Our, she was outside uh, of Tampa, wasn't she? She was both. I think somebody was in Tampa. Yeah, Carol she, Baskin. Yeah, she <laughs> tried to. Um, didn't she try to buy the one in Texas? Yes. The, the that dudes? might have been. Yeah, it. I'm not really sure.
Was yeah, there was she, one in- yes, she had the nonprofit animal sanctuary based near Tampa. Okay. Carol Baskin killed her husband, whacked him. Can't convince me that it didn't happen. Fed him to tigers, they snack it. What's happening? Carol Baskin. Baskin. I'd like to see a manatee. I think that'd be kind of cool. Oh, that's cool. cool. I've yeah. seen that. Yeah. yeah. Also Some, in Florida. Someone from Carol Baskin's camp, if she has a camp, uh, did reply to me. Um, oh. Yeah. This was a while ago. Um, they declined her coming on our show. Uh, but maybe if she's in Tampa, she, By the way, she can come with us to Universal. Lion Country Safari still exists. It does. Oh, all right. Where is that? It's in uh, next to Carol Baskin. No, it's in... It's in um, <laughs> It's it's in Florida. It, I think it's outside of. Uh, it's probably further south than where you are. Casey, you know what else lives in Florida is armadillos. What? Armadillos. Uh-huh. Armadillos. All over the place. <laughs> uh, all right. So maybe you see an armadillo yeah. in the wild. Panthers cool. are very rare uh, in Florida. You don't get to see them very often. They're very secret. Yes. You had mentioned like, uh, panthers. It's, yeah. it's uh, the Lion Country Safari is Luxahatchee. Is that, by the way, the where they got Florida Panthers uh-huh. from? Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, it's like uh, Nittany Lions in PA, you know, like indigenous to, um, they are mountain lions that are indigenous to Florida. So they are the Florida Panthers. It's like Maine it's alligators. Not, yeah. Not yeah. many well, mountains in Florida. What was that Correct. story? You had, it was a story where they, they found, species. they found an alligator. Remember, it was like in the Bazaar file. It was, it was like in, in FDR, they, right? FDR yeah. Park was that it? Yeah. No, yeah. Well, that was it. That was a Cayman. Oh right. But but this was um this was actually I think up in Maine out in, in the wild. Now clearly Maybe it had I been did. abandoned or something. Right. But, yeah. All right, right. So hang on. What's the difference between a Cayman and an alligator? Uh, They're different. You, you, you can. I've never had an alligator on my chest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean it's a legit question. You you. Cayman are Caymans smaller. Are smaller. Yeah, okay. It's, it's like saying what's the difference between an alligator and a crocodile. They're they're different species. Wow. But, yeah. yeah. What's the difference between <laughs> Abu Dhabi. <laughs> okay. Bye. Well, anyhow, uh, animals. We are leaving tomorrow, right after the program, and uh, getting on a plane. We're headed to FLA. We're flying into Orlando. We're driving to to the Clearwater area. Uh, spend the night. Friday morning. Get up. Go to the ballpark. Broadcast live. Looking forward to this. Who's going to be on our show, by the way, Nick? Can we start mentioning yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, um, Reese Hoskins is coming back. We've had Reese on a few times, and it'll be really cool because we haven't had him on uh, in the last uh, two or three years. Uh, Brandon Marsh. I'm really excited to meet yeah. Brandon Marsh. Mm-hmm. He, he's apparently a, a fascinating guy, a great dude. Also had a terrific playoff run. Um, we're waiting on Bryce. We're st- hoping to have Bryce Harper on. And then uh, our buddy Charlie Manuel is going to stop by. Uh, Larry Bowe is going to be there. Yeah, I think uh, the- T-Mac from the broadcast team is going to be there as well. Excellent. We've gotten closer with Charlie Manuel. I'd, I'd like yeah. to Charlie, say. Yeah, it's he enjoys man. coming in on the show. He does. He really likes it. And, and, and his wife's a, a dog. They are. Charlie and Missy are just really nice, decent people. And uh, he spends most of the year in Florida now. So, um, yeah, we'll get to see him as well. Nice. All right, so that's all happening on Friday. And then, obviously... Uh, after that, we drive to Orlando and we get ready for a live broadcast from Universal Studios. This, the part of that is all amazing. The, mm. the fact that we have five of those vacations to give away is just blows me away. And it's they're so they're they're really amazing vacations. Yep, we start giving those away on Monday. All right, let's break. Come back in a second. We'll share some bizarre file stories with you, my friend. Hang out. We'll be back in just a few. It just, you know, it just feels like the wave is pushing in that direction. All right. So, so Claudio, to that end, um, in 1998, when you're writing in Paris, you know, essentially you're creating this story arc, and, but the constant from 1998 until right now is, is the music, right? The music sort of is at the base of a lot of this stuff and a lot of what your career has become. However... In 2022, you're sitting on a tour bus and you're Zooming with us. And, you know, we're in completely different states. So, obviously, and in many ways, the technology over that amount of time has changed vastly, which allows you to tell the story in many different ways. Which which part of the technology advancements that we've had over the last two decades is most appealing for Coheed and Cambria? What, which part of it is just kind of a distraction? Like, what have you guys really embraced? And you're like, oh, my God, this is a really great way for us to tell the story in a way that we, we really want to. I mean, I definitely, I mean, I'm, I would always, I always want to see it kind of get played out in a live action, you know, just in the simplest form, whether it be television or movie, but there's so many other things now with, we have VR, we have metaverses, we have all sorts of stuff. And I think there's a lot of, of, of source material for us to draw from, um, you know, and that, and again, like 
that was never really my approach. It was really just to make, you know, comic books, essentially, just to tell these stories in a different way, watch them get up off the record and come to life. And now it's like, yeah, sure, movies and television, but there's just, there's so many other places to stretch. Yeah. Um, so it's really hard for me to wrap my head around all of them. But, you know, at this, at this, at this stage, I mean, I'd like to do everything. I mean, I think these characters are, like, yeah, I think, I think, yeah. I, I think the characters are, are really, you know, when I see our fans and I see them resonate with certain characters, that's so insane to me, you know, cause at, I, n I never anticipated that. I never anticipated anybody to see themselves connect with a character that was just not in, on the top of my head. And like, when you see that fans have like a favorite, like you have Ambelina on their arm or, you know, uh, uh, Willem Ryan and, you know, it's just like, wow, you, you know, that's like me resonating with like Freddy Krueger, <laughs> you know, Darth Vader, you know, it's so cool. No, it's so cool. absolutely. I want to, I want to talk about the fandom, uh, for a second here and <clears throat> I'm going to lead this uh, part by saying that we got a tweet from a fellow musician, um, Claudio. It is a peanut from 311, and he's listening right now. Uh, so oh, he, he right, tweeted right. at us. So I wanted to give a shout-out to Peanut, who's listening this morning. But you mentioned the fandom, and, I, and I'm going to give you an example. And, and this is a, this is a um, killing two birds with one stone because I want to thank this listener. This morning I came in, and there was a box sitting over here in the studio. And I'm like, well, what the hell's that? And I read, I open it up, and first of all, it is a four-pack of the Rush beer, all right, oh, that was right. sent to me, all right, and I, it came with a letter. It says, Preston, a beer to share with a fellow Rush fan. These are not for export in the USA, so I coordinated a delivery from Henderson Brewing Company in Toronto to an associate's friend in Ontario. It was then driven from Ontario to Michigan to his mother's house. Oh, my God. A work associate drove from Michigan to Ohio. From Ohio, it was driven to Harrisburg, where I picked it up, and I drove it home to Langhorn, PA, and I now share a few with you. That is from Dean Gutierrez, That's an cool. MMR listener. And so the reason I bring this up, A, I wanted to thank Dean. And second of all, in the world of progressive rock, you, uh, there, there is a connection with the fans that I think is unique to itself. And because of conceptual works like you guys do, uh, Claudio, there is, um, there's further discussion about the music other than I really like that song. Man, that rhythm's great. Or this guitar part's really awesome. It's you start talking about the subtext of the characters yeah. and the stories and all that stuff, and it just makes for a really special fan base, and I wanted to get, you know, your impressions on that. Yes, we are We are so fortunate. I mean, our fan base is, in, is just amazing that they get into all of those sorts of things. Like last uh, like fall, we did a, a cruise that sold out, and it was, and everyone was super respectful, um, it was just, you know, it's more of a family. You know, we see the same faces a lot of the time. We've created relationships with our fans. Um, you know, it's it's something that, again, like I, I just never thought I could only have dreamed of. Right. And it's like, hap you know, it's like happening. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I wonder, lucky in it. I wonder uh, Claudia, how, how much of that connects to, uh, and you, you come from a point of, um, of being shy. And, you know, and I did stand-up comedy. I'm doing this now. But at the, initially, I was kind of shy. And there's, I think right. there's something, I think, that draws a certain... You, I, you don't want to make blanket statements. It's for everybody, obviously, if you enjoy... But I, I think you, you're you probably connecting in a way, because that's well-known about, about you and, and your impetus for starting all this, that the, the people who don't feel that there's something quite for them, you're providing that. I mean, on a basic level, like, we can sense your joy over being able to do that, would 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 right. that would that be your greatest accomplishment? You believe touching people who maybe up to now haven't found that thing that resonates for them? I think so, absolutely. I mean, it it's also like you know, it also provides something for me. Like again, going and being shy, it's like it's hard for me to walk into a room of people I don't know and be uh, be a personality. You know, I tend to kind of cower off, and that's <laughs> the whole idea of being you know the coheed line of one among the fence. I'm the one you know at the dance, like. I'm the wallflower, you know, it's yeah. just not for me to, to be a loud personality and being on stage allows me to do that. It allows me to be around people with like-minded a thing. And sure, maybe it's something that I created that everyone's into, but 
it allows me to like kind of be open, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's a starting place for a conversation and, and friendship. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, you know, um, Maybe that is I, I created friends. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You, cl you clearly did. If you're just tuning in, it's Claudio Sanchez who's with the Coheed and Cambria, and they're going to be in town in July. Tickets go on sale over the show at the Leah Chorus Center uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m. Um, we played the song Shoulders as we were leading into the interview. You guys have a new song called The Liars Club. I saw the video, really cool animation. And and like I said at the top, Claudio, not being aware of, of the full body of work of Coheed and Cambria, Liars Club seems like it has a different tone to it from the other songs that I've kind of skimmed through in your catalog. Uh, dare I say, a little poppier. I mean, I'm trying to think of a of a, of a better term, but um, but what what's the story behind the song and the sound of it all? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of this material was written pre-pandemic, through the pandemic, um, and I was just kind of open to all ideas. You know, I figured, you know. You know, here's an opportunity for me to, to flex. Even Shoulders. Shoulders feels like a, a very new version. I mean, when that song was written, it was, you know, primarily because, you know, our a and &R had threw this idea at me. I, I was up for the challenge. I created it. I put it aside. It wasn't going to come. It wasn't going to happen, you know. And then I brought it to uh, my co-producer, uh, Zach Servini, and he was like, wow, this is a vibe that's not on the record. We should We should work with this. And that became a song. And Kind of the same thing for Liars Club, although Liars Club, I think, was a little more immediate um, because I knew that that was, you know, I thought that was a theme that I really wanted to express on the record. Like, who doesn't want to, you know, like embrace the lie sometimes, you know, when reality just isn't, you know, the way you see it. I, um, so, oh, yeah. No, no, I was just, I was, I was, um, I was just wondering as you were talking and, and, and talking about that in Preston's question, um, and you mentioned Star Wars earlier, and we have obviously, we know you're a fan. Uh, I think of George Lucas, who had the original vision, and perhaps tries to go in different ways. And he, you know, uh -huh. he he got he's he got eaten alive by his own fan base. Um, do you feel do you feel you get the latitude from your fan base to go out on these sort of creative ventures that might depart slightly from your sound? Yeah, I think so. I mean, because it's not something that's foreign from what we've done. I mean, it's definitely more, we're definitely stretching with yeah. this new record more so than we have in the past. But we've also laid the groundwork in past records to do things like this. Okay. Like if you guys fall into the uh, into the discography at all, um, you find songs like Evagria or Number City. Um, these are all songs that really kind of stretch outside of like what the comfort nucleus of what Coheed and Cambria does. So we're always kind of breaking out of that a bit. Um, but we do it more so with this record, and I think it's really more appropriate because. Because of the theme of the album, because the the mind is opening up for this one character, and we're starting to realize that it experiences infinite, inf like the like all infinite outcomes. This one character of Vaxis is like, you know, consumed with, like, instead of seeing the world as we see it, he sees it as a, maybe the static of a television because he can see every outcome at one moment. Sounds like Doctor Manhattan. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 But. But almost so much, so much more that he can't, he physically can't can't re interact with any of them. If that yeah. makes any sense, into a, into like a catatonic state because it's so consuming, so overwhelming. Um, and that's uh, and that's why I think you know it made sense conceptually to really kind of step outside of the, like I said the, the 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 nucleus of what we do and kind of stretch. Like you'll hear songs like Disappearing Act, which really kind of stretches the. Uh, Window of the Waking Mind. There's all, all sorts of stuff on this record. I'm really, really proud of it. And Liars Club, I thought, was a really cool, like, statement to put out there. Just to kind of get everyone's feet wet, you know? Um, I, I love these concepts. It's really deep and heady stuff. But let's go back just a little bit. <laughs> Did your old band break up because of an argument over gas money? Is that correct? <laughs> no. That's, I don't know what. No, but where is that from? That's like, is that like a, that's like a Quidditch Question, Wikipedia. Like it was on Wikipedia. Yeah. Like, wait a well, minute. We're like, what? So we definitely, we definitely almost, we almost broke up because of, because of, uh, well, there's, there are several moments, but like, to be completely honest, like when we first started, when we, Kobe first started back in 2002, like the attention to the band was so intense. Like we would play shows and opening for bands and we would play. And once we were done, like, 
the place would empty. Oh. It was it was like severe. Like we yeah. had no idea that that we were we had that impact at that time. And and so it really got to me as like the guy with the hair, the focus <laughs> point. It like I didn't realize like how much of a magnet I would I would become. And it it, it kind of scared me. Like so much so that you know I I did I I broke down and gas hunting was not never you know that might have been like who the hell knows I have no idea but for real like you know uh you know my mentality was like disintegrating like wow. I, and you know coming from like a person that you know again like I I am I am very much an introvert it was really hard to be like to have that so, so much attention when I grew up in my adolescence with none huh. um so you know. Yeah, were you guys wow. were you guys friends first or bandmates first? Do you think Travis and I have been friends since we were thirteen? Like wow. we start like I met him uh, through a mutual friend who wanted to start a band. And just a reminder, because I mentioned uh, you know weather being good on on the St. Patrick's Day, uh, Brent Porsche doing a show live. Broadcasting from Dolan's Bar in Ridley Park. That's going to be a blowout. Three to seven, and you can enter the chance to win concert tickets. Brent's going to win uh, an award. Or he will award a winner each every The Rotary hour. Club's giving him an award. He gets an yeah. award for being a member of the Rotary Club. Be that, wait, Make sure you witness that. <laughs> uh, and the Kiwanis are going to be Absolutely. there. Everybody. So... Uh, plus, there's going to be live bands, uh, food vendors with Knights tradi- Columbus, traditional Irish food, yeah. Guinness and Harp on Tap, drink specials, Delco's Greatest Irish Dive Bar. Casey, you 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 know this place clearly. Oh yeah, 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 it's, yeah, yeah. it's it's it's, it's going to be amazing. And you can, uh, by the way, text Patrick, uh, text the word Patrick to three nine three three three, and we'll send you a link with all the details. WMMR.com. Then I want to give another little plug. Uh, our friends at uh, the Union Fire Association. Uh, who've helped us out before? They filled up our dumpster pool. They had uh, <laughs> they gave Casey the big send off on his uh, big adventure. Uh, they have a comedy event this Saturday at eight p.m. and it's going to be at Station Twenty Eight Fire Hall in Bala Kinwood. Uh, and they will have performances by it's it's a comedy night, so you got uh, Jimmy Schubert, cool. La, uh, Latisse, and the host is Kirk Gardner, and it's a BYOB and intended for mature. Audiences only, and the fundraiser is for the Union Fire Association. So uh, get the tickets. They start at 20 bu- 25 bucks, and uh, you can go through the link at the Union Fire Association Facebook page, and it's also posted on PrestonandSteve.com. All right, Bizarre File, here we go. Now, bizarre. WMMR presents bizarre. Preston and Steve's Bizarre, bizarre File. Brought to you this morning by Horizon Services. Lower your fr- your home heating cost with the same-day system tune-up from Horizon Services. Heating, cooling, and plumbing and electrical. And you do it for $79. Get your spring service for just $59. Uh, book fast at horizonezbook.com. Uh, I love this story. And we, I know we've heard similar things before, but these never get old to me. Missing your flight can be a nightmare, but unknowingly booking the wrong flight to the wrong country... <laughs> Yeah. Is in a category all its own, and that's apparently what happened to one TikToker and her friend when they accidentally planned a trip to Budapest. Uh, now, unfortunately, instead of getting tickets to Budapest, the two friends mistakenly purchased tickets to Bucharest. <laughs> oh, okay. Another Eastern European city located in Romania. Uh, by the looks of her TikTok, uh, Sophie Alice... And her BFF didn't actually catch the error until they made it to the airport. She filmed the reaction while going to board the flight, which was clearly marked Bucharest at the gate. Uh, And she wrote in the post caption, they sound similar, right? Uh, Since it was too late to go back, the two friends decided to see what Bucharest had to offer. Why not? And chronicled their surprise trip and their subsequent TikToks once there. Uh, They visited castles, strolled city streets, drank in a local beer house, and uh, checked out other cultural landmarks and you know what they ended up having a great time uh they ended up uh enjoying their trip all together it was a category on jeopardy a couple of weeks ago it was budapest bucharest or brest oh really which is another city in europe and uh yeah so you had to know which one of those was which i've told the story on the air before but my uncle thought he was going to um palm springs (laughs) california (laughs) and ended up in palm beach Florida <laughs> and did not know wow. until they touched down. I have a friend that went. Uh, this lake is huge. Was planning on going to Portland, Maine, and got on the plane for Portland, Oregon. Wow, <laughs> wow. Yeah, opposite ends of the country. Uh-huh. Complete opposite ends what in, the hell? in both scenarios. <laughs> yeah. A man had his favorite pair of Nike sneakers 
tattooed onto his feet <laughs> so he is never without them. I, I, I saw the tattoo. It looks, well, uh, what's the word? Dumb. They're <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Uh, Blazej Ambrozak of the UK took his love for his favorite pair of Jordans to the very next level when he decided to have them tattooed onto his skin. Uh, following a painful eight-hour tattoo session, uh, Belzej doesn't have to worry about leaving the house without his favorite pair of shoes. Uh, and by the way, they call them trainers in the UK. Mm -hmm. He said it was a spontaneous decision to get the trainer tattoo, but I really like the idea because it is different and not something that you see very often. No, he said, not on the same. He said, I love all kinds of uh, Nike trainers, but Jordans are my absolute favorite. So I decided that this was the pair that I would ba uh, base my design on. It was a very painful experience. Oh. Uh, the worst part was my toes and my heels. Uh, but it was worth the pain as the tattoo looks great, he said. Uh, Dean Gunther, a tattoo artist, used his 15 years of tattooing experience to draw the perfect replica of his favorite shoes perfectly onto the feet. He said, I thought it was funny. Uh, his wife found it funny, too. I think it's definitely a great icebreaker, and he is a grown man, so I guess he can do whatever he wants. <laughs> and he said, I'd specialize in color realism tattoos, and this is something completely different that he went for. But it, it looks ridiculous. <laughs> At least 18 female guards in the UK's cushiest prison have reportedly been fired or resigned amid a flurry of sordid sexual accusations. Sex stuff in prison? Including, yeah, but between the guards oh, and, wow. the, uh, and the inmates, uh, including claims of uh, sex inside cells and one guard smuggling her underwear to an inmate. Uh, HMP <laughs> Berwin which is also Britain's largest facility, has been hit with various claims of illicit affairs and inappropriate relationships between guards and inmates since it opened in 2017 with three former workers sentenced in a 2019 scandal. Now, 18 have been fired. Uh, 18 of the women were either fired or resigned, actually, uh, from a single jail. Actually, it is apparently a record. Uh, since 2019, wow. a total of 31 women across England and Wales have been fired from jails for intimate relationships with inmates. Uh, former guard Jennifer Gavin, for example, was sentenced to eight months in jail after pleading guilty to misconduct. She had accepted about $180 from an inmate smuggling him a cell phone, which they <laughs> later used to exchange raunchy photos with. Wow. Mark Fairhurst, uh, chain of the, uh, uh, chair of the Prisons Association, uh, pinned the blame on the recent spate of affairs and firings on the wrong kind of women getting hired. <laughs> Another former guard, Emily Watson... The wrong kind of women. ...was jailed for a year for having a fling with an inmate named John McGee. She was jailed for performing a sex act on the inmate in his cell. You're a complete dirty <laughs> whore. And another former guard, Ashley J Gunn, was jailed for a year after having sexual relationship with an another inmate... Uh, and do they Gun actually have time to do their jobs? Gunn was accused of smuggling a pair of her underwear to the man, and investigators found photos of Gunn and him kissing among the former card's possessions. So apparently there's a, a lot of that taking place. And underwear smuggling is very lucrative. In the UK. A major fail for a would-be carjacker after he stole a car at gunpoint in an East Memphis driveway and then crashed it a few feet away <laughs> into a pole. The 22-year-old victim watched as the carjacker backed into a utility pole and then got stuck. He couldn't go anywhere. The victim's mother said she and her husband pulled into the driveway moments after the carjacking and crashed. She said the carjacker was forced to leave the Honda Element behind and ran off. The victim's mom said her son had pulled into the driveway around 8.30 p.m. Friday when a man opened his car door, pointed a gun at him, and told him to get out of the vehicle and hand over his keys and wallet. She said that the carjacker was trying to back out of their tricky driveway. <laughs> he rolled down the window for some reason, and that's when her son realized the carjacker's gun was missing a barrel, and he reached in and started punching the carjacker. <laughs> Not his day. She said that caused him to clip the side of the house and back into the pole, and he got stuck there. Uh, the, trying to steal a car and nothing works! The carjacker took the victim's iPhone, but uh, police pinged the cell and found it later in a dumpster. They weren't uh, they were able to cable, uh, recover prints from the phone and the car, but so far have not made an arrest. By the way, tricky driveways suck. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know a couple of friends who have them. Yeah. And I dread pulling into their driveway. Yeah. They're used to it because they go in and out right, of it every right. day. But I, there's a couple of them, and I'm like, I'm going to I'm gonna wreck, or I'm going to run into their yard, and I'm going to get stuck in it or something. There was a friend who had their house was sort of, so you drive it off the street, and then you drive down the driveway to their garage. 
there was this lip, this bump at the top that would always scrape the bottom of the car. Yeah. And I'm like, you had... And you couldn't park on the street. I got stuck in my friend's yard twice. <laughs> <laughs> It had rained and it just dug these ruts in, and my dad had to come and take a tow cable and pull me out. All right, and there you go. That's the last story in the bizarre file. We will take a break. We'll come back in a second. We shall see if you've been listening all morning along or not, because we're going to have a lesson question about today's program. Trash and music news coming up, too. Stay with us. So before yeah. we even met, we were going to be in a band. Uh, but Travis is like my, you know, Travis is my brother. I mean, we friggin' <laughs> it's so wild how like insane, like insane and in sync we are, and how how at one point we will we want to kiss each other, and at another <laughs> point we want to just strangle each other. Right. I mean, it's like, I mean, yeah. So we've been friends forever. Um, Josh, I had known. Uh, because our bands had played together. He was in a different band, and our scenes had crossed paths. And uh, and I remember this one story when Josh and I were, like, we were drinking one time after a show. We were in different bands at the time, and we were on the side of a house, you know, urinating or whatever. <laughs> and I said to him, and his band, uh, to be honest, had been signed to Universal already. They were off and about to become something, uh, but things had happened. And I had said to him, I said, you know, one day we're going to play in a band together. And he was like, oh, yeah, right. Like, you know, because their, their, their career was starting. And uh, and uh, here we are. So Josh is, you know, Josh, I guess we had been friends, you know, I guess in a band first. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how to answer that. But <laughs> but to be honest, like, Josh, just to just to go off, you know, I, I I play in a band with, like, some of the greatest musicians. I think they get, they're, in, my, in my opinion, I think they're very underrated. Um, they don't really get like the, like Josh, I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever seen us play, but he's like, a, a, one of my, the worst parts of my job is I don't really get to watch Josh play because he is a, he, he's just such a animated, beautiful piece of art when he's behind the kit. Wow. And, uh, you know, I just think, uh, he needs more recognition as yeah. well as Travis, just very interesting people. And Zach, Zach is actually the newest member of the band. I mean, well, when you say that it's like 10 years because our bass player, original bass player, got arrested for robbing a Walgreens. I don't know if you guys know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's better um, than the gas money story. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we were aware. No, but it's interesting how, you know, you, you evolve as a band and how you have to, like, learn how to, like, be around each other in a whole bunch of different settings. You're talking about tour buses, you know, pre-show, on stage, post-show. And, you know, these are things that you just sort of have to, like, learn about each other and, you know, like... You didn't make a vow to one another, you know, on an altar in front of a, you know, a whole bunch of people, but like you want to make this work because uh, it did work at, at a certain point. So, uh, you know, the the band today is different than the band five years ago, is different than the band 10 years ago. And do you know what I mean? Absolutely. I totally know what you mean because it is. It's nobody really understands like what it's like to be locked in a van, mm -hmm. right? That's that's how we came up. It was, you know, five guys in a van, you know, well, initially, yeah, five guys, one, you know, and uh, four members. But you do, you start to see personalities and people like, you become family, you know? It's like, you know, living with, you know, who you're blood born to be with. Now you're in a van doing that. You know, and the quarters are way smaller. Yeah. You know? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, Right. So it's like, you know, and you start, start to see these parts of people manifest, myself included, that it's like, wow, you know, you really, really get to know people yeah. um, in a way that you don't with others. And, you know, now we're lucky. This life has afforded us the opportunity for the luxuries of buses and, you know, hotel rooms and things like that. And, you know, 20 years into it, like we all really have come to love what we do. Whereas like through that 20 year stretch, there may have been times where we really disliked it right. um you know and not and not the artistic part but just the the living you know uh but for the most part i mean every day it feels like somebody talks about how excited and how grateful we are to be out wow that's great that's so great. great yeah it's, 
it's an awesome place to be, man. And and, and your fans are, are loving that, that that you guys are having the success you are. And you're coming to town, and people have been stoked about the release of this album. So it's really cool. And judging by just glancing over our text messages, you got a bunch of new fans from sitting down and talking with us, too, <laughs> which is great. Oh, so, sick. I, I, I love it. So the Leah Chorus Center, July 27th, and uh, tickets are available tomorrow at 10 a.m., Coheed and Cambria.com. The new album, Vaxxas 2, A Window of the Waking Mind. Make sure you get that. We've been playing some songs from the album. And uh, we're just excited. Thanks so much for coming on this morning, Claudio. And continued success to you and the band, brother. Oh, thank you very much. And thank you for having me. This was awesome. I had a really good time. Excellent. Awesome. Claudio Sanchez, guys, Yay! of Coheed and Cambria. And they're the real deal, man. They uh, their, their body of work is... Is dense. It is just. It's and, and by that I just don't mean by heavy in the music. There's he there's a lot in the story. Well, this is this is everything that again you know when I was we, we were getting concept albums, you were getting thematic albums and all that stuff, and you'd you'd be in that world. This speaks to exactly that. So I'm going to start moving through yeah. the music because I I've, I really like what I've been hearing. Yeah, yep. and I I love the whole concept. Uh, of you know this thing that is it is, is the band yeah. it's so Neat. cool and press I, I almost opened up a whole new uh, <laughs> door of conversation there because when we was talking about being locked in a van with people and I just kept thinking about the the book that you turned me on to um, project. Uh, Hail Mary? Hail Mary. Oh, Hail Mary, yeah. Where, you know, yeah. the, the, they're, they're in space, <laughs> and they, they put these astronauts into suspended animation, and it's not because they don't want them to age. It's because if they had them in a spaceship for as long as they did, they would murder each other. Yeah. Like, yeah. like the, that's a legit thing. And so when you have these bands that are just on tour, and, and they're on tour for the rest of, you know, this month and uh, through March, and then all through the summer, like when you're locked in a in a room with people just think about how much you guys want to kill me after five hours of being in the studio mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. times that by a thousand we'll throw you on a bus with us <laughs> uh, we love you though man we're intrigued by our next guest creation so much so that we had to do it on our own yet uh, we don't have facilities to cook in so pagano's is a new restaurant that opened up in our building we've yes. been restaurant less it's been a nightmare for two years until last week so that was nice and yeah. like as soon as they move into the building we asked them to do something for us and they did <laughs> we had to test it out and they took a bag of potato chips actually a few different bags of potato chips and made mashed potatoes out of them and we got inspiration from our next guest to do that and you know what we, we gave it uh, it was interesting and tasty i in liked its, it in its own way uh but uh, our next guest is actually coming to and i assume we are interrupting his vacation because he's in cancun mexico <laughs> right now you know him from his YouTube channel. Please welcome Sam, the cooking guy. Yeah. Hey, good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing? Wonderful, Sam. How are you? I'm good. But let's let me start by saying uh, interesting is generally not how I hope my recipes are beautiful <laughs> when people make them. Uh, you know? Well, no, listen, it, here's the deal. I, I enjoyed the flavor of the potato, yes. mash, mashed potatoes. Uh, the consistency was a bit... Um, interesting it was it was very i know it's potatoes but it was like even more starchy and stickier than uh than regular mashed potatoes i thought oh look i can't i cannot help with some uh, this is like eight hand reviewing here right. my recipe goes to you guys you guys don't even make it you put it in the hands of a brand new restaurant we have no idea if they can even cook it's true and now suddenly I'm being rated by this. I don't want the audience to take this one example as a... Uh, All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. And you have plenty of great examples on your, uh, yes, on your YouTube do, channel. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, number one, why are you in... What's going on in Cancun? What are you doing there? Oh, just a, a vacation with my oh. wife and two sister-in-laws and a husband. We tried to put together for a while now, and it's just gotten derailed for one reason or another. So just a little break, because the weather in San Diego is probably 65 or 70 today, and... Who wants that? That's oh, freezing. Yeah. So we come down here. Yeah, well, we're hey, I, I can't believe you're checking in from your va your vacation. We appreciate that. That's really, no, really look, cool. No, look, you guys reached out. I saw the comment on Twitter. You reached out, and I was honored. I'm always happy to to, to chat with uh, with new friends. Awesome. Yes. And I hope that you you call on me from time to time. When you want to berate one of my recipes, <laughs> certainly, <laughs> certainly. Well, I well, think listen. he's he's reading it wrong. We lo we approved. Yeah. It was we, it was. Uh, I in, okay, in particular, okay, okay. I yeah. in particular <laughs> thought not to do, to go off on this too much, but uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, taking a potato chip flavors that you liked. I forget the one that was really a home run. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, listen, it, I want mashed potatoes made from t- potato chips to retain some of the potato chip flavor, and they did. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. Look, years ago, b- before YouTube, I had a, a uh, TV show in San Diego for a whole bunch of years, and uh, we shot a show once that um, – it was based around mashed potatoes, and then we did certain <laughs> things to them in in one of the segments. And the, the person behind the camera didn't know what my – that never knew what my plan was until I started. And I said, okay, today we're going to start everything with these. And I reached into the pantry, and I pulled out those dehydrated mashed potatoes that you guys talked about when you first uh, discussed this. And she stopped the shooting, and she went, you're, you're effing kidding me. And I went, no, I'm not. I go, they're potatoes just in a slightly different form. Look uh, – Dried uh, porcini mushrooms are one of the great finds in the world. You rehydrate those, and they're glorious. Yeah, a potato dehydrate. Come on, it's not the most sophisticated <laughs> thing to start with. So, what's the big effing deal? Right, no, you're right. Yes. Hey, listen, uh, real quick, uh, uh, Sam, you'd mentioned uh, meeting new friends, and and I'm new to your YouTube channel, and I can't wait to yeah. to delve in and find out more about it. Thank and you, so, thank not you. knowing much about you, I pick up a little <clears throat> bit of a Canadian pronunciation. Where are you from originally? Uh, I'm from Vancouver. Canada, yeah, Vancouver. West Coast, the uh, okay. prettiest part of the country, we oh, think. Stunning. Both uh, Steve and I have been there. It's just amazingly you, beautiful. Absolutely. It's, a, it's not just beautiful, but it's uh, it's uh, a really cool city. It's got an amazing vibe. It's got a huge uh, uh, Asian population. It's got British influence from the old days. There's a, a touch of French. They all go together to make great food, interesting people. And you guys got ahead on the marijuana thing way in advance of everybody else. That was pretty awesome. Way, way in advance. <laughs> Look, I was, pu- I was pushing for that as a 16-year-old boy living in that city. <laughs> and they just uh, they, they didn't listen to me then. It took them a while. I'd like to think I was the forerunner in that whole process. So learning <laughs> learning more about what you do, you know, I, I was watching a recipe this morning. It was from uh, one of yep. your newer videos, which was uh, uh, Italian fried rice. I make fried rice. At least once a week, maybe a couple times a week. Yeah. It's a family yeah, recipe. Yeah. It's really simple. It's nothing special, but it's something yeah. that I just love to do. And you've taken yeah. it in another direction. Is that, in a sense, what you like to do with most of your videos is taking food into a new direction? It, it, it is. I mean, sometimes sometimes we make a fairly straight-ahead things. We made uh, uh, mushroom risotto a couple weeks ago. Nothing amazing about the recipe. Apart, I mean, it's really delicious, but sometimes... You two on 93.3 WMMR. Beautiful day. 1014 on an okay day. Weather-wise, still kind of sucks, but that's all right. We're together. We have stuff to do, things to give away. That makes it a beautiful day. We'll get to our secret text word in a little while. Still got a moment or two to get on that for the Steel Panther Show on St. Patrick's Day at the Keswick Theater. Uh, text secret to 39333. We're going to do something wholly different right now. And we are going to give away a pair of tickets to see Cats on Friday at the Kimmel Cultural Campus. My wife saw it last night. And? Loved it. Excellent. Yes. Well, we are going to give away tickets to that if you can answer this question correctly. Gwyneth Paltrow revealed the weirdest thing she's done in pursuit of wellness is rectal ozone therapy. But Steve uses something similarly sounding but completely different therapy. What is it? 215-263-WMMR. Gwyneth Paltrow uses ozone therapy rectally <laughs> and Steve uses what other type of therapy rectally 215263 WMMR the trash business is a gold mine 933 WMMR with Preston and Steve's Hollywood trash brought to you this morning by painting pups they deliver the highest quality craftsmanship and service when painting your home ask about the 0% financing options And book a free estimate today at paintingpups.com. What's going on this morning, Steve? Well, Kiska, known as the world's loneliest orca whale at Marineland in Niagara Falls, Ontario, has died. Marineland officials say their only remaining attraction is Despair, the suicidal sea lion. Hey! Joe Exotic says the hit Netflix series Tiger King actually ruined his life. Exotic says that had he never signed that deal with Netflix, he would more than likely be a high-powered ventured capitalist. Oh, Oh my God. And finally, Siegfried and Roy's former Las Vegas home has been purchased for $3 million by Brett Carden of Carden International Circus. Apparently, the Siegfried and Roy house is so flamboyant that it makes RuPaul's home look like a marine barracks. (laughs) And that's your Hollywood track. We are looking for the answer to this question. Gwyneth Gwyneth Paltrow revealed the weirdest thing she's done in pursuit of wellness is rectal ozone therapy. And Steve uses which 
Similarly sounding but completely different rectal therapy. 215-263-WMMR. We will go to Jose and see if we can get the answer. So let me say hi. Hey, Jose, good morning. Hey, sorry to bother you guys at work. That's all right, Jose. So Jose! <laughs> what is the similarly sounding completely different therapy that Steve uses, please? Frozone therapy. Frozone <laughs> therapy is correct. Jose, hang on. We're going to go see Cats uh, Friday at the Kimmel Cultural Campus. Cats is at the Kimmel Cultural Campus uh, now through Sunday. Uh, tickets and information at KimmelCulturalCampus.org. Now, Preston and Steve's Music News on 93.3 WMMR. Yeah! 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 Music News brought to you by A.D. Moyer, your professional source for decks, windows, doors, millwork, and more. ADMoyer.com. On Monday, um, Carrie Underwood surprised her audience when she welcomed... Axel Rose to the stage with her. The Guns N' Roses singer joined her on the band's iconic hit, Welcome to the Jungle. There was audio, that, but it was on a phone, and it was like it was really kind of crappy, yeah. They've joined forces a few times before, and following the show, Carrie thanked him on social media. She wrote, I'm the luckiest girl in the world. Thanks, Axel, for showing up once again to make the great times even better. I'll forever feel like it was all a dream, but these dreams are my favorite ones. Steve, was it you who said <laughs> we are dealing with a very different Axl Rose nowadays? Like, it, yeah, both President and I observed yeah. that this. This is a guy who he's he's at the uh, the, the Lisa Marie uh, funeral. Right. Uh, he's you know all these requests and these things that he's doing, and and uh, he's saying things that he never would have said years ago about you know obligations to the audience and so on and so forth. It's it's pretty wild. I think he's lost a little weight too. Yeah, yeah. just a little bit. He, he could uh, he could slim up some more, but he, he looks happier than I've ever seen him, yes. that's for sure. Yeah, also, for sure. his singing style has changed quite a bit. I don't know if you've heard him sing lately, but... You raised me up. <laughs> Shut the f*** up! I can't believe that's still going on. <laughs> I really want to get Josh Groban on the show. Oh, he, I would love to chat be great. with that guy. If he, I think he'd get a kick out of what we're doing with it. I was so happy to see this. It's happened. Queen guitarist Brian May was knighted by King Charles in London's Buckingham Palace on March 14th. Arise, Brian May! Uh, according to the Ultimate Classic Rock, May received the honor for his contributions to music and his charity work. Uh, following the Mr. ceremony... May's most august <laughs> Are you right? Scaramouche. I'm not feeling well. <laughs> Following the ceremony... If uh, I may digress for a moment, because there has been a deep desire of mine to see an alligator. Okay. <laughs> no! Huh. Wow. <laughs> you and the king, Case. <laughs> it seemed like the appropriate time to, uh, to mention that. I guess. Sorry. Uh, May. Well, I, I hope you're able to do that. It's <laughs> all confused him. <laughs> it's, not, it's wonderful, Your Highness. Um, <clears throat> May spoke on receiving the honor from uh, King Charles and said we've had various conversations. I'm so of sorry that Freddie couldn't make it this event. He's dead, Your Highness. Oh. Back to the alligator. Uh, he said, uh, we've had various conversations over the years, and I, uh, I like to feel that we have a kind of friendship. I have enormous respect for him. I think he's been through some very difficult times and always behaved with incredible grace and dignity. Uh, the British government announced at the end of last year that May would be the recipient of the honor, so he is now a knight. That is cool. Yeah. You would have to imagine at this point Freddie Mercury would have been knighted, right? Yeah, I would have to believe that, yeah. Uh, Metallica has acquired Furnace, one of America's largest vinyl manufacturing companies. Uh, according to Variety, the acquisition formalizes a longstanding relationship between the band and the company, which has produced more than 5 million pieces of Metallica vinyl since 2014. Uh, the projects inside the deluxe box set editions of Metallica's Kill 'Em All, or they, they do include, I'm sorry, uh, Ride the Lightning, Master Puppets, and Justice for All, uh, S&M 2, and self-titled albums as well. So they bought a, they bought that. So and and vinyl is continuing to grow. It surpassed uh, popularity. Uh, the CDs, CDs. Yeah. Uh, back isn't that wild? That yeah. seems so. Um, you know, uh, it's kind a of the thing to do. Yeah. yeah, it's nostalgic. 
All right, and then finally, this is really interesting. Uh, drummer Carmine Apice, who's actually been here in our studio before, uh, has opened up about guitarist Mick Mars experience on the Motley Crue Stadium Tour. During an interview uh, with Ultimate Guitar, uh, Carmine said, well, I'll tell you what, I've been talking to Mick, and he told me, when I was on the stadium tour, I was not happy. Basically, he said everything was on tape. It was all planned out and ultimately a lot of crap. And Mick is a pretty good player. And so to now let him loose and play the way he wants, that was never going to work for him. The truth is that everything has been weird for a while with Motley Crue. And Mick didn't like that everything was on tape. So it's sort of like Motley Crue in a can? Yeah, he said Mick told me that uh, the, the people that came to see it could tell mm -hmm. and that it was all pre-recorded and that everything was on tape. He said... When you play in a stadium like that, you can hear a lot of things uh, come out of the monitors or what doesn't. And with uh, Vince's vocals, bass, drums, and guitars, and all the other stuff, it was obvious that it was all recorded. And Mick was pissed off and said, I can play these things. I want to play them. I don't want to make believe that I'm playing them. So I think that's one of the reasons why he said, I'm done. And he said, sure, the disease that he has doesn't help, and it doesn't make life easy on tour, but Mick can play all those licks, and he was allowed to. Uh, and uh, That's pretty wild. To. I wonder how many bands... I mean, if, if you reach that point in your career, it depends on what your level of motivation is, but I wonder how many bands do sort of default to that. We know the Kiss... Caught, you know, Kiss yeah. was very critical of other bands, and it turns out that they do a bit of it themselves. Yep. They sound uh, a lot like Josh Groban in concert now. Oh, really? Um, so, it's not turned up enough, and I... Shut the f*** up! Um, by the way, <laughs> uh, he also confirmed that uh, Mick wasn't getting along with the band. He said uh, he had his own means of travel and would travel alone on a bus... While the other guys flew everywhere, he said, man, these guys are pissing their money away flying to every gig. Uh, they were all busy still trying to be rock stars, and Mick just wanted to play the music. Mick wasn't interested in wasting time and money flying everywhere, so he traveled by bus. Their lifestyles are different than his, and so there were a lot of disagreements, and I think he was just done. Wasn't he kind of, But he's always been sort of the curmudgeon of the band right yeah. from the get-go, right? Yeah. He so said he was he, he was the purest of the musicians, yeah. Uh, he said they were supposed to have done their last tour, and then they came back, and then they did the stadium tour, and that was apparently supposed to be the last. So when they came back again, he said, you know what, you can do it, and I'm not going to go out with you for this, uh, or out with nah. you for this. So so that's part of the reason why, that's according to Carmine Apice, mind you, uh, that uh, that he bailed on the whole thing. So All right, and there you go. That's the last item in music news. Santa's got to go. Take a break. Santa's got to go. We'll come back in just a moment, and we will get into the... Well, actually, before we do that, before Santa's got to go, um, Kathy, I need a number caller for Secret oh. Pet for... Ooh, 15. All right, caller 15, 215 263 WMMR. Let's see if you know the secret text word. We'll come back with a winner in just a second. Stay with us. Uh, Santa's got to go. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. They're complicated. So I think we found a, a, a really interesting niche. When cooking channels are on YouTube, they're generally one of two types, all kitchen-based, uh, you know, sandwiches and salads and breads and blah, 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 that kind of stuff. Or they're sort of all outdoor barbecue-based, like smoking and grilling and sort of the typically like caveman. <laughs> right, stuff. right, you're and, right. And, and we've mixed the two really nicely. We do almost all of our cooking outside i'd say 97 percent is outside but things outside that, that then maybe need to go into the oven we'll make a lasagna that you wouldn't normally make outside but we like our outside it's my home we like the outside set it looks better the lighting's better and you don't need to see me really put something in the oven if i make a lasagna and they go this needs to bake for 10 minutes why do i have to turn around and put it in a stupid <laughs> oven right, right. Right. i really don't so we do the grilling where uh, we're part live fire show, smoking, grilling, charcoal, uh, Santa Maria style grills, that. And then we're also the side that does make the lasagna, the risottos, that kind of thing. We like to do across the board. Uh, so there's a little bit for everybody. Well, you've got you've got millions of subscribers, and uh, yeah. and and there are, there are loads of, of of people doing different types of cooking on YouTube and other you know channels and here and there, and yeah. and they always try to go after some kind of a hook, something that grabs you and. I was surprised and 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 I appreciated the fact that 
your presentation, or at least in the production, is very simple. It's very straight ahead. There's uh, like yeah. there's no magic editing, no little music, uh, you know, graphics and stuff. You keep it pretty simple and straight ahead, yeah. which is why I was kind of surprised you have the amount of people that subscribe because I thought maybe there'd be more of a hook. But no, I'm, I'm assuming what it comes down to is you're just making good food. It's an interesting sort of half comment, uh, half compliment and half negative compliment. <laughs> you know, know, your show is really basic. It's like a third grader can do it. And now I'm surprised that you have no. almost three and a half million subscribers. I had a feeling uh, you might take it like that. <laughs> so look, we've been on YouTube uh, since 2011. And in 2018, we had 30,000 subscribers, middle of 2018. From the middle of 2018 to the middle of 2019, we went from 30,000 to a million. <laughs> and then the next year, another million, the next year, another million. Wow. And I think what we do, you're right, it is, there is nothing fancy. I, I do think, though, the, the, the technical work, the editing is beautiful. It's as, the work for our channel is as beautiful as any TV I've ever done, for a start. Uh, it is simple, but I think my goal is that people walk away with a, a good understanding. So there's more talking in ours, I think, than many of them. Many of them just, it's like one cup, two cups, stir, mix, pour, bake, that kind of thing. I'll say, uh, do this, do this. And if you don't have this, let me tell you a workaround for it. Or here's why I like to do this. I, I feel like I'm a teacher. It seems silly at times. But I do feel like I'm a bit of a teacher, and I really want people to walk away saying, sh sh well, almost yeah. swore. <laughs> All good. Uh, uh, I really want people to know that this is how they can do this. I came, I had an idea uh, in 2001 to start a travel show on TV, and the basis of it was show people that they could go to places they thought were complicated, and it wasn't, they could do it. Don't go to North Dakota again this summer. Try someplace you've never been or you've been scared of. Maybe go to Hong Kong or right. you know, Tokyo or something like that. And, uh, you know, in the 2001, sadly, 9-11 happened. Uh, changed stuff for me. But I decided to find something else I thought I could do on TV that I could also help people learn so that they could go, oh, I can do this. And I came across, literally within a week and a half of 9-11, I came across a cooking segment on a local channel here in San Diego the guy was making a butternut squash soup. It was September, it was fall, it was a perfect thing to do. It was the most boring, complicated recipe <laughs> yeah. I've ever seen. Mm. And as I watched that, I went, holy ass, somebody should make that better. And I went, damn it, I have nothing to do. I will try and make that better. My wife came home from work. I said, uh, I'm gonna start a, a cooking show instead of a travel one. She goes, I think that's a great idea. Just one thing, honey, I go, what? She goes, you just can't cook. I go, but see, here's the genius. I'll make things so easy. People will say, I can do that. No, that I'll be my own weakest link. Wow. That makes complete sense, because I'll tell you what. Yeah. As YouTube has grown over the years, and I remember clearly when the, the, yeah, the one video of the guy at the zoo that was the only available, and now we have, and we talk about it often, as a teaching device. Yes. Okay, yeah. I'm fixing this thing in my house. You can find somebody doing that, doing it with the tools specifically that you're <clears throat> using. in the specific. Yeah. And so I was just raging about what you just said a, a few minutes ago. I don't need all the production. I need someone to talk to me and, and the yeah. way you're saying about giving is sort of a lesson on how to do it. It drives me crazy when they try to get too cute with the information imparting and I'm there and I got I got the tools out or whatever. I'm like, just show me. Yeah, yeah. Just tell show me. me how to do it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, uh, you know, a lot of people that cook in the culinary space on YouTube, a lot of them are credentialed in the sense that they've been to culinary school, you know, that kind of stuff. And I have none of that. I've never taken a cooking class. I've never been to culinary school. And I think that benefits me in the sense that I don't lean on that uh, chef terminology, the chef technique, that kind of stuff. Right. I'll say things that regular everyday people would say. And it resonates with them, and they can make it. And and yes, I swear a lot. I'm sort of <laughs> not normal that way. I did. A, I was on a radio program live from Calgary a, a few months ago, and in, in the middle of the thing, the guy said the S word, and I thought suddenly I went, "Oh my God, he's going to get in such trouble!" And I went, "Oh no, it's Canada. <laughs> they understand that that's not a word that's going to start a war." <laughs> right, right, right. No hey, parents are going to write in about that. Yet. So, so Sam, with your with your lack of of culinary experience going into this, sure, you, you're now a restaurateur, right? I mean, like, so you own yeah. three restaurants. 
I have three restaurants. Uh, here's the important part of that, President. I have three restaurants with partners, and they came to me and they said, look, we're fans, but we like what you do. Here's what we do. Do we think we could put that together? And I said, yes, but I'm not going to be the guy that's going to be on the line in the back every day. I can't do that. I don't want to do that. Right. Uh, when we run out of tomatoes, I'm not the guy to get them. Right. When, uh, when Susie calls in sick, I'm not the guy that has to stand up and jump in on the line again that day. I say I have the best restaurant job in the business. I get to be the inspiration, the face, the brand, the food, the recipes. And they do their part and I do mine. And it's been a it's been a good relationship so far. I, there are so many business ventures that I wanted to get into where I'm like, can I not be the person that has to do all the stuff and just kind of yeah. give you guys some ideas or something like that? Yeah. I've, never no, found, so, I've never found any takers on that. Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that, Preston, yeah. but it's a, it's a great relationship. And I know you're kidding, but it's a, rest, it's a business that I said forever I would not go into on my own because here's what I know. I know I don't know the restaurant business. And even though I have a successful YouTube following and, of course, a great following in San Diego because this is where I started, I knew that I didn't know how to do that, which, unfortunately, a lot of people think it's about a dish or just a couple of recipes. Honey, your lasagna is so good, and that restaurant down the street is packed. Uh, if we had a restaurant, your lasagna is better, we'd be packed all the time. Right, 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 right. Yeah, there's a little bit more to it than that. Speaking of yeah. joking... And, I, and a listener had uh, emailed me to ask you about yeah. this, to find out about this. They wanted yes. to know, what's your beef with Guy Fieri, <laughs> and is it a joke? <laughs> I, I've never met Guy Fieri. Uh, I am only jealous of his success. <laughs> and he's such a public figure. Uh, let him, uh, he, uh, his shoulders are strong enough that he can handle the jabs from a little three and a half million youtuber <laughs> like me look i think guy fieri on his show diners drivers and dives though it's not my particular style his style yeah it's a bit too too over the top for me but i think he's really good at what he does right um i think he brings that whole show alive he does oh, he had a steve show. show everything rocks 10 34 on a Wednesday morning, wrapping up our program, Wednesdays do mean that we give some goodies away. And, uh, well, we are, we're always giving stuff away, but we do the secret text word on Wednesday mornings. Uh, Kathy had called in for caller number 15, I believe. And that's who we're going to go to to see if we can give away our prize. And it is Paula that we have here. Hi there, Paula. Good morning. Hey, Gadzooks, guy. Gadzooks, Paula. All right, so if you give us the one secret text word, we give you the tickets that we have here. So what is that secret text word, please? I hope it's Tommy. Tommy, yes. <gasps> that is correct. Paula, as in Tommy, Tom, Tom, Thompson. That's right. All right, Paula, hang on the line. We're going to give you tickets to see Steel Panther, the On the Prowl World Tour, Friday at the Keswick Theater in Glenside, featuring MMRBQ alums Crobot and Tragedy, the heavy metal Bee Gees tribute band. <laughs> and I hope, Paula, that you are familiar with Steel Panther's music, because if not, and you walk in there and you don't know it, you won't. <laughs> it may scare you. Uh, but it's hilarious. And we also gonna we're gonna give away the tickets to a random texter, and that was Mike Walker. Who's from uh, Juliustown, New Jersey? Well, I've heard of that. Not familiar with Juliustown, New Jersey. Uh, but Mike, congratulations! You're going to get to go see Steel Panther, St. Patrick's Day at the Keswick Theater. Uh, some tickets do remain, and you can go to WMMR.com to get all the details and how you can grab some tickets for that event. So we welcome uh, Pierre Robert to the studio this morning. Nice to see you, sir. Greetings. Uh, uh, very windy outside. Yeah, yes. I was going to ask what the nature. Or what it's like, because yesterday was ridiculously windy, and I assume it's a little bit like that. It's it's very much like that. Maybe wow. even a touch more. It doesn't wow. look so bad. Okay. Temperature-wise, not so bad, but the wind will make it worse. Yep. Right. Well, there you go. Uh, Nature of the beast. We're going to get the letter of the day, then we're going to find out how you're going to keep people occupied on this windy day. But you ready for the letter? Yes. All right, here we go. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. Now, the Daily Letter. And the Preston and Steve show is brought to you today by the letter. G is in green. All right. And we're going to give away a Pisique round barbecue and fire pit kit from Landis Block. And Landis Block, you can start imagining your own backyard paradise by looking at the photo gallery available online at LandisBC.com. By the way, uh, Julius Town 
uh, is an unincorporated community uh, within Springfield Township, New Jersey. It's right okay. next to uh, Fort Dix and, and McGuire. Okay. And near yeah. Orangetown. Julius. Yeah. Orange Julius. Julius, yes. Also near uh, Barkley Town. Barkley Town. Yeah, well, Julius Irving uh, and Charles uh, Barkley. Ah. Uh, I'm actually impressed with that. that I is, don't know. I just yeah. know the things I know. I know what I know. Did you like Orange Julius's? Yeah. They're, yeah I used actually, to love those. Yeah, I forgot yeah. about them. Do they still make them? There are, oh, yes. I think there are a handful of them around, yeah. There, might be there, one there are. The King of Prussia Mall. Maybe. My dad loved them when we were in California. It was one of the places he loved to go, and I was never a fan of the Orange Julius stand. Oh, I love However, it. they had good, um, I think they had hamburgers that they made as well there. Mm, wow. Yeah, and they were very good. Interesting. Okay, cool. Uh, you got cool stuff going on today, man. Action packed. Yeah. I got uh, very cool um, uh, tickets for Government Mule doing. Dark Side of the Mule <laughs> at I the Hard that. Rock. It's great. Uh, in July. But the big news, the breaking gigantic news is I have a pair of Bruce Springsteen tickets. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, yeah. Now, Kevin Gunn has made these wonderful vinaigrettes, which we play three times a day, 11 a.m., 4 p.m., and 8 p.m. And these vignettes, as it's properly said, uh, have a great little story about Bruce and Philly in the station, and we follow it with a Bruce song. Now, right after that, at 11 o'clock, shortly after 11, I will tell you how I'm going to give these tickets away. Okay. All right. So All stay right. tuned after the vinaigrette. Uh, for the main course. And if you don't get uh, tickets with you, we'll have a pair tomorrow morning. That's right. We'll give away two, and we'll reveal how we're going to do that in the morning. We're going to make them, people work a little bit for I it. have the final pair. You have the final, final pair. Yeah. Yes, that's cool. Awesome. Yep. Plus, we have a workforce block of the Grateful Dead for Phil Lesh's birthday. Uh, we will um, have a block of Muse to get ready for the show coming up this weekend. And uh, Nancy Hart has a birthday. Uh, Nancy Wilson of Hart, excuse right. me, <laughs> has a birthday tomorrow. Nancy Hart of Wilson. Nancy Hart of the band Wilson, which had a great <laughs> song. Yeah, they uh, would perform Behind a Fence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was called Crazy on Me. Um, but... Um, <laughs> Nancy Hart of Wilson, uh, we will do a block of them. Uh, and I, Wilson only has one song, so I'm going to have to stretch. <laughs> all right, uh, all right, I got I'll, you. I'll come up with it. Make it work. Uh, let me thank the fine sponsors of the Preston and Steve Show. The program today has been brought to you by Duncan. Preston and Steve Show runs on Duncan. Also brought to you by Sequoia Outback, making backyards beautiful all over the Delaware Valley for over 25 years. DeckSupplies.com. And also, uh, Villanova University's College of Professional Studies. Uh, pursue the next you. Tomorrow on our program, which will be our last day in the Philadelphia studios, we head to uh, the ballpark in Clearwater Yes, uh, right after the show tomorrow. But uh, we'll, it'll be a nice treat because our good friend Burt Kreischer will be joining us nice. wow. on tomorrow's program. His Soul special Spend. debuted. Spend some time with him and do some other things while we're at it. That's it. We're done. So rage on. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.